So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what happens if Kakashi abandons Naruto during the Chunin exams. Part 1. If you guys enjoy this, what if? And if you want to part 2. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1. Meeting the Perv. Serious training. Naruto Uzumaki, Kanoha's number one knucklehead and the world's most unpredictable ninja, was currently on his way to the hospital. He wasn't injured or anything like that, he just needed to find his sensei, Kakashi Haddock. The reason Naruto is looking for Kakashi is simple. Naruto was competing in the exams, and after two parts were finished, he was able to fight in the preliminary round, and he defeated Kiba Inuzuka in a rather unorthodox fashion. All of the competitors were given a month off to prepare for the finals, and he needed help. His opponent was none other than Niji Hayuga. Niji was a prodigy of the Hayuga clan and was slated as the best rookie genin. He brutally beat his cousin Hinata Hayuga due to his hatred of the main branch family, and Naruto vowed to beat him in the finals. Naruto knew he needed more than what he had for the finals, so who better to ask for training than his very own sensei. He made it to the hospital and figured he'd go to Sasuke's room since that's where Kakashi would be. Hey, where is Sasuke's room? Naruto asked the receptionist. I'm sorry Mr. Sasuke is not allowed to have visitors. The receptionist said. What? No visitors? Are you kidding me Naruto asked. Sorry, those are the rules. The receptionist said. Come on lady, just let me go see him. Naruto said. Naruto, this is a hospital. Keep it down. Kakashi said walking up to him. Kakashi sensei. I am so glad to see you. I need a favor. Naruto said. Stop right there. I already know what you're going to ask, so I've been looking for someone that can oversee your training for the final round. Kakashi said and Naruto was not happy. Why? Why can't you train me sensei? Naruto asked. I have other matters to handle. I don't have the time to trouble myself with you. Kakashi said. You're going to train Sasuke, aren't you? Naruto asked. Don't complain. Listen, I found you an even better teacher than me. Kakashi said. But you're my sensei. I want you to train me. Naruto said and he was barely containing his anger. I can't. I'm busy. Kakashi said. Yeah, busy training Sasuke like always. Who is this so-called teacher anyway? Naruto asked. It's me. Ibisu said and Naruto turned around then he completely lost it. Him. This is who you got to train me. You've got to be kidding me. Of all the guys you could have picked, you pick one of the people who hate me in this village. What the hell would you even teach me? Naruto yelled. I'll work on your basics and chakra control. Ibisu said. That's right, Naruto. In Team 7 you're the one who needs to work on your basic skills. They need the most work. That's what I want you to focus on this time around. Kakashi said. Do my basic skills need work? They wouldn't need work if you were a better sensei. Naruto said. Excuse me? Kakashi asked. You heard me. I've been under you for six months and all you've taught me was tree walking and that's only because we were fighting Zabuza on our first C rank mission. Outside of that you haven't taught me anything and then you pawn me off on this guy who doesn't even like me. You don't suck as a teacher, you also suck as a person. Those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than scum. You can't even live by your own words. I know you've been teaching Sasuke and Sakura privately. There's no way Sasuke got that strong without some help, and Sakura was worse than me coming out of the academy. She couldn't even break a simple D rank during our test. Forget it. I'll find somebody to train me myself. Naruto said and stormed out of the hospital. Kanoha streets, stupid sensei. Pawning me off for training. I don't need him. I'll train myself if I have to. Naruto said. He was so caught up talking to himself that he didn't see the person in front of him until they bumped into each other, making the person fall to the ground. Ow. Hey, watch it. The person said and it was female. Huh? Oh sorry. Naruto said and helped her up then noticed who it was. Thank you. Oh, hey. I remember you. You're Naruto, right? The girl asked. Uh, yeah. You're Tanari, right? Naruto asked. It's Tamari. Tamari said. Oh, right. See ya. Naruto said. Wait. I need some food. What's a good spot to eat at? Tamari asked. I'll show you just the place. Naruto said. Ichirikus. Hey, old man. Am. I'm here with a new customer. Naruto said. Ah. Naruto my boy. How's it going? Tuchi asked. It's good. I've got a new customer. Her name's Tamari. Naruto said. What can I get you, Tamari? Am asked. Uh, I'll have two large beef maizo ramen. Tamari said. Coming right up. Am said. Large? Isn't that a bit much? Naruto asked. What are you saying? Are you calling me fat? Tamari asked. And no. It's just that the girls in this village only eat small portions of food to watch their figure. 
Aren't you worried about losing your figure and getting fat like most girls? Naruto asked. I'm a Kinoichi. I can eat as much as I want since I'll just burn the extra calories and weight off as I train. Why are you even checking me out? Focus on yourself and don't worry about me. Tamari said rather harshly and Naruto eyes darkened from sadness. Sorry. I was just curious. I'll see you later, old man, am. Naruto said and left the ramen shop. What was that? Tamari asked surprised by his change in mood and sudden disappearance. You should apologize. Am said as she gave Tamari her food. Why? Tamari asked. Naruto wasn't trying to insult you. He doesn't really have much experience talking to other people. He mainly struggles to talk to girls. He was hated by the entire village since the day he was born, so he lacks certain social skills, especially when it comes to girls. Am said. I see him talking to everyone all the time since I've been here. Tamari said. He's talking to them, but they aren't really paying attention to him. When he talks and is loud it's a cry for attention. You didn't notice, but he was calm and spoke quietly in here because he's comfortable talking around us and we already acknowledge him. He's a good kid and means well. He's just rough around the edges. Am said. Doesn't he have any friends? Tamari asked. Not that I know of. If he's not here eating or out training he's up in his apartment by himself. Am said. What about his parents? Tamari asked. His parents died the day he was born. He's an orphan. He was kicked out of the orphanage at about six years old and has been living on the streets for two years before they found him and gave him an apartment. Am said and Tamari actually started to feel bad. I guess I should apologize. Tamari said. Give him some time. It's best to leave him alone when he gets like this. You won't find him. He's so good at stealth that if he doesn't want to be found then not even they can find him. Am said. Naruto. Naruto was walking around the forest when he heard the sound of fighting. He went into the trees and saw two purple-haired women sparring, and one of them was the same purple-haired from the second part of the exams, Anko Mitarashi. He was so into the fight and noticed that they were fighting while standing on water. He remembered Kakashi and Zabuza doing that when they fought. Why are you spying on us? A voice asked behind him and he froze. Oh. Uh. I was just walking around the forest and I heard fighting. I came here and saw the two of you fighting. Naruto said. I recognize you. You're the loud mouth brat from the exams. Anko said. Naruto, what are you doing here? The next purple-haired woman asked. How do you know my name? Naruto asked. You don't recognize me without my mask on, but I've known you since you were a kid. My name is Yugao. Yugao said. Hmm. Your voice does sound familiar. Anyway I was just watching you two spar. Naruto said. You're lying. You just wanted to see us get all wet and get a peek at our breasts through our wet clothes. Anko said. A peek at your what? Naruto asked confused. Our breasts. Tits. Boobs. Humongous boulders on our bodies. Don't you know anything about sex? Anko asked. What the hell is that? Naruto asked. Come on. Let me explain some things to you, kid. Anko said as she sat next to him. Oh boy. Yuga said. Then they both proceeded to give the talk to Naruto. But Anko was a bit over descriptive and hands on for Yuga, but Naruto understood what they were saying. So that's what the women in the brothel houses are doing. I always thought they were doing some kind of intense training. Naruto said. Nope. Anko said. Huh. You learn something new every day. I wonder if old boobs are soft and squishy like yours. Naruto said. They should be. Yugao has some soft and squishy boobs as well. Anko said and gave Yugao a nice squeeze. Will you stop? I have a boyfriend. Yugao said. I'm sure he wouldn't mind a threesome. Anko said and Yugao blushed. Wow. Wait a minute. Anko, I knew I heard that name before the exams. You're the lady Aruka sensei talks about a lot. Naruto said. W why does he talk about me? Anko asked and had a small blush on his face. I don't know. He kept mumbling to himself about today being the day he would ask Anko. I never knew what he was talking about, but I think I figured it out. He must have a crush on you. Yeah that's got to be it. He always has a blush on his face when he says your name. Naruto said and both Yugao and Anko were shocked. No way. I've got to tell Kurinai and Hana this. Yugao thought. He likes me. Well, then again I am a pretty nice piece of ass. Anko thought. Anyway, how were you walking on water just now? Naruto asked. It's a chakra control exercise. You should know that by now. Yugao said. If I knew what it was I wouldn't have asked. Naruto said. Right. Well, Anko, I need to get back to my duty. I'll see you, Hana and Kurinai later. Yugao said and vanished. Whoa. That was cool. Naruto said. I have to get going. I've got people to interrogate and a certain teacher to talk to. Nice talk kid. Anko said. Wait. Before you leave, can you tell me how to walk on water? Naruto asked. What's in it for me? Anko asked. I noticed you like dango and red bean soup. There is 3000 ryo in this pouch for you. Naruto said holding up a pouch. How do you have this much money? Anko asked. I save more than I spend. 
Naruto said and Anko took some of the money from his pouch. To do the water walking exercise, you have to emit a constant stream of chakra from the bottom of your feet and use the repellent force to walk across the water's surface. This is more difficult to master than the tree climbing because the amount of chakra that needs to be emitted changes constantly. Anko said and then gave him a demonstration. Thanks for the help. Naruto said and Anko just vanished. I need to learn that as well. I need to go to the hot springs first. My body is sore from fighting. Naruto said and left. Hot springs. Alright, I'm feeling better so now I'll do the water walking exercise. Naruto said. He figured he would work on it at the hot springs because it would give him more inspiration to complete it since he didn't want to get burned. After about 50 tries and falling into the water 50 times, he was finally able to do it but for some reason he noticed his chakra was even harder to control properly for some reason. He was about to try again when he heard giggling. He looked up and saw a man peeping on the women's side of the hot springs. He walked up to him and tapped him on the shoulder. Go away. I'm creating a masterpiece. The man said. It's illegal to peek at the women in the hot springs. Naruto said. Go away kid. I'm busy. The man said. Fine. Don't say I didn't warn you. There's a pervert peeking through the fence on the women's bathhouse. Naruto yelled and they heard screaming. Kid. What did you just do? The man asked. Serves you right. Naruto said and walked away listening to the man getting beat up by a mob of angry women. That wasn't nice, kid. The man said as he appeared in front of him. What the hell? I really need to learn that. Naruto mumbled. Would you do that? The man asked. Because you're a pervert and you deserved it. Who are you anyway? Naruto asked. I'm glad you asked. The man said and summoned a toad then started to dance. I don't have time for this. Never mind. I need to get back to training for the exam finals. Naruto said. The exams? I remember when I took the exams. Who's your opponent? The man asked. Niji Hayuga. The prodigy of the Hayuga clan. Naruto said. How about I train you? The man asked. What exactly would you train me in? Better yet, what's your name? Naruto asked. I am the one. Theon, the only, gallant Jiraiya, one third of the legendary. As for what I'll train in. Have you ever noticed a second chakra in your body? Jiraiya asked. If you're talking about the Nine Tails chakra, then yes. What else are you going to teach me? Naruto asked. I'll let you sign the toad contract as well. Jiraiya said. What else? Naruto asked. Geez kid. What do you want to learn? Jiraiya asked. I only planned on training him on using the Nine Tails Chakra and giving him the toad contract. Jiraiya thought. How about some ninjutsu to jutsu and if you can help me? Naruto said. You know Jiraiya asked. Yeah. I'm only level 5 so it's going a bit slow for me. Naruto said. Level 5 at your age. That's great actually. We'll do all of that if you agree to what I want to teach you. Jiraiya said. Okay, but can we hold off on the contract signing until about a day or two before my training is over with? I have a month. Naruto said. Why wouldn't you want to sign it right away? Why wait to sign the contract? Jiraiya asked. Because what if I'm not worthy enough to sign the contract? I mean I get that it's a huge honor, but from what I've read up on summoning, the boss has the right to reject me if I'm not worthy enough. Can't I just build my strength up first before I sign the contract? Naruto asked. He's different from what Sensei told me about him. Jiraiya thought. Sure. Meet me here at 4 a.m. We'll train from 4 a.m. until 6 p.m. this entire month. What do you know so far? Jiraiya asked. Shadow clones, substitution, transformation, sexy and that's it. Naruto said. That's it. That's all you've learned in what six months? Jiraiya asked. I knew all of that besides tree climbing and water walking before I graduated. I learned tree walking during a C-ranked turned A-ranked mission and I just found out about water walking a few hours ago. Naruto said. I see. Who is your sensei? Jiraiya asked. Akashi Haddock. Naruto said. You should be way above where you're at now. I've noticed you completed the water walking, but you seem to have a problem with your chakra. Jiraiya said. I know. It's been harder to control ever since that stupid snake man hit me in the stomach during the second part of the exams. Naruto said. Snake man. Lift up your shirt and channel chakra for me. Jiraiya said. Why? Naruto asked. Just do it or I won't train you. Jiraiya said. Alright. Alright. Sheesh. Naruto said and did as told. Hmm. So this is the formula used to imprison the nine-tailed fox. A double tetragram seal with an eight signed seal. That way, if any of the demon's chakra escapes the tetragram seal, it will be safely channeled into and suppressed by Naruto's own chakra. The fourth did this for Naruto's own protection. Since then, a five-pronged seal has been added. An odd-numbered seal on top of an even-numbered seal. Hmm. That explains it. That's why his chakra and the demon's chakra are merging in an unstable way. I'm surprised he was able to master water walking with his seal on him. Jiraiya thought. So, what's wrong with the seal? Naruto asked. That snake man placed an odd number seal over an even numbered seal. Do you know what the five pronged seal is? 
Jiraiya asked. No. I haven't gotten that far into sealing yet. Naruto said. Basically, when the five-pronged seal is placed on somebody, they have difficulty controlling their chakra. In your case your chakra became even more unstable due to the nine tails being inside of you. It caused both of your chakras to merge in an unstable manner. Jiraiya said. Can you remove it? Naruto asked. Of course I can. I am a seal master. Jiraiya said and then slammed his hand onto Naruto's seal. Five-pronged seal release. Jiraiya removed the seal from Naruto, and he let out a silent yet by the look on his face, a painful scream. Naruto wanted to yell at Jiraiya, but he felt his chakra was a lot easier to use. A little warning would have been nice, but thank you. Naruto said. You're welcome. Now, onto our schedule. We'll be working on your speed, strength and tactics. I'll be having you wear weights to help as well so you can get some good results. Ninjutsu we'll work on after your physical training is done. Few ninjutsu will be the last thing we work on every day. Jiraiya said. Does this mean I'm like your apprentice? Naruto asked. No. You aren't my apprentice officially until you sign the toad contract. Now, get home. Tomorrow is the start of our training regime. Jiraiya said. You got it, pervy sage. Naruto said. Don't call me that. Jiraiya yelled and Naruto just laughed at him. Great. First Kashina called me that and now Naruto calls me that. Jiraiya thought. It fits perfectly. Naruto said and Jiraiya just sighed. One last thing, you need to get rid of that horrendous outfit. Jiraiya said. It's the only thing I was able to buy. I can't even fit it. It's like two sizes too big. Naruto said. Why is that the only thing you could buy? Jiraiya asked. Because the entire village minus a few hate me. I only get these that make me stand out and they're not really comfortable. Naruto said. Why didn't you tell them? Jiraiya asked. Because I don't trust him. He's a liar. Naruto said. Why don't you trust him? Hasn't he been taking care of you? Jiraiya asked. If you call living on the streets for two years before he finally did something taking care of me then no. That little orphan check I'm supposed to get barely covers my food and rent for that dump of an apartment he gave me. I'm grateful for it, but when Sasuke became an orphan and had to move out of the Ichiha compound, he was given a luxurious apartment. Naruto said. I see. Would you call him a liar? Jiraiya asked. Because he is. I asked him if he knew my parents and he lied to my face telling me no. When I asked him again he told me it's pointless to worry about that. I know he's lying because whenever he lies, he takes a long inhale of his pipe and turns away from the person before speaking. Another thing, I asked him for help in the academy, since none of the teachers would help me with the clone, and he said he couldn't help me because that would be showing favoritism, but he gave the okay for Sasuke to have private tutors when he asked. Naruto said. Don't you think you can give him some slack? I mean he is the. Jiraiya said. The same that passed law saying if anyone was to harm me for being a that they would be put to death. Yeah. I've been beaten so many times by ninja and civilians that it's impossible to count. I had to find out from a rogue teacher that I had the nine tails in me after he lied to me every time I was in the hospital clinging to my own life, asking him why people hated me. Naruto said and as he was ranting his eyes changed. What the hell kind of is that? Minato and Kashina never had one. Jiraiya thought. I'll talk to Hiruzen sensei about all of this. He was supposed to be taking care of you for me. Jiraiya said. For you? Who are you exactly? Naruto asked. I can't tell you that, but I did know your parents. Jiraiya said. Who are they? Naruto asked. Let's make a deal. After the exams are over and if you become a. I'll tell you who I am and who one of your parents was. Deal? Jiraiya asked. Deal? Naruto said. Now, what's up with your eyes? Jiraiya asked. What do you mean? Naruto asked. What do you see right now? Jiraiya asked. I see your chakra flowing, and I feel like I can do something else, but I'm not sure what it is. Naruto said. Stop channeling chakra to your eyes. Tomorrow we'll see what else the eye of yours can do. Now, I need to go talk to them about some stuff. I'll see you tomorrow morning kid. Jiraiya said and vanished. Damn it. I should have had him show me how to do that first. Naruto said and walked away. Hospital. Hey Shikamaru. What are you doing here? Naruto asked. I was visiting Choji. What about you? Shikamaru asked. I'm here to see bushy brows. Naruto said. I think I'll join you. Shikamaru said. They walked to Lee's room only to see Gara trying to kill Lee. Shikamaru used his shadow possession to hold Gara, and Naruto hit Gara with a strong punch to the face that hurt Shikamaru as well. What the hell are you doing here? Naruto asked. I was going to kill him. Gara said. What? Naruto asked. You already beat him during the exams. What's your problem? Wasn't that enough for you? Do you have some kind of personal grudge against him or something? I have nothing against him. It's nothing that complicated. I simply want to kill him, that's all. Gara said. You're sick in the head. You're crazy. Naruto said. You think we're just gonna stand by and let you do whatever you want? You sick, selfish psycho. Shikamaru said. If you don't stay out of my way, I'll have to kill you too as well. 
Gara said, and then Naruto walked up to him staring him right in the eyes, then do it. We both know Shikamaru's isn't affecting you. What's stopping you? Naruto asked, what the hell? Shikamaru asked, do it, Gara leave. Naruto said, it's two on one. Just take my advice and go quietly. Shikamaru said, I'll give you one last warning. If you get in my way, then I'll kill you. Gara said, then I'll tell you again. Do it. Naruto said, will you shut up he fights like he's mad. Like he's a demon or something. Shikamaru said, he can act like a demon all he wants to, but I've got the real thing inside of me. Naruto said, you idiot. Leave this to me. What's the point of getting him mad? Shikamaru asked, a demon, huh? My demon is as real as yours is. From my birth, my upbringing was not what most people would consider a happy one. To ensure that I became the strongest shinobi, my father cast his ninjutsu on me, infusing my unborn self with a sand spirit. I destroyed the life of a woman who gave birth to me. I was born a monster. Its name is Shukaku, and it's the living incarnation of an old monk of the sand village who'd been sealed up in a jar of tea. Gara said, yeah. Some kind of demonic. But to use it on a baby. Before it's even born. Man that's creepy. Shikamaru said, can that be true? He has one inside of him too. Naruto thought, your dad must have loved you a lot. Shikamaru said sarcastically, you speak of love. Don't measure me by your standards. Love. Family. The only emotional ties I have to my family are the ones I'd like to wrap around their necks. They're only ties of hate. Given by the death of my mother. I was brought into being and nurtured as the salvation of the village. I was the Kazakija's child. My father taught me the inner secrets of the shinobi. He pampered me, protected me and left me to myself. For a long time I thought that was love. That was when everything started. Gara said, when what started? Shikamaru asked, in the six years since I became six years old, my father tried to destroy me more times than I can count. Gara said, you just finished saying how your father pampered and protected you. So which is it? Shikamaru asked, those who get to become too strong are apt to become feared. The thing that gave me birth had unbalanced something in my mind. Even the fools in my village finally realized I had emotional problems. My father, the Kazakiage, had created me as his ultimate weapon, but I eventually became a threat to the very village I was meant to save. By the time I was six I became a figure of terror to them. I was a relic of the past that they wished would disappear. So you see, I had failed at the one purpose for which I was given life. What then was left for me in this existence? Why go on living? For a long time, I couldn't find an answer to that. But in order to live, you need a purpose. To exist for no reason is the same as being dead. Gara said, I know exactly what he means. He's the same as me. Naruto thought, then in time to answer I came to me. To put it simply, my reason for living is in the killing of others. For years I lived in fear of those who were sent to murder me. But now I am at peace. I killed many would-be assassins, and it was while I was doing it that the truth was made clear to me. I live solely for myself. I live only for myself. As it was the death of my mother that first gave me life, now it is the death of others that sustains me, that makes me almost happy to be alive, and there's no end to it, as long as there are still people to kill in this great wide crowded world. I will never disappear. Gara said and then his sand came to life around him, alright. That's enough. Save it for the finals. That's when the final competition begins. You're just wasting it today. Is that what you want? Mike Guy asked and Gara grabbed his head forcing his sand to come back into his gourd, then he just walked out, all the same, I will kill you. Just you wait. I'll kill you all. Gara said, I see. I'll see you guys later. Naruto said, where are you going? Shikamaru asked, I need to get some sleep. My teacher is meeting me at 4 am to start training for the finals. Naruto said, isn't Kakashi always late? Shikamaru asked, he's not teaching me. I have somebody else who is the second strongest in the village behind them. Naruto said, who would that be? Shikamaru asked, Toads. Naruto said cryptically and Mike Guy widened his eyes, Naruto, is he your teacher? Guy asked, yeah. Naruto said, then I look forward to seeing your hot flames of youth in the finals. Guy said and did his nice guy pose, Kanoha streets, I guess I have my work cut out for me in the finals. Naruto said, he was walking through the streets of Kanoha again, and this time he felt at peace after he got everything off his chest when he talked to Jiraiya. For the first time in his life he actually felt at peace. He decided to stop by the shinobi library to look for a tojutsu style and found two styles that should help him. He left the library and as he was walking he once again bumped into Tamari. Huh? Oh. It's you again. Naruto said as he helped her off the ground. Yeah. It's me. Don't you ever watch where you're walking? Tamari asked. I do, but it's a peaceful night and I've got some stuff off my chest with my teacher for the finals, so I just felt at peace. Naruto said. I see. So, what's with the scrolls? Tamari asked, for my training. Naruto said, what kind of training? 
Tamari asked, brittle training. Can I help you with something? I have to meet my sensei at 4 a.m., and it's already 9 p.m. Naruto said, listen, I'm sorry about what happened earlier at the Raymond shop. I didn't mean to come off so harshly to you. I just thought you were being rude on purpose. The girl that works there, AM, told me you don't have much social skills, let alone skills talking to girls. Let's start over. I'm Tamari and I like your hair. Tamari said holding out her hand, oh. I'm Naruto and I like your, uh, tits. Naruto said, by what Tamari asked with a blush, your tits. I thought girls liked being complimented on their bodies. Naruto said, we do, but that's not something you say to a girl if you're just meeting her. Tamari said, really? Hmm. Anko didn't tell me that when she gave me the talk. I'll have to remember that. Naruto said, wait. You just had the talk today. Tamari asked, yeah. I didn't even know what that was. Anko and Yugao explained everything to me. Anko even went into great detail. I think I have a better understanding of things now. I didn't insult you did I? Naruto asked and Tamari just sighed, no. If you were another person I would have hit you with my fan, but I know you struggle with interacting socially, so I let it slide. Next time, compliment a girl on her looks or something. Tamari said, right. Well, see ya. Naruto said and started to walk away, wait. I'm kind of lost. Can you walk me back to the Golden Leaf Hotel? Tamari asked and Naruto froze, uh, I'm not allowed in that part of the village. You'll just have to find somebody else to help you. Naruto said, why not? Tamari asked, because they hate me. Naruto said, why? Tamari asked, I can't talk about it. I'll see you at the finals in Tamari. Naruto said and walked away, yeah. I'll see you at the finals. Tamari said and sighed, if only he knew. Tamari thought sadly, next day, all right, pervy sage. What's first? Naruto asked, stop calling me that. Anyway, first thing first. I'm going to play some resistance seals on you. Jiraiya said, what are those? Naruto asked, they're like weight seals, but different. They'll make it harder for you to move and won't stunt your growth even more than it already has been stunted. Jiraiya said and placed resistant seals on Naruto's arms, legs and his chest. Hey. What's that supposed to mean? Naruto asked, you're what, 13? You're the size of a 10-year-old. We'll be working on changing your diet and getting you better nutrients. You can't eat ramen all day. I know it's not your fault, but I'm going to get you right. Another thing, you are to not release the resistant seals while we are training. You're way behind in training so I'm going to push you harder than you can imagine. Now, when the library opens I want you to go and get you some tojutsu scrolls you want to learn. Jiraiya said, already done. I grabbed two yesterday, but I want to mix them together to create a single style. Naruto said and gave Jiraiya the scrolls, that's good. Now, to make these even deadlier I'm going to work on your speed quite a bit. As for ninjutsu, I want you to channel chakra into this paper. Jiraiya said and pulled out a piece of paper, why? Naruto asked, it's chakra paper. It'll tell us what element you have to learn elemental ninjutsu. If your element is fire the paper will burn. Water, the paper will become damp. Earth, the paper will crumble. Wind, the paper will split in half. Lighting will cause the paper to wrinkle. Jiraiya said, cool. Naruto said, as he channeled chakra into the paper. The results were shocking, and Jiraiya had his jaw on the ground. The paper split into four pieces. One was ripped to shreds. Another became so damp that it deteriorated. One caught on fire, and the last one turned to ice. What the hell? Do it again. Jiraiya said and gave Naruto another piece of chakra paper, then got the same results. Is that bad? Naruto asked. No. It's a shocker. Jiraiya said, sweet. So, when do we get started? Naruto asked, right now. The first week we'll be working on your speed and tojutsu. Next week is when we will work on everything combined. Jiraiya said, huh? So that's where I put my old kunai pouch. Naruto said, what? Jiraiya asked, nothing. My old kunai pouch was under a floorboard in my apartment, but how do I know that? I'm standing right here. Naruto said, did you leave a shadow clone at home? Jiraiya asked, yeah. I had some of them clean the apartment for me. Naruto said, I'll tell you the secret to shadow clones. Whenever one of them dispel, the original gets their memories. Tabarama Senju created it for spying purposes. Jiraiya said, sweet. Wait, if I can gain their memories, can't we use them for my training? Naruto asked and Jiraiya just looked him, why the hell didn't I think of that? Okay, make 60 shadow clones. I'll send a shadow clone with each group of 20 to get you started on elemental training. Well the clones work on your ninjutsu and we'll be sparing every day until the final two days of training. I still want you to sign the toad contract. Jiraiya said, what about the nine tails chakra? I thought we were gonna work on that as well. Naruto said, I've changed my mind. I'm going to boost your skills first and we'll worry about that some other time. Now, I want you to run 50 laps around the walls of Konoha. After that we'll start on your tojutsu. 
Jiraiya said. You got it pervy sage. Naruto said and dragged his feet to start running. I hate that name. He's gonna be something special. He may even surpass Minato quicker than you'd hope if he keeps this up. Jiraiya thought and started looking at the scrolls Naruto had. Yui Tai and Kayasho Jitsu. He seems to be eager to take Niji on using Tajutsu. He should know that fighting a Hyuga in Tajutsu is suicide since they can seal off your chakra points. That must be why he has Kayasho Jitsu here. He must want to make Niji feel what others feel when they fight a Hyuga. Niji may block off Naruto's chakra points, but he'll still be able to fight. However, if Naruto strikes certain pressure points on Niji, then he won't be able to use that body part until the effects wear off. Smart plan. Jiraiya said and then a smaller scroll fell out. Seven heavenly breaths. Jiraiya thought and then read it making his eyes go wide. I don't even think Naruto knows he grabbed this scroll. The way this is explained it's almost exactly like the eight inner gates that Might Guy uses. I heard a kid named Rock Lee can also use the eight inner gates up to the fifth gate and he's only been a genin for a year. These are tough but easier to use than the eight inner gates. If Naruto fights this Gara kid I've heard about then he'll need something like this to give him a bit of help. I won't have him do this, I'll have some of his shadow clones test it out first and then have him do it. Jiraiya said, 28 days later, alright, Naruto. It's time to sign the Toad contract. Jiraiya said and placed the scroll on the ground, how do I sign it? Naruto asked, bite your thumb and sign it with blood. After you sign it make sure you place blood on each of your fingertips and place them under your name. Jiraiya said and Naruto did that, now what? Naruto asked, now, bite your thumb and do these hand signs to summon a Toad. Make sure you use some chakra as well. Jiraiya said and Naruto went through the hand signs, summoning, yo. Name's Gamakichi. Nice to meet you. Gamakichi said and he was a small orange toad. Not bad for a first summon. Jiraiya thought. Try it again, but this time use as much chakra as you can. We've been working on your chakra control a lot during training, so you should be able to summon the boss toad or warrior toad. Jiraiya said and Naruto did it again, summoning, Jiraiya. A loud voice boomed. Of course he summons Gamabunta. Jiraiya thought. Yes Gamabunta. Jiraiya said as he hid behind a rock. Why the hell did you summon me? I don't see a fight going on. Gamabunta said. I, I didn't summon you. He did. Jiraiya said, pointing to Naruto who was on his head. Nice to meet you, Chief Toad. The name's Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto said. You actually want me to believe this runt summoned me? Gamabunta said. It's true pops. I saw the whole thing. Gamakichi said. Gamakichi. What are you doing here? Gamabunta asked. A new guy summoned me before you. I say we let him keep the contract. Gamakichi said. Hmm. He was able to summon me on his second try. Not even Jiraiya or the fourth was able to do that. Gamabunta thought, fine. You may keep the contract, but do not summon me unless you are in a battle and require my help, or if you have barrels of sake. Gamabunta said, um, sake. Wait, I think I have some of that stuff. Naruto said and pulled out six storage scrolls revealing 50 barrels of sake. I like this kid already. Gamakichi, we're leaving. Gamabunta said, see you Naruto. Gamakichi said and they left with the sake. Now what, pervy sage? Naruto asked and Jiraiya just stood there pouting. Let's go over everything you've learned this past month. Jiraiya said. Well, we went through about 50% of both Tajutsu scrolls, but you said my new speed makes up for the incomplete fighting styles. My ninjutsu is good, but I don't know any ice ninjutsu yet. Few ninjutsu I'm halfway through level 6 now. Jinjutsu is useless against me when I have it activated, but without it I can break up to high C rank. Oh and you taught me some of those 7 heavenly breath techniques. List of the ninjutsu you've learned. Jiraiya said, Shunshin, fire style. Fireball, fire style. Demon lantern, fire style. Dragon flame caterwaul, fire style. Firefox, water style. Ripping torrent, water style. Water beast, water style. Tri water dragon jutsu, water style. Water dragon jutsu, shuriken shadow clone, kunai shadow clone, wind style. Gale palm, wind style. Great breakthrough, wind style. Spiraling wind ball. Where would you rank my overall skill? Naruto asked, I'd put you at about mid to high now overall. Jiraiya said, where would you put me before we started to train? Naruto asked, low genin. I'd say that because of your skill in using the shadow clones. You've come a far way in a month. Now, the next two days are for you to do whatever you want. Good job. Jiraiya said, thanks, pervy sage. Naruto said, don't call me that. Jiraiya yelled and Naruto just laughed at him, hey, pervy sage. How fast am I now? I mean these resistance seals must have helped a lot, right? Naruto asked, well, I'd say that your speed is faster than that Rock Lee kid after he takes off his weights and without the seals activated on you. You were already low tuning in speed before any progress happened. I'm surprised Kakashi hasn't noticed that. Jiraiya said, that's because he was focused on his most prized student. The one I know for a fact that he wanted the most because of the stupid Sharingan. 
Naruto said. Bakashi was an easy student. Jiraiya said. What do you mean? Naruto asked. Bakashi was the prodigy of the class because Sasuke is a genius. It's easier to teach Sasuke because you can already tell he has a training background. You on the other hand had no one to train you and knew next to nothing. It would have been difficult for Kakashi to teach you because you don't understand things like Sasuke. To put it simply, Sasuke was the diamond while you were the lump of coal. Which do you think people would prefer? A diamond or a lump of coal? Jiraiya asked. The diamond. Naruto said. Exactly. I'd rather take that lump of coal. I did have a diamond before that needed polishing, but I'd still take a lump of coal. Jiraiya said. Why? It's not worth anything. Naruto said. Not at first it isn't, but if you put that lump of coal under enough pressure and polish it enough, you might just end up with a diamond. Inside every lump of coal there's a diamond waiting to get out. Jiraiya said. So, were you the diamond in your team? Naruto asked. No. I was the lump of coal. I was like you until I met the toads and started to train under them. As you know, Orochimaru was on my team. He was the diamond on my team along with my other teammate. Like you, I also learned through trial and error. Look at me now, I'm one of the legendary. Jiraiya said. Are you the strongest? Naruto asked. I'd like to say so. As you know, I am a spy master and I do go on missions. I have to make sure my skills are always sharp and on point. I know one of my teammates hasn't trained in decades and Orochimaru has his own evil thing going, so he probably still trains a bit. Jiraiya said. So it's a toss up between you and Orochimaru for the title of strongest. Naruto said. I didn't say that. Jiraiya said, yeah, but you also didn't say either of you were stronger. I mean if the third member of your team hasn't trained in months, then it's obvious you or Orochimaru would be the strongest. Naruto said, who do you think is the strongest between you and your teammates? Jiraiya asked, well me of course. Naruto said, why? Sasuke's the prodigy of your team, isn't he? Jiraiya asked, yeah, but I noticed even the simplest training I did would put Sasuke on edge since I was closing the gap between us quickly. I mean he had Kakashi helping him privately, but I was able to make him work for it if he wanted to beat me. I mean look at everything you taught me. Tijutsu, ninjutsu, breaking, and you even worked on my speed while not neglecting my power. If Sasuke is fighting Gara, then Kakashi must be working mainly on his speed to get around his sand or give him some kind of attack that can pierce through his sand. Naruto said. His ability to think logically has gotten better over this month. Jiraiya thought. Now, what about your other teammate? Jiraiya asked. What about her? Naruto asked. Why isn't she the strongest? Jiraiya asked. She's the strongest book-wise, but that's it. She barely trains, all she does is follow Sasuke around like a lost puppy, she worries more about her overall appearance than her skills, and when she does train she does the bare minimum, then gets an attitude with me if I ask if she wants to train together. Naruto said. If you make it, then what will you do? Jiraiya asked. Train to become. After that train to become the. Change the village up a bit because quite honestly it sucks. Naruto said. How does it suck? Jiraiya asked. First off the academy is basically pointless if we don't do test scenarios. I mean after 4 years all you need is the basic 3 to graduate. That's stupid. Then on top of that, the red light district needs to be fixed, but nobody is doing it. The orphanages are in horrible condition, and we only have one ninja school which is stupid, because not everyone lives close to the academy. Naruto said. Why didn't you tell them Jiraiya asked. He already knows, but he lets the civilian council walk all over him, and he claims he's just an old man that can only do so much. Naruto said. You've got some good points. However, the civilian council does have power you know. Jiraiya said. Last time I checked this was a ninja village. The orphanage I can understand, but why are they meddling in ninja affairs like the academy and missions we get? We both know the civilian council is corrupt, but the old man is just too lazy and scared to do anything about it. Naruto said. How do you know all of this? Jiraiya asked. You'd be amazed at what I can do if I decided to actually get serious about sneaking around. All of the civilian council has made my life a living hell, except for Sakura's mother. I have all this dirt on them, and I'm just waiting for the right opportunity to bring it out. I even made it known that there are weak points in the village security. It's almost as if the village is welcoming an attack. I shouldn't be able to sneak into headquarters, sneak into the mansion, and I shouldn't be able to access the files room on the civilian council. Naruto said. How the hell weren't you caught? Jiraiya asked. Like I said during training. If I don't want to be found you won't find me. Not even that glass orb can't even find me. Naruto said. Sheesh this village is lucky he isn't an enemy or they'd all be dead by now. Jiraiya thought. Anyway, good luck in the finals. Jiraiya said. You're not staying. Naruto asked. I've got to meet up with some contacts. I should be back in time to see my apprentice win the finals. Jiraiya said. I'm officially your apprentice. Naruto asked. Yup. As soon as you signed the toad contract, it became official. As I have power to choose whoever I want as my apprentice. 
If you stay at Jenin then I'll be able to pull you from a mission if I need you for something. Jiraiya said, awesome. Hey, pervy sage. Am I a diamond or lump of coal? Naruto asked, I've just started putting you under pressure and polishing you. However, there is a speck of something within you. It's up to you on how you go about that. Your drive and ambition will determine if it's a speck of dust or a diamond that is starting to form. Jiraiya said, I guess this is it. Naruto said and Jiraiya placed his hand on Naruto's head, don't worry. You'll do just fine. Jiraiya said, thanks, pervy sage. Naruto said, don't forget to wear the new clothes you got. That horrendous jumpsuit is too small for you now. Jiraiya said and then Jiraiya went up and smoke. Two days later tune in exam finals. The crowd was gathered as all the competitors were in the arena. Well all except three. Naruto, Sasuke and Dosu weren't there yet. Sasuke was with Kakashi, so he was more than likely going to be late, but no one has heard from Naruto or Dosu. Look at this. We're missing quite a few people here. Shikamaru thought, Stance, what's going on? Where is everyone? This is about to get started. Ino said, yeah, what's going on? Sasuke and even Naruto are nowhere to be seen. Sakura thought, hey, look. Who's that? Ino asked pointing to a competitor, I don't know. Sakura said, hiding area, name please. The proctor asked, it's me, Naruto. Naruto said, sorry, the clothes threw me off. The proctor said, they're pretty sweet, huh? Naruto asked, yeah they are. Finally got rid of the orange jumpsuit, huh? Shikamaru asked, hey, I had to. Naruto said, he now wore a white hoodie that had green trimmings down the side. Black shinobi pants and black shinobi sandals. Underneath his hoodie was a red shirt with armor mesh underneath it. His hair grew out a bit and if you looked at him closely, he looked like a certain head on the monument. Whoa. He sure is cute. Stop that Tamari. You have more important things to worry about. Tamari thought, but couldn't stop the small blush appearing on her face. You guys are the heroes of this final competition. The proctor said, welcome all and our deepest thanks for coming here to the village hidden in the leaves for this year's selection. We have come to the final completion between the eight candidates who made it through the preliminaries. We ask that no one leaves until all the matches have been completed. Now, everyone is enjoying themselves. Hiruzen said, oh, there's one more thing before we get started. Look it over. There's been a slight change in the matchups. Now it's set so everyone takes one last look at who you'll be facing. The proctor said and held up a piece of paper. I thought I was supposed to fight an extra match. Hey, so that Dosu guy dropped out. Shikamaru thought, all right, listen up. The terrain is different, but the rules are the same as before. That is that there are no rules. A match continues until one candidate acknowledges defeat or dies. That being said, if I determine that a match is over, I can step in and stop it at any time. No arguments are permitted. These are the opponents for the first match. Naruto Uzumaki and Niji Hayuga. Those two stay. The rest of you can go to the waiting area. The proctor said and everyone left except Niji and Naruto. Stance, hey Sakura. I know that you're worried about Sasuke, but come on. Don't be such a lump. Aren't you going to at least cheer Naruto on? Ino asked, you're right. Sakura said and put a smile on her face. That's more like it. Not that the poor ring has a hope in hell against Niji. Ino said, he's not that bad. Sakura said, are you kidding? Not that bad. Is that the best you can do? Ino asked, who would have believed that little squirt would survive this long? Kotetsu asked, yeah. He's been one lucky kid so far, but his luck's about to run out. He'll never survive this one. Izuma said, I don't know. Look at him. He's grown a lot, he's not the little squirt he was a month ago. He's taller, puts on some muscle and looks more mature. Whoever trained him must have put him through the ringer. I can tell he's far ahead of what he used to be. This match is going to be a lot more interesting than people think. Kotetsu said, hiding area, you got anything to say to me? Niji asked, yeah. You might want to take me seriously from the start if you hope to have any chance at winning. Naruto said and everyone noticed his voice was a bit deeper than Niji activated his Byakugan, he has the look. He's calmer now, more sure of himself. Niji thought and then got into his fighting stance as did Naruto, so much the better for me. I can't wait to see the look of despair on your face when you learn that your foolish vow is impossible to keep. Niji said, the Byakugan. The prize of the Hyuga clan. I'm honored. However, I wonder which is better. Yours or mine? Naruto asked and activated his shocking everyone. Page dance, what? Hiruzen yelled. I've never seen one like that before. Care to explain, Lord Third? The fake fourth Kazakiage asked. I've never seen something like that before either. Hiruzen said and focused on Naruto. I must see more of that. I'll have to delay the invasion. Arachimaru thought and discreetly did a hand signal to somebody in the stands who nodded. Fighting area, all right. Let the first match. Begin. The proctor said. Niji and Naruto had a brief stare down before Naruto sprang into action. 
He pulled out some shurikens and threw them at Niji, who started to block them until Naruto used the shuriken shadow clone, and Niji had to use his ultimate Hyuga defense to block them. I can't believe he forced me to use the rotation on his very first move. Niji thought, now that we got that out of the way, how about we get started? Naruto asked, how did you know about my rotation? Niji asked, when I don't want to be seen, you won't see me even with those eyes of yours. Naruto said, it does not matter you're still fated to lose to me. Niji said, yup and you're still fated to be the Hyuga main branch bitch. Naruto said and rushed in at Niji, you really are an idiot if you intend to take me on in a tojutsu fight. Niji said, Naruto appeared in front of Niji and they began a tojutsu fight. Niji was using his gentle fist and Naruto was using a combination of his two fighting styles. The crowd was cheering loudly because of the high speed action and the shinobi in the stands were surprised that Naruto was able to go toe to toe with a Hyuga prodigy in tojutsu. Every time Niji would strike Naruto, he would get hit twice by Naruto. The speed at which Naruto was fighting threw Niji off a bit, but he was no stranger when it came to speed. What Niji didn't know was that Naruto allowed him to see Niji's chakra network, so he was able to counter some of the blows to his chakra points by adding more chakra to them to keep them from closing. Stance, I can't believe it. Kurinai said, I know. To think this used to be the dead last. Whoever trained him during this month must have been quite the shinobi. Asuma said, didn't Kakashi teach him? Kurinai asked, no. From what I heard, Naruto asked Kakashi for help, but he refused as he wanted to train Sasuke for his match with Gara. Kakashi chose Ibisu to train Naruto, and he flipped out on Kakashi, then stormed out of the hospital. Nobody hasn't seen or heard from him for an entire month. However, rumor has it that he spent some time with the Kinoichi from Suna. Asuma said, then it makes me wonder what he would be like if he was trained properly throughout the academy. Kurinai said, same here. I feel bad for Kakashi. Naruto will without a doubt make it and if he does, Kakashi won't have anything to do with it. Asuma said, is that Naruto? There's no way he should be able to fight with Niji like that. Ten Ten thought, hey Sakura. Ino said, uh, what is it? Sakura asked, I thought Naruto was supposed to be dead last. Who trained him? Ino asked, I don't know. I haven't seen him for the entire month. He hasn't even been to Ichirikus. Sakura said, he's obviously been training and eating better. He's grown a couple inches and is probably as tall as Niji now. That and look at the muscle he put on. I wonder if I should snatch him up before somebody else does. Ino said and Hinata gasped. Ino, do you even hear yourself? Sakura asked. I'm just kidding. Sasuke is the guy for me. Naruto belongs to Hinata. Ino said making Hinata blush. Fighting area, I can't believe he's able to match me into Jutsu. However, his arms are done for. Niji thought as the separated and both were covered in bruises, you may have gotten stronger, but you're still no match for me. The gentle fist blocks the chakra points wherever I strike. Looks like you can't use the chakra in your arms for your ninjutsu. Niji said, see, that's where you're wrong. I can easily reopen my chakra points. You on the other hand may want to examine your body a bit closer. Naruto said, a couple of bruises mean nothing. Niji said, even with the infamous Byakugan you still can't see clearly. Naruto said, what is that supposed to mean? Niji asked, the bruises on your body are at specific points on your body. They aren't just random spots I hit. While you were able to close off my chakra points, I was able to strike your pressure points. Your arms don't really work that great right now. You may have hit me half of the times you actually thought you did. Your attacks became slower and weaker as we fought. While I can reopen my chakra points, you have to get a medic or somebody that knows the body to help you out. Naruto said, what? That's impossible. How could I fall for something so simple? Niji thought as he tried to move his arms, but they wouldn't move. Surrender now or stand there helplessly as this dead last embarrasses you even more. I haven't even begun to fight seriously. You came into this fight filled with arrogance. Expecting an easy win. I came here with a plan and a counter to your tojutsu. I trained every day from before the sun rose to when the sun went down this past month. What will it be? Will you forfeit or will I have to embarrass the Hyuga clan even more? Naruto asked and walked up to him putting a kunai to Niji. I, I forfeit. Niji said reluctantly, winner. Naruto Uzumaki. Gemma said and the crowd was stunned, Niji, why do you hate Hinata? She's a nice girl and wouldn't hurt a fly. Naruto said, because of the caged bird seal. Niji said and it all made sense, Niji, all seals can be broken. I let you in on a secret I've learned. Hiashi Hayuga was against your father being given up during the whole Kumo incident. Talk to him and he'll explain things. The clan head isn't the problem in your clan, it's the council. Hiashi has the power to abolish the caged bird seal. I'm sure Hinata would like her cousin back in her life. Naruto said and tapped Niji on his pressure points. What did you do? Niji asked as he was able to move his arms again. I undid the damage to your pressure points. Naruto said. How did you change so quickly in a month? 
Niji asked. I'm a lump of coal being put under pressure. Naruto said and walked away leaving Niji confused. Stance, whoa. He just took down Niji without a problem. Tenten said. It's like he's a completely different person. Sakura said as she watched Naruto go up to the fighters area. Did we miss Niji's match? Rock Lee asked as he arrived with Mike Guy. Yeah. It's over. Tenten said. Then Niji must be really strong if he was able to take out Naruto so quickly. Although it looks like Naruto gave him some problems. Mike Guy said. No. Niji lost. Tenten said. What? Lee said. It's true. Naruto outclassed him and came in with a plan to counter Niji and his gentle fist. He blocked off the pressure points in Niji's arms. Niji had to forfeit due to his arms being useless. Tenten said. It doesn't make sense. Naruto shouldn't be this good after a month. Ino said. Even who trained him, this isn't much of a surprise. Mike Guy said. Who trained him? Sakura asked. It's not my place to tell. However, just know that if Naruto defeated Niji as easily as you said, then we haven't even seen what he can really do. Guy said. Fighters area. Geez, Naruto. Did you have to win so quickly? Shikamaru asked and Naruto ignored him as he walked up to Gara. Win your match, but don't kill him. I want to fight you myself. Naruto said and had a stare down with Gara, but you could feel the tension between them. Mother says your blood is better than the Uchiha. Gara said with a crazed look on his face. Then don't lose to Sasuke and you can have it. Naruto said, and then Gara released a huge amount of chakra, but his was no match for Naruto's chakra output. What the hell are they? Shikamaru thought. He's got more chakra than Gara. Tamari thought. Can you two stop your cracking the walls around us? Shikamaru said. Wimp. Tamari said. I'll see you in the final match. Naruto said and walked away to take a nap. Time skip. Hours passed by since Naruto went to sleep and he was woken up by a screeching noise. He yawned and stretched, then noticed Sasuke standing on the wall with lighting covering his hand. Sasuke took off at incredible speeds towards Gara, who was trapped in a sphere of sand. Right before Sasuke could stab Gara, his feet were stopped by sand. Sasuke was surprised along with Kakashi, and then a giant hand made of sand came from the sphere and repeatedly slammed Sasuke into the wall before he fell unconscious. Winner. Gara of the sand. Gemma said. Naruto Uzumaki. Come face me. Mother wants your blood. Gara yelled, and the sand sphere went away as Gara was back to normal. Stance, okay. Naruto said and stood up, but he was grabbed. I'm calling off the match. You can't win. Kakashi said. Oh? Why is that? Naruto asked. Because if Sasuke wasn't able to beat him, I know you can't. Kakashi said. See, that's where you're wrong. I'm stronger than Sasuke, and I have quite a bit of tricks up my sleeve. Naruto said. Sorry, but this is for your own good. Naruto Uzumaki forfeits this match. Kakashi said. No the hell I don't. Naruto said and went up and smoke revealing a log in his place. Relax, Kakashi. Naruto's got this. Asuma said. Did you see what Gara did to Sasuke? There is no way Naruto stands a chance. Kakashi said. Actually, he does. Maikai said. How so? Kakashi asked. Simple. He was trained by somebody way out of our league. He defeated Niji like it was nothing. Mike Guy said and turned his attention to the fight. Have some faith in your genin, Kakashi. Kurinai said. Hiding area, Ara versus Naruto. Begin. Chapter 2. The Invasion and Family Revealed. Naruto vs. Gara. Begin. Ninja Art. Shuriken Shadow Clone. Naruto unsealed two large shuriken and threw them at Gara, who watched as they went from two shuriken to about 16. Gara used his sand to protect himself from them and wasn't ready for the exploding kunai that Naruto snuck in there. The kunai exploded and sent Gara flying to the wall but he was saved by his sand. So the sand acts on its own. Naruto thought. Fire style. Fire caterwaul. Naruto expelled several dragon-headed fireballs from his mouth to cover the front, left and right side of Gara. As the dragon heads move in an erratic manner, it makes them much more difficult to avoid. Gara once again used his sand to protect him, and then once the dragon heads connected, they exploded. Is that all you can do? Gara asked. Far from it. I'm just testing the speed of your sand. Naruto said. Ninja art. Kunai Shadow Clone. Naruto threw two kunai at Gara, and then they multiplied into 20. Naruto wasn't finished as he went through four hand signs. Wind style. Gale Palm. Naruto clasped his hands together and the wind compressed, then transformed into a powerful gale. He pushed his hand out forward, and the wind helped the kunai travel through the air faster, making them more lethal. Gara once again raised his sand, but a few of them got through and managed to cut through his sand armor. Stance. Whoa. What happened to Naruto? Ino asked. I don't know. He was never this good before this round. Sakura said. Whoever trained him really did a great job. Asuma said. Didn't Kakashi sensei teach him? Sakura asked. No. From what I heard, Naruto did ask Kakashi for help, but he blew him off so he could train Sasuke for his match with Gara. Asuma said. Then who trained him? Ino asked. I did. 
Jiraiya said as he landed behind them. Master Jiraiya. Kurinai said. Lord Jiraiya it is an honor to see you and your youthfulness again. Might Guy said. Uh, sure. Jiraiya said and Might Guy did his patented nice guy pose. Why did you train him? Kakashi asked. Because you wouldn't. Jiraiya said. Hiding area. So much for your ultimate defense. Must not be that great if I manage to get through it with a few lousy kunai. Naruto said. Shut up. Gara replied. Ari used his sand to attack Naruto who was barely getting out of the way, resulting in him getting a few cuts and his clothes torn. Naruto saw Gara have his sand attack from each direction, and Naruto was able to use the shunshin to escape whatever he had planned. Stop running. Gara said. Gara then started to transform, and Naruto quickly deactivated his resistance seals. The gourd on Gara's back slowly broke down and began to cover his body, covering his arms and then his face distorting it and giving it Shukaku's features such as the yellow eye and markings, he even grows his one tail from the gourd, which itself functions like a normal tail. I see you're getting serious. Naruto said and activated his stance, this is why I said to call off the match. I don't know what you're trying to prove, Master Jiraiya, but Naruto isn't ready for this kind of opponent. Kakashi said, how would you know? You never trained him. He's perfectly fine. He hasn't even used the skill he knows will work. Jiraiya said. What skill is that? Might Guy asked. Let's just say that this match will be somewhat similar to Lee's match. Only difference is the winner. Jiraiya said. He knows the eight inner gates. Might Guy said. No. He knows something similar though. Jiraiya said. Lord Jiraiya, are you telling me he knows how to use that technique? Might Guy asked. Yes, but only the first two activations. Jiraiya said. I see. Might Guy said. What does he know? Kakashi asked. You'll have to wait and see. Jiraiya said. Can you Atlas tell us about this and what it does? Asuma asked. As far as we know so far, when it's activated it doesn't work on him and he can see chakra pathways. We're still trying to figure it out. Jiraiya said. And I think if he has one he should be placed under my care. I am training Sasuke in using the Sharingan after all. Kakashi said. No. The Sharingan and his are completely different. He's probably not going to want your help anyway. You had six months and did nothing with him. Jiraiya said. You said it doesn't work on him. I'm the mistress. Do you think some of it will work? Kurinai asked. I doubt it. Unlike the Sharingan, it's impossible to place him under while he is activated. A Sharingan user can be placed under A, but they'll easily be able to break out of it and counter it. With Naruto's it's impossible to place him under it. I don't know if he can cast with his eyes though. Jiraiya said. Hmm. Then the loser is still inferior to me. Sasuke said arrogantly. Yet he's lasting longer against Gara than you did. Jiraiya said, hiding area, time to die Yuzumaki. Gara yelled, sand shuriken. Gara swung his sand-covered arm at Naruto and sent shurikens made from sand towards him at a rapid pace. Naruto pulled out some kunai and started to deflect as many as possible, but he was eventually overtaken by the amount and was cut up severely. Yes. I can smell your blood from over here. Gara yelled, Shukaku's arm. After gathering a large amount of sand, Gara formed it into a replica of Shukaku's arm and used it to grab Naruto, then slammed him into the wall repeatedly. Naruto was lucky enough to cover his body in a layer of chakra, so the damage was significantly lessened from Gara's assault. After a few seconds of slamming Naruto into the wall, Gara released Naruto and watched him fall to the ground. Don't tell me you've given up already. Make me feel alive, Naruto Uzumaki. Gara yelled, Water style. Triple Water Dragon. Naruto quickly went through hand signs and formed three dragons made of water from the air and launched them at Gara, who used his sand to protect him. Naruto didn't stop there because he went through more hand signs. Water style. Ripping Torrent. Naruto created water that spirals in the palm of his hand and fired it at a high speed towards Gara, who once again used his sand to protect him. The collision sent water and sand everywhere in the fighting area. I wish I knew lightning right now. Naruto thought. Naruto threw two exploding kunai at Gara and watched as they landed right in front of him. Gara tried to use his sand to protect him, but to his horror it was moving too slow and he was hit with the explosion. If it weren't for him being transformed he most likely would have died. The smoke cleared after Naruto used the wind style. Great breakthrough and Gara was standing there badly burned with a horrified look on his face. Mother. My sand. It failed to protect me. Gara said. Of course it did. The sand is too heavy to move at the speed it usually does. That's why I used water ninjutsu on you. That sand is useless right now. Naruto said with a smirk. Damn you Yuzumaki. Gara yelled. Gara allowed the sand to cover his entire upper body, with only his feet remaining uncovered. While his facial features still remain slightly human, both his eyes resemble Shukaku's with the same markings around its body. Naruto noticed that the kanji remained on Gara's head. Stance, what the hell is that? Ino asked. Seems like Naruto is really pushing Gara to his limits. Jiraiya said. Do you still think he can handle it? Kurinai asked. Absolutely. 
Naruto has the best chance at beating Gara even without my training, and you four know why. Jiraiya said, can he use it? Asuma asked, probably. He said during training that he's used it quite a few times, but only when he's overcome with rage. However, he shouldn't have to use it. He wanted me to train him so he wouldn't have to rely on it all the time. Jiraiya said, I see. You wouldn't mind if I trained him sometime, would you? He's the only other person I know in Kanoha that has a wind chakra nature. Asuma said, it's up to him. Although I'll recommend him to you since I'm not an expert on wind chakra nature, since it's so rare. Jiraiya said, does he know any wind other than the one he just used? Asuma asked, he knows a few of them, but I don't think they're as strong as they should be. Jiraiya said and then looked over at Tamari and Kankuro who were looking nervous, I, I can't believe it. He's hurting Gara. Tamari said, he's close to releasing Shukaku. Kankuro said, why hasn't the Kazakiage given the signal yet? Baki asked, that's because he isn't the Kazakiage. Jiraiya said as he appeared behind them, El or Jiraiya. Baki said, relax. We already knew about the invasion weeks ago. Jiraiya said, why aren't you attacking us? Baki asked, because you're following orders from Arachimaru. A few days ago, a few of my spies found the body of the Kazakiage in the desert, and he had a stab wound through the heart from a blade covered in a specific poison. Jiraiya said, so this entire time, it's been Arachimaru giving us orders. Tamari asked, yes. I did some digging around and found out Arachimaru approached your father a month before the exams about teaming up for an invasion, but when your father declined, Arachimaru ambushed him a few weeks later. We grew suspicious when Rasa didn't show up for a meeting with a third party to try and find a way to help your village get its budget increased again. That's when I sent some of my best spies out to find anything, and they discovered his body. Jiraiya said, damn it. So what do we do now? Are you going to capture us? Baki asked, no. Baki, I want you to gather as many of the sand shinobi you can gather without making it obvious and help our ninja and evacuate the village by helping everyone get to the shelter near the mountain. You two stay here and act normal. Once the invasion starts, take out any sound ninja you can until it arrives. Jiraiya said, yes sir. Also I should let you know that we have a spy in your ranks. He's standing behind the other genin with the dog and the Hayuga girl. He was supposed to get a signal that would have him cast a sleep that would put everyone to sleep, and that's when Gara would release Shukaku, since he comes out whenever Gara goes to sleep. Baki said, I'll get a squad of them. You help us win this invasion, and I'm sure the wind daimyo will boost your budget again. Jiraiya said, I'll get on it right away. Baki said, good. Jiraiya said, wait, what about Gara? From the way this fight is going he could release Shukaku at any minute. Kenkuro said, he's right. After this transformation is when Shukaku can fully manifest. Tamari said, don't worry. Naruto will handle Gara. I did prepare him for this after all. Jiraiya said and vanished, are we really gonna leave a genin to stop Shukaku? Kenkuro asked, so far he's proven he can handle it. If things get bad you two help him from a distance. Baki said and walked away, hiding area, stop running away from me Uzumaki. Gara yelled as he was trying to grab Naruto with his extended sand arms, fine. Naruto said and then vanished from sight, where are? Gara was cut off from a kunai exploding right in front of him. Gara was suddenly punched from behind, and the man he was just flying around like a human pinball before he finally crashed to the ground. That's not enough to keep him down. Naruto thought, very interesting Uzumaki. Show me more. Make me feel alive. Gara yelled, you asked for it. Naruto said and then looked up at Jiraiya who nodded, stance, Master Jiraiya, why did he look up at you? Kurinai asked, because he's ready to let loose. Jiraiya said, is he finally about to use it? My guy asked, yes. Jiraiya said, Lee, Tenten, -ten, Niji. I want you all to pay close attention to what Naruto is about to do. My guy said, what is he about to do? Niji asked, something similar to what Lee did against Gara. Jiraiya said, a technique that is similar to the eight inner gates. My guy said, what's it called? Tenten asked, fighting area, I hope you don't regret this, Gara. Naruto said, seven heavenly breaths. First activation. The first activation caused Naruto's eyes to turn completely white, and his body gave off a yellow aura, though it seemed that it was starting to take after the color of Naruto's chakra. This first breath allows Naruto to push towards his body's natural limits, since the bolstered fortitude from the technique lessens pain and reduces fear of self-harm. Second activation. The second activation caused Naruto's body to expand slightly, his muscles becoming distinctly more prominent. In this stage, Naruto will also begin to recover faster, as the activation stimulates the body's natural healing above the normal rate. Add in the healing ability he gets from the Nine Tails, he's basically indestructible. Third activation. The third activation caused Naruto's skin to turn red, much like when the gate of life is opened. In this stage Naruto can begin to push beyond the body's natural limits in lesser amounts, as the further bolstered natural recovery can largely null the damage that would otherwise occur.
before Gara could yell again, Naruto banished and destroyed the ground where he was previously standing. All Gara felt was pain on his chin and noticed he was up in the air, then he was knocked down to the ground. Lunar Barrage Once Gara stood up, Naruto punched Gara in the gut and released a pulse of chakra from his fist to increase the power of the punch. Upon inflicting the punch, Naruto took advantage of the Gara's dazed state by following up with a fury of rapid untraceable punches. The punches that make up the barrage are not random but are carefully thought out. Each one has the purpose of conditioning Gara into reacting a certain way and forced him to leave himself open for another type of punch. This is why Gara found it difficult to escape. Naruto ended the combo with a very powerful punch to Gara's stomach, inflicting a lot of damage and sending rocketing back at very high speed, crashing into the wall. Stance, holy shit. Ten Ten whispered, that was the most youthful thing I have ever seen in my life. Lee said, why couldn't I copy his movements? Sasuke thought, Bakashi, I want that technique. Sasuke said, I can't teach you something I know nothing about, Sasuke. Kakashi said, then I demand that this old fool teaches it to me along with everything he knows. Sasuke said, kid, I'd watch what you're saying if I were you. Asuma said, he's one of the legendary and is possibly the strongest shinobi in the village. Kurinai said, doesn't matter. I will be waiting for him to show up at training ground 7. Sasuke said arrogantly, kid, I'm not teaching you. You may have all the skills, but you're not worth my time. I will never take on a student who is arrogant and thinks everything should be handed to him just because his family died. Jiraiya said, watch your mouth. Sasuke yelled and went to attack Jiraiya, but before he took one step he was laying on the ground underneath a medium-sized toad. That's your only warning. Jiraiya said, um master Jiraiya. Why did you pick to train Naruto? I mean he had no skills or anything other than the shadow clone. Sakura said, because he's a lump of coal. Jiraiya said, what does that mean? Sakura asked, which would you rather have, a lump of coal or a diamond? Jiraiya asked, a diamond of course. Sakura said, yeah. Anybody with a brain would take the diamond over some lame piece of coal. Ino said, true, but what if that lump of coal turns out to be an even better diamond than the one you picked out? Jiraiya asked, I don't get it. Ino said, don't worry, not many people do. Like I told Naruto, I would take that lump of coal and turn it into a diamond. Lee for instance is also a lump of coal. Like Naruto he is also being put under pressure and polished. Jiraiya said, hiding area, that should keep you quiet for a while. Naruto said as he deactivated the seven heavenly breaths and once the smoke cleared, Gara was back to normal barely conscious. Winner. Naruto Uzumaki. Genma announced, Em mother. You didn't protect me. You promised you'd always protect me. Gara yelled. After Gara was finished yelling, he released a huge amount of chakra, so Naruto gave him a chakra enhanced kick, sending him flying out of the stadium. Tamari and Kankuro nodded at each other before quickly leaving, giving chase to Gara to try and stop him from releasing Shikaku. Before anybody could enjoy the moment completely, an explosion was heard from up near the cage booth, and then sound ninja started to attack. A purple barrier was formed around the roof, and nobody could get inside of it. We're under attack. Ino said, all of you go and help the civilians get to safety. Do not attack any sand ninja. They are on our side. Move out. Jiraiya said, I'm going after Gara. Sasuke said and then ran off, damn it. Kakashi, what the hell have you been teaching him? He's more arrogant than before. Jiraiya said and took out some sound ninja that tried to attack him, he'll be fine. Plus, Naruto is probably going to go after Gara as well. Kakashi said, you don't get it, do you? Gara is about to unleash the full might of Shukaku, and you simply don't care that your student ran off. Jiraiya said, he'll be fine, Lord Jiraiya. Kakashi said, change of plans kids. Sakura, Shino, Shikamaru go after Sasuke can bring him back. The rest of you help the civilians get to safety. Jiraiya said, I'll send Pak in with you to track Sasuke sent. Kakashi said, Ara, Ara, you need to calm down and fight it. You can't release Shukaku. Tamari said and Gara just groaned in response, it's no use. He's not responding. This is bad, Tamari. We can't let him release Shukaku. The Leaf Village will think we're attacking. Kankuro said, I know. Gara, you have to listen to me. You can't let Shukaku control you. Tamari said and they they had to jump out of the way from a kunai. For someone in such a rush, you three sure are slow. Drop the reed and I'll let you live. Sasuke said, what the hell are you doing? We're on your side, Dumbus. Tamari said, yeah you idiot. Go fight the sound ninja that are attacking the village. Kankuro said, I could care less about that village. If they can't defend themselves from a couple of sound ninja then they deserve to die. I'm here for a rematch and I'll take you both on if I have to. Sasuke said, go ahead, Tamari. I'll handle him. Kankuro said, no Kankuro. Tamari said, listen, Tamari. We need to get Gara as far away from the village as possible. That's our main objective. I can handle him. Kankuro said, be careful. Tamari said and leapt away with Gara. don't think so. 
Sasuke said and went to jump after her, but Kankuro appeared in front of him. You have to get through me. Kankuro said and kicked him away. Junin exam stadium, what's up with that barrier? Naruto asked as he dodged a kunai strike from a sound ninja and kicked him away. Naruto, I need you to help evacuate the civilians and get them to safety. Kakashi said. I need to go and stop Gara. Naruto said. No. Sasu can handle it. Kakashi said. If you think Sasu can handle something that's unstable, then you're more of an idiot than I thought. Naruto said and kicked a sound ninja away. That's an order. Kakashi said. No. Naruto, go after Gara. We've already sent a team after him. You should be able to catch up to them. Make sure Sasu gets back to the village and if you have to, use force. Jiraiya said and Naruto nodded then vanished. Why do you think Naruto can handle Gara? Kakashi asked. You need to get your head out of his ass. Sasuke isn't strong enough to defeat Gara if he releases Shukaku. Jiraiya said. Oh and what can Naruto do if he releases Shukaku? Kakashi asked. Naruto can summon the boss Dode. Now, I'm going to the barrier to help them. Take out as many sound ninja you can and then meet up with the commander for further instructions. Jiraiya said and walked away. Naruto. Naruto was running through the forest dodging any sound ninja and took them out with ease. He was surprised at how easy it was to take them out and figured Orochimaru must not care about his ninja at all if they're that weak. After a while of fighting and rushing towards Gara, Naruto came across Kankuro who was sitting by a tree in pain. Kankuro, what happened? Naruto asked. It's Asuke. I tried to stall him and when I had him beat, he had these weird markings on his body and completely destroyed me. Kankuro said. Can you move? Naruto asked. I need some help. He's going after Gara. Tamari's trying to calm Gara down, and if Sasuke manages to get to him then he'll release Shukaku, and we're not strong enough to stop him. Kankuro said as Naruto helped him up, don't worry. If Shukaku is released I can handle him. As for Tamari, I think she should be able to hold Sasuke off until we get there. Actually, there was a search party sent after him, did you see them? Naruto asked, yeah. I told them to go ahead. Kankuro said as they were jumping through the trees, who was it? Naruto asked. A useless pink-haired girl, the lazy bum and the creepy bug boy. Kankuro sighed and Naruto snickered at that. Sakura, Shino and Shikamaru. Not a bad team, but they could have sent more. Naruto said. Wait. There's Tamari. Kankuro said, pointing to Tamari laying on a tree branch, and they landed next to her, causing her to point a kunai at them. Relax, Tamari. It's just us. Naruto said and she lowered the kunai. Sasu got me. I had him and then he used a fire against my wind, then used some kind that had marks on his face and completely caught me off guard. Tamari said, yeah. That thing caught me off guard as well. Kankuro said. The others went ahead. Tamari said, then I'm going. Naruto said, Naruto, please don't hurt Gara. It's not his fault. Tamari said, I know. It's your father's fault and whoever put the seal on him. Naruto said, what do you mean? I get it's my father's fault, but how is it the fault of somebody who put the seal on him? Kankuro asked, because Gara's seal is horrible. I know a bit about sealing and Pervy Sage taught me one that will work. After I get a chance to defeat Gara, I'll fix his seal. He'll still have his instant sand defense, but he won't be unstable and will actually be able to sleep. Naruto said, I don't know. How can we be sure you know what you're doing? Kankuro asked, it's either that or I let him run on a rampage and possibly get you two killed. Naruto said, do it. Tamari said, Tamari. Kankuro said, no Kankuro. If this is Gara's chance at being normal again and no longer being labeled a killing machine, then I'll take it. Tamari said, fine. If you mess this up then I'll come after you. Kankuro said, I'll keep that in mind. Naruto said and vanished, let's heal up before we go. Tamari said and Kankuro nodded, you like him, don't you? Kankuro asked, who? Tamari asked, Naruto. Kankuro said, not in the way you're thinking. He's a good friend. He showed me around the village a few times. I can't date him or anything, it wouldn't work out. Tamari said, are you going to tell him? Kankuro asked, I don't think I need to. He probably already knows that and feels the same way. Besides, that Hayuga girl has her eyes on him. Tamari said, the quiet one. Huh. Never would have guessed. Kankuro said, Naruto. Naruto was quickly jumping through the trees trying to get to Gara quickly and stop him from transforming. He heard the sound of Sasuke's Shidori and then heard an explosion. He channeled Chakra into his legs to increase his speed, and when he made it to the area where Gara and Sasuke were fighting, Gara was already in his second stage, and Sasuke was pretty much defeated. Naruto saw the same marks on his body Kankuro, and Tamari told him about. Gara launched himself at Sasuke preparing to end him, and Naruto jumped in and gave him a chakra enhanced kick to the face. Naruto. Sakura exclaimed, man am I glad to see you. Shikamaru said, grab Sasuke and leave. Naruto said, no way. We're taking him on together. Sakura said, and then Gara yelled causing everyone to look on in shock as he finally released Shukaku. Like I said. 
take Sasuke and go back to the village. I can handle him. Naruto said. Naruto, there is no way you can handle that thing alone. Yeah you've gotten stronger over this month and can possibly say that you're the strongest genin in the village, but this is on a completely different level. We should wait for a squad to show up. Shikamaru said. Just leave. I can handle this. Naruto said then bit him thumb and went through hand signs, summoning, you again. What is it this time kid? Gamabunta asked. Rescue team, is that a giant toad? Sakura asked. It is. I think we should get back. This is about to get messy. Shikamaru said. I'll grab Sasuke. Shino said. Aren't we going to help him? Sakura asked. No. Naruto can handle this himself. Shikamaru said and they leapt away from the fight. Naruto vs. Gara. Do you not see the Shukaku-san spirit in front of us? We need to take him down. Naruto said. The tailed beast. Why is it that the blonde summoners always gave me fight tailed beasts? You're lucky I like you kid. Gamabunta said. Play possum. Ara forced himself to go to sleep and relinquished full control to Shukaku. Oh yeah. I'm finally free baby. Here we go. I hope you're ready to die. Let's do this. Shukaku yelled. Get ready chief toad. Naruto said. I'm way ahead of you. Gamabunta said. Wind style. Drilling air bullets. Shukaku fired multiple bullets of highly compressed air at Gamabunta, who leapt into the air to dodge them. Shukaku didn't let up and continued shooting at Gamabunta who had no choice but to counter. Water style. Liquid bullets. Gamabunta fired multiple bullets of water from his mouth and they collided into the air bullets from Shukaku, resulting in an explosion of water. Gamabunta pulled out his sword and when he was close enough, he cut the arm off of Shukaku, making him yell out in pain. Kid, we need to wake up the boy on Shukaku's head. It's the only way to defeat him. Gamabunta said. I don't think that's possible. The sand defense is instantly, and now that Shukaku's in charge right now, it's even faster than me at top speed. Naruto said. Well, I can't keep running around all day. If I wanted to do that, I would have stayed behind and chased the tadpoles back at home. Gamabunta said. We'll figure something out. Just keep. What the hell is that? Naruto asked pointing to Shukaku's purple sphere in front of its mouth. That is something we do not want to get hit by. Hang on tight. Gamabunta said. Hail beast bomb. Shukaku fired his shot at Naruto, but missed because Gamabunta leapt high up in the air. The tailed beast bomb kept going until it exploded and destroyed a mountain that was far away from the fighting, but everyone near the fight felt the shock wave from it. Holy crap. Naruto said. This is dangerous. We need to stop him now. Any ideas? Gamabunta asked. Hmm. Pervy Sage said that you can use oil. Think you can give me some? Naruto asked. I like your style, kid. Gamabunta said. Toad oil bullet. Higher style. Flame bullet. Toad flame bullet. Naruto combined this with Gamabunta's oil and created a huge flame that sent Shukaku flying backwards. Naruto went through hand signs and used the water style. Ripping torrents on Shukaku's legs, making them turn into a mud-like substance. Shukaku was about to use a tailed beast bomb again, but Naruto activated his and did something unexpected. Shukaku suddenly stopped in his tracks and seemed paralyzed. Naruto didn't know what happened, but took advantage of the situation. Chief Toad. Throw me at him. We can use this moment to wake him up. Naruto said. Are you crazy who am I kidding? I'll do it. Gamabunta said and threw Naruto at Gara. Wakey wakey. Naruto said. Naruto headbutts Gara, forcing him to wake up, and then Shukaku's body starts to crack before it eventually crumbles away. Naruto and Gara both fell to the ground, but Naruto managed to catch Gara midair, and they landed safely. And no. Stay back. Gara said with fear in his eyes. Relax. I'm not gonna hurt you. I want to help you. Naruto said. Leave me alone. Gara said and willed his sand to attack, but nothing happened. Listen, me and you are alike. The pain of suffering at the hands of the village you grew up in. The angry stares and cold looks. You're not alone. I have one inside of me as well. Naruto said and showed Gara's seal as Tamari and Kankuro landed next to them. Did you fix him yet? Tamari asked. Not yet. I'm about to. Gara, I'm gonna fix your seal so you can sleep and not have to live the angry looks and cold stares anymore. Naruto said. Gara nodded after looking at him for a few seconds. Naruto looked at his seal and instantly frowned when he saw it. The seal wasn't even something you used to contain something like a tailed beast. Naruto went through a few hand signs before he placed his hand on Gara's seal. Gara grunted in pain which was new to him, so he tried to fight Naruto off of him, but Tamari and Kankuro held him down. After 10 minutes Gara's old seal was destroyed and a new one took place. Naruto placed a six symbol seal on Gara, with the middle part of the seal being the lock to the seal where everything connects. It wasn't as strong as Naruto's seal, but it was perfect for holding Shukaku. That should do it. Naruto sat and sat down to catch his breath. That's it. I was expecting something more flashy. Kankuro said. It wasn't that difficult. 
like I said, Pervy Sage taught me this seal, and we practiced it every day for the past few weeks until I got it right 10 times in a row. The previous seal was horrible, and whoever did it should be ashamed of themselves. Naruto said, what makes you say that? Tamari asked, it was basically like putting Shukaku into a storage scroll. Naruto said, that would never work. Tamari said, exactly. Gara must have some serious willpower if he was able to force Shukaku to stay in the seal while he was awake as well. Naruto said, so is it safe for him to sleep now? Tamari asked, look at him. Naruto said, and when they did Gara was completely out, he looked so peaceful. Tamari said, yeah. It's almost as if he was never a rampaging psychopath. Kankuro said, shut up. Tamari yelled and bashed him over the head with her fan, I feel bad for whoever dates her in the future. Naruto thought, Naruto. Shikamaru said and landed next to him, what's up? Naruto asked, is it finished? Shikamaru asked, yeah. It's finished. Naruto said, how did you stop that thing? Shikamaru asked, yeah. I was wondering the same thing. Tamari said, I honestly don't know. I'll have to talk to Pervy Sage about it. Naruto said, nobody move. A voice yelled and they looked to to see Sasuke running at them with his Yodori activated, wind style. Gale whined, Tamari swung her giant fan and created a huge amount of air that crashed into Sasuke and sent him back into a tree while cancelling out his Yodori. Nice. Naruto said and Tamari grinned, thanks. Tamari said, listen, we should really get back to the village and help. Shikamaru said, right. You grab Sasuke and head back. You two should take Gara and head home. I'll let your sensei know what's going on. Naruto said, why do I have to grab Sasuke? Shikamaru asked, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you fought a gigantic demon on top of a gigantic toad and fixed a seal. Naruto said sarcastically, hum on you big baby. Just do it. Tamari teased and Shikamaru groaned, this is such a drag. Shikamaru said and grabbed Sasuke before leaving, Naruto. Tamari said, yeah. Naruto asked and Tamari gave him a hug, thank you. Tamari said and Naruto lightly hugged her back, you're welcome. Now, get out of here. Naruto said and Tamari nodded before kicking Kankuro. Wake up, Kankuro. We're leaving. Tamari said and they both grabbed Gara before leaving. I better get promoted after this. Naruto thought and left. Next day, I figured you'd want to be at the funeral with everyone else. Jiraiya said to Naruto as they were both leaning on the same post at training ground 7. I didn't think it would be smart for me to be there anymore. I was there and not even his funeral was enough to keep ninja and civilians from glaring at me. Naruto said. He didn't tell you about your parents for your protection. They were both well-known ninjas who helped in our victory during the Third Shinobi War. He didn't want you to accidentally slip up and say it to the wrong person, and then you get captured by their enemies. Jiraiya said, then he should have just told me that. Instead he decided to blatantly lie to my face and then tell me it's pointless to worry about that. Leaving me on the streets for two years and then showing favoritism while I have to struggle to get by. It sucks that he died, but for some reason I'm finding it hard to feel anything towards it. Naruto said, don't beat yourself up over it. Everyone's different in how things affect them. Jiraiya said, and then it started to rain. So now what? Naruto asked. Now, we need a new one. We need a strong leader. Somebody that believes in the will of fire and will lead the village the right way. Jiraiya said. So are you going to take the title of Naruto asked. No. I like to travel and being isn't my style. Jiraiya said and there was a brief silence until Naruto broke it. Herbie Sage, I found out another ability of mine. Naruto said. Really? What is it? Jiraiya asked, I can cast a cast that looks like it shut someone's body down for 30 seconds. It's how I beat Shukaku when I had to fight him. Naruto said, that's kind of disturbing. Do you think it can cast any other Jiraiya asked, I don't know. That was the first time I did it. Naruto said, we'll have to work on that then. For now, I'll give you two days to rest up. Not many genin can say that they managed to beat a tailed beast. Jiraiya said, I guess you're right. Naruto said and then the rain stopped, however, I need answers. How exactly were you able to figure out the first three activations for the seven heavenly breath so quickly? I thought you were only able to use two of them. Jiraiya said, I never slept when you sent me home. I used my shadow clones while I meditated and had them practice every night until they had them done. Compared to the eight inner gates, it focuses on gathering oxygen into your lungs. I had my shadow clones hold their breath underwater for as long as they could, and then we tried the techniques. I didn't try any of the activations until a shadow clone was able to do it without any problems. Naruto said, we'll take a break from those for now. Since you're on a break I'd recommend talking to Asuma in regards to your wind chakra nature. He's one of the two, now three wind users in. He can help you so your attacks are as powerful as they should be. Jiraiya said, who's the other wind user? Naruto asked, somebody you need to stay away from. I'll tell you more about him some other time. Jiraiya said, okay. I guess I'll see you in two days. 
Naruto said. Another thing you should know since you're my apprentice is that when I say a specific time frame, it may not be exact. I could be called away for something important from my research. Jiraiya said. Yeah. Your research for your stupid books. Naruto said. My books aren't stupid. Anyway, I'm also Kanoha's spy master. I report to them and nobody else. Sometimes I'll be gone for a few days to a few years. I've been out of the village for years until I met you at the hot springs. Jiraiya said. I thought you were just some lousy pervert. For somebody that is a spy master you sure do get caught and beat a lot. Naruto said. Shut up. I was only caught because of you. Jiraiya said. Whatever you say. Naruto said. Listen, try to relax for a few days before you start training again. You may have the nine tails to heal you, but rest also helps. Go hang out with your friends or something. Jiraiya said pointing to Sakura who was waiting for him. I doubt I can call anybody in this village my friend. Naruto said. You've known them for years right? You should be friends with them by now. Jiraiya said. Well I'm not. The only person I think I can call a friend is Tamari and she's from another village, but I'll see what I can do. Naruto said. That's the spirit. Jiraiya said and banished as Sakura walked up to him. Yes Sakura? Naruto asked. Why weren't you at the funeral? Sakura asked. I was. I left early. Naruto said. Konohimaru was looking for you. He was a mess. Sakura said. I'll talk to him next time I see him. Naruto said. Listen, later on everyone is going to meet up for some food at Yakiniku Q. I just wanted to see if you wanted to come. Sakura said. I can't. Naruto sighed and Sakura got angry as usual. Why not? You think you're too good to hang out with the rest of the rookie nine. Sakura said. No. I'm not allowed in that place. Actually that entire part of the village hates me. Naruto said. This is what happens when you keep pranking everyone and everything. You're such an idiot. It's no wonder you're always alone and nobody likes you. Sakura said and instantly regretted it. I see. Have a good day Sakura. Naruto said and walked away. Naruto, I'm. Sakura didn't finish because Naruto vanished. Next day. So, Naruto. You and Tamari seemed to get along well after she apologized. Am said. Yeah. She's a cool person. Naruto said. Aha. Uh -huh. What do you think of her? Am asked. She's smart, strong and really cares for her brothers. Naruto said. Do you like her? Am asked with a grin. Not in the way you're thinking. Naruto said. What do you mean? Am asked. You think I like her as a girlfriend and I don't. We wouldn't really work out. She needs somebody that's kind of submissive I guess you can say. She likes to be in charge and plus she needs somebody to match her intelligence. I'm somewhat smart but not smart enough to be with her. That and I'm not really the submissive type. We'd argue like every day since she won't be able to boss me around. Naruto said. How do you know about being submissive? Am asked. Anko and Yugao taught me. Naruto said. Great. It just had to be Anko who taught him. Thought. So what kind of girl would you like? Am said. I don't know. She has to have red hair though. It's my favorite color. Naruto said. If red is your favorite color, then why don't you have anything red on? Am asked. I do. My shirt underneath is red. Naruto said, and then they were interrupted by none other than Jiraiya. Seriously, Naruto? You just couldn't stay away from the Raymon. Jiraiya said, Hervey Sage. What are you doing here? I thought I had a few days off. Naruto asked, there's been a change of plans. We're going on a mission. Meet me at the gate in an hour. Jiraiya said, you got it, Hervey Sage. Naruto said and Jiraiya sighed, I really wish you'd stop calling me that. Jiraiya thought, Naruto and Jiraiya, so, what's the mission? Naruto asked as they were walking along the road. We're going to find a woman. Jiraiya said. Seriously? You brought me with you just so you can shag a random woman and then write about it in one of your books. Have you no shame, pervy sage? Naruto asked. This isn't just some woman. She's a very remarkable woman. Jiraiya said. Right. Anyway, I think it's time we start talking about my training. Naruto said. What training? Jiraiya asked. It's just that I think it's time I added something unique to my skill set. Don't get me wrong, I know I have ninjutsu, tojutsu and, but anybody can learn those. I'm talking about something unique that is difficult to learn. Something complicated, yet simple at the same time. Naruto said. Something complicated, yet simple, huh? I've got just the thing. Jiraiya said. What is it? Naruto asked. A simple, yet complicated. Jiraiya said. So, when do we get started? Naruto asked. We need to stop by the nearest town first before we do anything. I don't have the supplies on me for this. Jiraiya said and they stopped at a sign. Adafuku Town. That's 10 kilometers from here. Naruto said. That's right. It's our first stop in our search. Jiraiya said. Right. So, would you choose me to come with you? Naruto asked. Well, you're my apprentice and I think you'll play a major part in the success of this mission. That and I did say I would tell you who I really am, along with the identity of one of your parents. Jiraiya said. Yeah, but you also said that you'd only tell me if I became a Naruto said. Trust me. 
you're gonna make it when we get back to the village. Everything that happened during the exams and invasion has been carefully documented. Jiraiya said, if you say so. Naruto said, now, which parent do you want to know about? Jiraiya asked and Naruto thought about it for a minute. My mom. Naruto said, okay. I'll introduce myself first. As you know, I'm Jiraiya the Toad Sage and one of the legends. However, I'm also your godfather. Jiraiya said, by what? Where the hell were you? Naruto yelled, listen, I'm Kanoha's spy master and I traveled a lot. It wouldn't have been smart for me to bring a newborn along with me, so I decided to leave you in the village with him. I would send you money every month, and until I saw you at the hot springs, I honestly thought you were living a nice life from what he would report to me. That toad wallet you carry around is from me. I decided that if I wanted to keep you safe and your status a secret, I'd protect you from the outside. I've stopped so many lead ninja from leaking information about you over the years that the amount would be considered a small army. Jiraiya said, so, you thought you would be better off protecting me from the outside rather than taking me with you? Naruto asked, exactly. Jiraiya said, I guess I can agree with that. What about my mom? Naruto asked, her name was Kashina Yuzumaki. She was a well-respected Kinoichi in our village and was well known for her unique use of ninjutsu and her abilities. Before she died, some people would say that she was stronger than Tsunade, my other teammate in the legendary. As a kid she was a headstrong, impulsive, eccentric, and stubborn girl as well as a bit of a tomboy. However, with time she matured and was very level-headed and cheerful, with a noticeable sassy side to her. She died protecting you from the wrath of the Nine Tails during the attack. All she wanted was a peaceful life with a family, and that was all taken away from her the day you were born. Your name is the name of a character from the very first book that I wrote that didn't sell as well as I hoped it would. Jiraiya said, do you think she would be proud of me? I mean I don't exactly have the greatest reputation in the village. Naruto said, she would be proud of you no matter how your reputation was in the village. All she wanted was for you to be happy in life. Jiraiya said, I guess she would be. I mean I have a friend although she's from Suna, but she's a friend nonetheless. Naruto said, that Tamari girl? I thought she was your girlfriend. Jiraiya said, no. We wouldn't work out. Plus, my girlfriend needs to have red hair. It's my favorite color. Naruto said, he's more like Minato and he doesn't even know it. Jiraiya thought as they arrived in Adafuku town and found a hotel. I see. Now, we'll be staying for the night. Jiraiya said. Why? Naruto asked. Because I want to check around and see if anybody has seen the person we're looking for. Jiraiya said and Naruto felt a small pulse of chakra. Well, what is her name? What does she like to do? Naruto asked. She's my other teammate, Tsunade. She likes to drink and gamble a lot. She's earned the nickname the legendary sucker for her terrible luck. Jiraiya said. Then we should head over to Tanzaku town. It says here that it's the biggest gambling gambling town in the fire country. Naruto said as he was reading a brochure. I guess we can do that, but are you sure you can make it? It's quite the distance away from us. It's an extra day of travel, but if we travel non-stop as fast as we can, then we can make it there in a few hours. Jiraiya said. I can make it. Naruto said. First, we need to stop for supplies to teach you that. Jiraiya said and they walked away from the hotel. You felt it too, didn't you? Naruto quietly asked. Yeah. Somebody cast a close by. Jiraiya said and they made it to a carnival game, but Naruto accidentally bumped into somebody spilling a drink on his coat. Watch it. Look what you did, you little punk. A bald head guy said. Huh? Naruto asked. You stained the leader's brand new designer suit. You're paying for that. 100,000 Ryo and you better pay up now. The bald head man said. What? You're telling me that suit cost 100,000 Ryo? Naruto asked. That seems like a little bit of a stretch. You expect us to believe that monkey suits cost 100,000 Ryo. Jiraiya said, are you looking for trouble, old man? You better shut the hell up if you know what's good for you. The leader said, the boss used to be from Awagakur, the legendary dark ninja, feared by all. The bald guy said, oh? The legendary what now? Jiraiya asked, you're asking for it. Just keep pushing me and I'll kick your ass. The leader said, Naruto, this is perfect timing. I'll show you that I'm gonna teach you while we're on our little mission. Watch carefully. Jiraiya said and formed a spiraling ball of chakra in his hand. Enough of this. The leader said and charged at Jiraiya only to have the shoved into his chest and sent crashing into the game they were at. That was awesome. Naruto said. I was holding back. You guys are hardly worth the trouble. Jiraiya said and took the guy's wallet, then paid for the damages and bought all of the balloons filled with water, as well as the rubber balls. What the hell kind of was that? Naruto thought. Naruto, let's get going. It's time to leave and time for you to train. Jiraiya said. All right. Naruto said and when they were far enough from Adafuku town, Jiraiya tossed him a water balloon. Here. Take this. Jiraiya said. What's this for? Naruto asked. The first step in what I'm teaching you. Jiraiya said and popped the balloon in his hand. Whoa. 
How did you do that? Naruto asked, in the water balloon exercise, you learn to create a stream of chakra. In other words, spinning. First, gather the chakra in your hand like you would during the tree climbing exercise. Then release a steady stream of it using the water walking exercise, and finally use the chakra to push and churn the water in the balloon. Jiraiya said, so I have to spin the water inside of the balloon until it pops. Naruto said and started to spin the water in the balloon, yeah. Now, let's get going. We've got to be in Tenzaku before nightfall so we can get a hotel to stay in. Jiraiya said, wait. Can you give me one more demonstration? Naruto asked, sure, but this is the last one you get. Jiraiya said and popped another water balloon, I get it now. When I spin the water in the balloon I'm only doing it in one direction. When you spin the water it's going in multiple directions that makes it seem to bubble inside before it eventually pops. Naruto said, be caught on faster than I thought. Jiraiya thought, exactly. Now you will have more difficulty since you have to concentrate while we're traveling at high speeds. Jiraiya said, that's okay with me. Just means the end result will be even better. Naruto said, glad you understand. Now, let's go. Jiraiya said and they started to run towards Tenzaku Town, Tenzaku Town. After running for nearly eight hours, Naruto and Jiraiya finally arrived at Tenzaku Town. Along the way Naruto finally managed to pop the balloon after two hours of trying, and Jiraiya made him practice it until he was able to do it in an instant. Naruto wanted to move on to the next step, but Jiraiya told him to give his chakra network a break and they would do the next step in a few days. As they were walking around, Naruto could tell that this place would attract any kind of gambler, even the likes of Tsunade. Naruto decided to test his luck at a lottery ticket, and to his and Jiraiya's surprise, he actually won off of his first ticket. Naruto didn't even try to win again, since he had more than enough money to last him a couple of months. Alright, Naruto. I doubt she's here yet, but given the buzz around this place, I'd say she'll be here within two weeks. I'll book us a hotel and for the next two weeks, I'll be working with you on your tojutsu and breaking down hand signs for you to use them faster. Is there anything specific you want to work on besides this Jiraiya asked, yeah. I want to work on my fkenjutsu, but not the ordinary stuff. I want to learn summer atlas methods of removing some. Naruto said and Jiraiya sighed, listen kid. Juinjutsu is no joke and it takes years to master. Jiraiya said, I know that, but we have my shadow clones, remember? We'll be speeding up time if we use them. Naruto said, I'll teach you. Why do you want to know so bad? Jiraiya asked, I don't know. I just have a feeling that I'll need it in the future. Naruto said, alright. Starting tomorrow we begin training. I'll have you work on the second stage in physical training while I work with your clones for a few hours. Jiraiya said, alright. Naruto said, two weeks later, two weeks has arrived, and a few of Jiraiya's spies have contacted him, letting him know Tsunade was now in Tenzaku town. What made him confused was that earlier in the day, Tsunade hit the jackpot consistently and won a ton of money. Over the past two weeks Jiraiya worked Naruto into the ground. He needed less hand signs for all of them, his tojutsu was even better than before, he managed to get past the second step, which required him to pop a rubber ball. Jiraiya kept his word and taught Naruto some releasing methods that Naruto took like a fish in water. Currently Jiraiya and Naruto are working on the final step to his which relies on him combining the first and second steps together. Alright, Naruto. According to my sources, Tsunade is in town. She's been here for a few days and we've been gone from the leaf village for over two weeks. I want you to make some shadow clones and have each of them try to locate her to make it easier to find her. Jiraiya said, I don't even know what she looks like. Naruto said, this is what she looks like. Jiraiya said and held up a picture of Tsunade, you just happen to have a picture of her with her boobs being the main focus. That's not weird at all. Naruto said sarcastically, shut up. Just make the damn clones. Jiraiya said, alright. Alright. Naruto said and made 100 shadow clones that spread out to find her. Now, when they find her, let me know which direction and we'll head that way. Jiraiya said, alright. Naruto said and then started to work on the final stage of his, but the way you progress in everything, I'm starting to think you were faking it being horrible all this time. Jiraiya said, I wish. I guess I just needed the right teacher to guide me. Naruto said, that sounded like a compliment. Jiraiya said, it is. I mean you actually know what you're talking about and take time to help correct my flaws. Naruto said, well, I'm not one of the legends for nothing. Jiraiya said and puffed his chest out, yeah, but you're still a pervert. Naruto said and Jiraiya deflated, way to ruin the moment. Jiraiya mumbled and Naruto's clones popped, I found her. She's going towards that big castle. If we hurry, we can catch her before she goes any further. Naruto said, let's go. Jiraiya said and they vanished, giant castle, I assume it's safe to say we have a deal here then. Hirachimaru asked Tsunade after he just offered to bring her loved ones back to life if he healed her arms, higher style. 
fireball. Orochimaru, Kabuto, Tsunade and Shizune all jumped out of the way from a gigantic fireball that came crashing down in between them. The smoke cleared, revealing Jiraiya and Naruto standing there with a glare. Jiraiya. Tsunade said, well, if it isn't the other member of the legendary. Orochimaru said, look, he even brought a child with him. Kabuto said trying to taunt Naruto who just activated his and the Kabuto collapsed on the ground, what? Orochimaru thought, seems we've arrived at the right moment. Jiraiya said, Lord Jiraiya. Shizune said, what did they do to Kabuto? Tsunade thought, I believe it is time for you to grab your lapdog and leave. Naruto said and pulled out a kunai, you're no match for me. I can kill you before you even think about moving. Orochimaru said, you could, but pervy sage would reach you before you get to me. Do you want to test your luck? Naruto asked and Orochimaru gritted his teeth. I expect an answer by the end of the week, Tsunade. Orochimaru said and then Kabuto woke up then they vanished. Jiraiya, I. We need to talk. Jiraiya said interrupting Tsunade. We can go grab something to eat. Shizun said. Let's go. Jiraiya said and walked away with Naruto following behind him. Restaurant, talk. What did Orochimaru want? Jiraiya asked and Tsunade didn't say anything. I. He just wanted to stop by and say hello. Tsunade finally said and Jiraiya slammed his hand on the table. Bullshit. He wants something from you. What does he want? Jiraiya asked. Master Jiraiya, perhaps we should keep it down. People are beginning to stare at us. Shizun said. Fine. Tsunade, won't talk so you'll have to. What did Orochimaru want? Jiraiya asked. He. Shizun. That's enough. Not another word. Tsunade said. This is a waste of my time. To think you'd betray the village your grandfather built for a traitor like Orochimaru. I thought you were better than this, Tsunade. You truly disappointed me. Jiraiya said and Tsunade was actually hurt by his words. You wouldn't understand. Tsunade said. It doesn't matter. If you go through with whatever he wants your help with, then I'll kill both of you myself. Jiraiya said and Tsunade flinched. Just leave. Tsunade said. Fine. To think the village actually wanted somebody like you to become and lead us. You're a shell of yourself now. What happened to the women I loved growing up? It's time to train kids. Jiraiya said. Is he? Shizun asked. My new apprentice. Jiraiya said. Oh. In that case. I'm Shizun, Lady Tsunade's apprentice. Nice to meet you. Shizun said. Naruto. Nice to meet you. Naruto said staring at Tsunade. Those can't be real. Naruto thought. What are you looking at, kid? Jiraiya asked. Are those real? Naruto asked pointing to Tsunade's breasts and Jiraiya choked on his food. Excuse me? Tsunade asked. Are they real? I mean they're so big. Your back must hurt a lot from walking around with those things. How about a neck massage? Naruto asked as he went behind Tsunade. Uh, Naruto. I don't think you should do that. Jiraiya said. Come on, pervy sage. Anko told me this works for her, and she's got some soft big ones as well. Naruto said. How do you know? Jiraiya asked. She let me feel them after she gave me the talk. Naruto said and Jiraiya couldn't help it, so he pulled out his notepad scribbling something down giggling. Oh wow. This feels amazing. Tsunade said. You're really tense in your neck and shoulder area. You should get a massage more frequently. Naruto said and started to work on the knots in her shoulders. Oh. That's the spot. Tsunade said. What the hell? How's he doing that? I can't even place a finger on Tsunade before she beats me up and he's giving her a massage. Jiraiya thought. Given how tense you are, you seem to be under a lot of stress. Naruto said and Tsunade sighed. That's an understatement. Tsunade said and flinched when Naruto started to work on another knot in her shoulders. What's got you so stressed out? Naruto asked. This deal with Orochimaru. He wants me to heal his arms, and in exchange he said he'll bring my brother and boyfriend back to life. I don't know what to do. On one hand I don't want to help him, I'd rather kill him. On the other hand there's a chance that I'll be able to see my loved ones again. Tsunade said, and then her eyes went wide as she saw a smirk on Jiraiya's face. Nice work kid. Jiraiya said, son of a bitch. Tsunade said as Naruto sat back down. Thanks, pervy sage. Naruto said, I really wish you wouldn't call me that. Jiraiya said, how did you do that? Shizune asked, I grew up on the streets for two years. I learned how to manipulate people and get answers in nonviolent ways. That and Anko helped me out with some tips, just in case I ever had a seduction mission. Anyway, she had quite a few drinks of the strongest sake available, and I waited for the right moment to strike. A cloudy mind and a nice massage works a lot apparently. You should really get a massage more often. Your large breasts are hurting your shoulders. Ever thought about getting some custom-made bras to hold them up? Naruto asked. You're pretty straightforward. Tsunade said. Was that rude? I made the same mistake with Tamari. Hmm. I like your necklace. Naruto said. What? Tsunade asked. I'm not really good at holding conversations with people, mainly females. I'm usually having a one-way conversation with everyone ignoring me. I think I'm getting better. 
Naruto said. Anyway, I hope you're not thinking about helping Orochimaru because I can tell you that it won't be smart if you did. Jiraiya said. What makes you say that? Tsunade asked. Well, the one he wants to use is the forbidden one your uncle created. He'll bring them back to life, but they'll only be a reanimation. He's already brought back Hashirama and Tabarama to fight Sensei when he invaded during the exams. Jiraiya said. I heard about that. Nice job using Gamabunta to take out the one-tailed beast. I see you haven't lost a step. Tsunade said with a small smile. I didn't summon Gamabunta. I was still trying to help Sensei, but the barrier Orochimaru's lackeys used was stronger than I thought. Naruto was the one who summoned Gamabunta and defeated the one tails. Jiraiya said, him. Seriously? How? He's just a kid. Tsunade said. Can I show her? Naruto asked. Yeah. Jiraiya said and Naruto activated his. A Hishigen. Tsunade whispered. The what? Naruto asked. Let's talk somewhere else. Tsunade said and they left. Jiraiya Hotel. So what's the Jiraiya asked? It was rare amongst the Uzumaki clan. My grandmother, Nido Uzumaki, told me once that not many Uzumaki can use this because they never go through enough emotional trauma. The fact that you awakened it tells me you've had a hard life growing up. Tsunade said. That's an understatement. Naruto mumbled. So what exactly does it do? So far all we know is that he can see chakra pathways, he's immune to when it's activated and can cast it that shuts the body down for 30 seconds. It's how he defeated Shukaku. Jiraiya said. Another thing is that whoever has the will be able to use the ice. You can cast with them like the Sharingan, but only one person has been able to do that, and that was Ashina Yuzumaki, the clan head. That that shuts down the body isn't a per se. It's a hidden ability that temporarily disrupts a person's brain waves and shuts the body down. Tsunade said. Whoa. Naruto said. Is that everything? Jiraiya asked. Yeah. Now, why did you go through so much as a child? Didn't your parents look for you? Tsunade asked. My parents are dead. I'm the Nine Tails and that should tell you everything you need to know. Naruto said. Didn't anybody take care of you? Tsunade asked. No. Sensei was supposed to look after him for me, but it turns out he's been lying to me when I asked for reports on how he was doing and if I needed to return to the village. Jiraiya said. Why would he look after him for you? Tsunade asked. He's my godson. I couldn't take him with me since I was constantly on the live with my spy network, so I left him in Sensei's care. Jiraiya said. Godson? I was supposed to be a godmother, but Kishina didn't make it and neither did her son. Tsunade said and wiped a tear away. She's my godmother. Naruto thought. Tsunade, this is Naruto. He's Kishina's son. I don't know who told you he was dead, but he's been in the village this entire time. Jiraiya said and Tsunade grabbed him by his shirt. Do not play with me. This is serious, Jiraiya. Tsunade said. Look at him. Don't you see the resemblance? You should know who his father is. Don't say anything. He decided to want to know who his mother is first, rather than his father. He's Tsunade and I should have looked for you myself to tell you, but I was too caught up in my missions protecting Naruto from outside threats. Jiraiya said and Tsunade dropped him, then pulled Naruto in for a hug. I'm so sorry. If I had known you were alive I would have come back for you and raised you. Tsunade said. Why weren't you in the village anyway? Naruto asked. I left the village after the second shinobi war, after my brother and boyfriend at the time died. I came back occasionally and met your mother a few times and even allowed her to sign the slug contract if she wanted to contact me. That's how I found out about you. I was on my way back to the village when a gorilla mask told me Kashina and her son died in the Nine Tails attack. I've been gone ever since and I've just been drinking my sorrows away. Tsunade said. Then come back to the village. I don't have a mom in my life and we need one. You'd be perfect for both. Naruto said. I don't know if I can do that. I haven't been in the village in years. I'm an alcoholic and I'm in serious debt. I'm the last person you should want. Jiraiya should take the seat. Tsunade said. His first order would be for women to walk around topless. Do you really want him to have the seat? Naruto asked. Listen, Naruto. I'm just not cut out for the job. Tsunade said. How about a bet? Naruto asked and Tsunade of course fell for it. I'm listening. Tsunade said. Herbie Sage is teaching me. If I can't have it complete in three days then I'll give you my toad wallet that's filled with money. If I do get it finished in three days, then you have to come back to Konoha and become. Naruto said. You're on. I leave and throw in my grandfather's necklace. Tsunade said. Herbie Sage, I'll see you in three days. Naruto said and walked out with Shizun following him, leaving the two alone. You know he's gonna win that bet. Jiraiya said. I know. I was going to come back regardless of being close to him. I wanted to talk to you alone. Tsunade said. About what? Jiraiya asked. Was his life really that bad? Doesn't he have any friends? Tsunade asked. He didn't go into full detail about his life with me. He only told me bits and pieces. As for friends he has one. A girl named Tamari from Suna. Jiraiya said. Akazakiya's daughter. How'd that happen? 
Sunaid asked. They met during the exams, from what I understand. Seemingly enough you think they have a thing for each other, but that's not the case. He said they're just friends, and you'd swear they've known each other all their life from how close they've gotten over the month break between the finals of the exams. Jurea said, just one friend and she's basically royalty. That's interesting. Doesn't he have any other friends? Sunaid asked. No. He realized that nobody was really his friend, and they never paid attention to him when he would talk to them. He's never actually held a conversation, which is why he thought he was being rude when mentioning your breasts, and quickly apologized, then complimented you on your jewelry. It's a work in progress, but I think he's getting the hang of it. Jurea said. What's he like? Sunaid asked. He's a combination of Minato and Kishina. Of course he has the Yuzumaki temper, but I think Minato's calm-like attitude balances him out. He can figure stuff out quickly, but he just needs a little push in the right direction. The thing he's learning is the and he's nearly completed it. It hasn't even been a month yet. Jurea said, and then there was a silence between them until Tsunade spoke up. Why didn't we ever work out? Tsunade asked. You rejected me pretty bad on a day I was just checking up on you. I know you were going through some things after losing Dan and the Waki, but I was only there as a friend that you needed. Jurea said. I know and I'm sorry. It's just I knew you were jealous that I started dating Dan, and I thought you were probably going to talk bad about him. I know you aren't that kind of person, but I wasn't thinking straight. Tsunade said. That's why I decided to give you your space after that day. Jurea said. You haven't spoken to me in two decades. I thought you hated me. Tsunade said. I didn't hate you. I hated what you said to me and how you showed no remorse for it. I decided to focus on my spy network, and then Naruto was born so I had to work even harder. Jurea said. Does the village really want me to become Tsunade asked. They were going to give me the hat, but I turned it down and recommended it to you. Jurea said. Then if this is a mission of that caliber, then would you bring Naruto along? Tsunade asked. The elders wanted to send it with me and they'd slow me down. He's my apprentice and I wanted to train him some more and get him out of the village. That and I figured it was time you two met. Jurea said. Naruto and Shizun. Naruto, can I talk to you? Shizun asked. Uh, sure. Naruto said. You need to call off the net with Lady Tsunade. Shizun said. Why? Naruto asked. Because that necklace is cursed. Every time she gave it to somebody, they ended up dying. Shizun said. Listen, she's the one who offered the necklace. I just wanted her to come back to the village to become and finally have some kind of family. Naruto said. I understand that, but you shouldn't take the necklace. It can kill you. It's bad luck. Shizun said. I have a giant fox sealed into my gut, and I've already had Leaf Ninja try to kill me. A little more bad luck won't hurt me. Naruto said. Leaf Ninja? Shizun asked. I've already said too much. I need to start training and win this bet. Naruto said. Don't say I didn't warn you. Shizun said and left. You can come out now. Naruto said and two figures walked out wearing black cloaks with red clouds. Not bad. He was able to sense our presence. He's more interesting than I thought, Itachi. A blue shark looking man said. Indeed he is, kiss him. Naruto, we would like for you to come with us. You have something that we need. Itachi said. He must be talking about the nine tails. Naruto thought. He might try to run. Allow me to cut off his legs. Kissam said and pulled a giant sword off his back. What if I were to decline this invitation? Naruto asked. It would not be wise for you to do that. Itachi said and activated his Sharingan. So, you must be Sasuke's brother. Naruto said. He is. He's already dealt with that nuisance, and now we're about to deal with one more. Make this interesting for me. Since I can't kill you, create some of those shadow clones you're known for and allow me to kill them. Kissam said with a grin. How about no? Now, leave me alone. I have something to do. Naruto said and turned around only for Kissam to appear in front of him. I warn you. Kissam said and raised his sword to attack, but Naruto activated his and Kissam collapsed. What was that? Itachi thought and kicked Naruto away. Would you like to join him? Naruto asked. You placed him in A, but there's no foreign chakra in his body. Itachi said. That's because he's not in A. He's temporarily dead. Naruto said and Jiraiya landed in front of him. Itachi Ichiha. Jiraiya said. Jiraiya of the legendary. We will meet again, Naruto. Itachi said and grabbed Kissam before vanishing. You alright kid? Jiraiya asked. Yeah. I'm okay. All he did was kick me away when Kissam fell to the ground. Naruto said. That saves your life and bought me some time. Let's head back. You can start training tomorrow. Jiraiya said. What about my bet? I'll only have two days left instead of three. Naruto said. Trust me kid. With your luck and Tsunade's terrible luck, you'll win this bet. Jiraiya said. I guess you're right. Naruto said. They left the area and went back to the hotel to rest up for the night. Naruto made sure he had everything he needed to complete the and win the bet. That wasn't the only thing on his mind. He wanted to know why Kisum and Itachi were really after him and how they would deal with Orochimaru in a few days. Chapter 3. Sanin Showdown. 
the fifth. Two days have passed since Naruto and Jiraiya found Tsunade, and to Naruto it was fun. He bonded with Tsunade over the past two days, and they were instantly like mother and son. She told him how to talk to women better with the help of Jiraiya and Shizun. He was able to talk to girls now without feeling awkward and even met a few that were his age while walking around the town. Of course he was a natural at charming women and Jiraiya even bribed him with it to help him score some women at the brothel house. The result of this was Tsunade beating Jiraiya within an inch of death once she found out. Another thing he found out was Tsunade had an extreme case of hemophobia. He came back to the hotel one day after training and asked Tsunade to heal some of his wounds and she froze at the sight of his blood. Shizun explained the reasons why she's afraid of blood due to the loss of her lover Dan and her little brother Nawaki. Naruto, being the lovable person that he is, came up with a plan to help Tsunade get over her fear of blood. Flashback, Naruto, what's on your mind? Shizun asked, Granny Tsunade's fear of blood. It's a weakness that can easily be exposed during a fight and I don't want that to happen to her. Naruto said, I understand, but these things take time to get over. Shizun said, it's been nearly 30 years. She's had more than enough time to get over it. Naruto said, well, some people take more time than others. Shizun said, what if I'm in danger and her fear of blood prevents her from saving me? Wait a minute. I got it. Naruto said, what? Shizun asked, will you use me to get her over her fear of blood? Naruto said, how exactly are we going to do that? You have the nine tails inside of you and it heals any major wounds. Shizun said, then we'll use a blood clone. We can give it an injury that only she can heal and it will force her to get over her hemophobia. I doubt she'd want to lose her only family member left, so I'm positive she'll ignore the blood and save the clone. Naruto said, that's a brilliant idea. Do you know how to use the blood clone? Shizun asked, yeah. I just need to draw blood and then do two quick hand signs for it. Naruto said, we need an injury that's too severe for me to heal, but not too severe that it will destroy the clone. Lady Tsunade personally trained me so there isn't much that I can't heal. Shizun said, do you operate near the heart? Naruto asked, no. I've never been in a situation that required surgery near the heart. Oh I see what you plan on doing. Shizun said, after we make the clone, stab the clone in the chest, but have it barely scrape the heart and rush the clone to Tsunade. She'll either have to let me die or get over her fear of blood and heal me. Naruto said, do we tell Master Jiraiya the plan? Shizun asked, no. Pervy Sage should be kept in the dark about this. We need his reaction to be legit. Naruto said, we need a backstory for the injury. Shizun said, tell her Kabuto attacked me while I was training. Use your chakra scalpels to do damage around the clone's body and then stab the clone in the chest with a kunai. Naruto said, it's almost scary how well thought this plan is. Shizun said and Naruto just shrugged. Few hours later, Lady Tsunade. I need your help. Shizun yelled as she burst into their hotel room, what is it? Tsunade asked, it's Naruto. Kabuto attacked him while he was training. Shizun yelled and laid the clone on the bed, then heal him. Tsunade said, I can't. I've never done anything near the heart. He was hit by chakra scalpels and then stabbed near the heart. He's bleeding everywhere. Shizun said, hey, what's with all the noise? Jiraiya asked as he came into the room, Kabuto attacked Naruto and I can't operate around the heart. Shizun said, what? Tsunade, you have to do something. Jiraiya said, I can't. Tsunade said frozen to where she was standing, Lady Tsunade, please. Shizun said, I can't. Tsunade said, damn it, Tsunade. Get your ass over here and save my godson. Jiraiya said and Tsunade shook her head, it's okay, pervy sage. We all have to die sometime, right? The clone asked and coughed up blood, damn it, Tsunade. Get your ass over here. Jiraiya yelled, he's losing too much blood. He won't make it much longer. Shizun said trying her best and Jiraiya had enough so he dragged Tsunade over to Naruto's body, look at this. I can't believe you're willing to let your godson die. You're a disgrace to the medical corps. Jiraiya said and stormed out of the room, Lady Tsunade, please help him. I thought you didn't want to lose any more family members. Shizun said, I can't. Tsunade said, and then the clone stopped breathing, so Shizun moved away from the body with blood on her hands, I hope you're happy. Shizun said and placed a blanket over the clone's body, and Naruto. Tsunade said and hoped it was a lie, but got no response, it's over, Lady Tsunade. I'll go tell Master Jiraiya what happened. Shizun said and left the room, Naruto, please wake up. Tsunade said, she didn't get an answer, so she hesitantly went over to the body, pulled the blanket back and checked for a pulse. It was faint, but still there, so she slowly got to work and had to catch herself from stopping. The pulse grew stronger after a while, and now the hard part came. She had to remove the kunai and be prepared for the blood to shoot out. She got herself together and once the kunai was out, she was sprayed with blood, but didn't let that stop her. It took some time and a few close calls, but she finally healed him. That's when Tsunade heard the door open revealing Shizun, Jiraiya and Naruto. 
Tsunade was confused as Naruto was just dying until she saved his life. Naruto. But how? You were just dying. Tsunade said. It was a blood clone, Lady Tsunade. Naruto wanted to help you get over your hemophobia, so he and I came up with this plan. Seems like it works since you're covered in blood and you aren't freaking out. Shizun said and then Tsunade realized she was actually covered in blood. Was Jiraiya in on it as well? Tsunade asked. I just found out right before we came into the room. Jiraiya said. By the look of it, Lady Tsunade, you aren't scared of blood anymore. You're covered in it and you aren't panicking. Shizun said and then Tsunade realized that Shizun was telling the truth. Wait, so Kabuto didn't attack you? Tsunade asked. Nope. Him and Orochimaru are most likely hiding until you give them your answer. Now, it's time to train. Naruto said. Oh yeah. You still have to master them. Jiraiya said. I've got a few clones working on that. This training is for Granny Tsunade. Naruto said and Tsunade's eye twitched. Will it kill him to stop calling me that? Tsunade thought. Train her for what? Shizun asked. The fight. It's clear that she's rusty, and since she's family I don't want anything happening to her. We can have a fight between the two of us. Naruto said. Uh. You do realize she's one of the legendary, right? Jiraiya asked. One of the legends who hasn't trained since before I was born. I should be able to get her back in shape. I mean of course she's stronger than me, but I should be able to handle it due to my stamina and her current lack of training. Naruto said. Alright, Naruto. If you want to fight, then I accept. First, get out so I can get this blood off of me. Tsunade said. Yeah, Naruto. You're too young to see this. Jiraiya said and started to giggle perversely. Oh, but it's okay for you to have a picture of her with her boobs basically popping out of her shirt all the time. What are you gonna do with the picture, Kirby Sage? Gonna rub one out later with it? Naruto asked. What picture? Tsunade said and glared at Jiraiya who was sweating bullets. This one. Naruto said and took the picture from Jiraiya as he tried to get rid of it. Oh my. Shizun said as she looked at it. See, your nipples are basically showing. This is what he showed me to track you down since I didn't know what you looked like. Naruto said. Shizun, take Naruto to the forest to prepare. Me and Jiraiya need to have a talk. Tsunade said sweetly and started to crack her knuckles. Yes ma'am. Shizun said and quickly left with Naruto. So, you were peeping on me again, huh? You remember what happened last time, don't you? Tsunade asked sweetly, and Jiraiya quickly nodded. Please, have mercy. Jiraiya said. I'm all out of mercy. Tsunade yelled, and Jiraiya could be heard screaming for miles. Flashback end. The result of Naruto training with Tsunade was him of course losing, but it was fun. Shizun decided to join in and use her medical knowledge to fight Tsunade, since Kabuto was there as well. Jiraiya watched on, covered in lumps and bruises, since Tsunade only gave him the bare minimum treatment to recover. Tsunade had to admit that Naruto was pretty good for his age, and couldn't believe that he only got like this after a month of training. However, Tsunade surprised Jiraiya and Naruto when she used the famous wood style to restrain Naruto, after he accidentally started to use the Nine Tails chakra during the fight and started going on a rampage. When Jiraiya asked about it, she simply told him that she's always been able to do it since she was a kid and that was another reason she was around Hashirama so much. She was trained a bit to use wood style by Hashirama himself once he found out that she had it, but she kept it a secret. After the fight was over, Tsunade was feeling like her old self again since she was taking on Shizun, who could probably take on an Anbu member since she didn't slack off in her training over the years, and then Naruto, who was bordering on low level right now. Add in the fact that they fought for over 10 hours non-stop, and you could see Tsunade reverting back to her old self. Her water, lightning and earth chakra natures were a good test for Naruto's water, wind and fire chakra natures. Naruto accidentally disrupted her during the fight, and Tsunade was pissed. That's when things got difficult since she looked to be going for the kill shot. Naruto didn't understand and neither did Jiraiya since she looked the same except with bags under eyes and one gray hair. Shizun was also confused since Tsunade told her she looked like a wrinkly old prune underneath her, but she clearly didn't. After the spar was finished, they went back to the hotel and when everyone was healed, they started to discuss the plan. So, pervy sage. Naruto said and Jiraiya interrupted him, stop calling me that. Jiraiya said and Naruto just ignored him, after we deal with Kabuto and Orochimaru, what do we do after that? Naruto asked, we head back to the leaf village. Jiraiya said, oh come on. Can't we stay here for a few more days? Naruto asked. Nope. We need to get back to the village so Tsunade can take over as. Jiraiya said. Fine. Spoil sport. Naruto said and pouted which made Shizun giggle. Aw oh, come on, pervy sage. Can't we stay a bit longer? Tsunade asked and Jiraiya's eyes started to twitch. No. Jiraiya said. Fine. I heard the next town was opening a brand new hot spring for women only. I guess we'll be missing that as well. Tsunade said and smirked as Jiraiya froze in place. Now for the final piece. Naruto thought and looked at Tsunade who nodded. I heard they have a contest for one lucky guy to also share the hot springs with them. 
It's only for one day. Can you imagine the women there? All naked and wet. It's too bad we're headed straight to Kanoha after this. Looks like that book of yours won't have any good scenes in it. Naruto said and Jiraiya looked at them with blood coming from his nose. Well, I suppose we could stop for a day or two. There's no harm in that. I'm going to the bar. Jiraiya said and quickly left. He's gonna be so disappointed. Tsunade said. Why? I thought he was a pervert and would love this. Shizune said. It is a new hot spring for women only, but it's for elderly women with saggy skin and boobs that touch their knees. Naruto said and Shizune finally got it. Oh. I see. Then why do you want to stop at the next town? Shizune asked. Because Granny Tsunade is going to pay off her debts with the money she won at the gambling machines. Naruto said and Tsunade sighed. Would you not call me that, please? Tsunade asked. Call you what, Granny Tsunade? Naruto asked and she sighed again. Never mind. Listen, I'll start off attacking Kabuto, and once we get to an open space, the three of you are to appear. Both of you will take on Kabuto, and I'll handle Orochimaru. Jiraiya probably won't be in any shape to fight tomorrow, or he will barely be healthy enough, so after you're done with Kabuto, help me out. I'm still a bit rusty. Tsunade said, good. I want to get Orochimaru back for what he did to me in the exams. Naruto said, that's easier said than done. Shizune said, I know. Naruto said, let's call it a day. Tsunade said, next day, well, what's your answer? Orochimaru asked, hurry up. Lord Orochimaru doesn't have all day. Kabuto said, I'm not healing your arms. I'd rather kill you. Tsunade said and Orochimaru chuckled, Kabuto, take care of this for me. Orochimaru said, before Kabuto could move, they had to jump out of the way as Tsunade came crashing down on them with her leg high up in the air and then destroyed the ground where they were standing. Come on, Orochimaru. Tsunade said, it's amazing that after all these years of knowing each other, we've never actually met in combat. Orochimaru said, that's right. Tsunade said running at them, don't get your hopes up. You still have to go through me. Kabuto said, it'll be a pleasure killing you both right now. Tsunade said and destroyed the wall they were standing on, forcing them to jump away. She hasn't lost any of her strength. I won't go well for you if she ever connects. Orochimaru said, I can see that. It's too cramped here. I can't fight in this kind of area. Kabuto said, a change of scenery? Orochimaru asked, yes. I think a change would be wise. Don't forget she still has her assistant, and then Lord Jiraiya is here as well. No doubt he heard the commotion and is already on his way. Kabuto said and then they hopped away. Perfect. Tsunade thought and gave chase. Open field, why are you running? I thought you wanted to fight. Tsunade said, but Jiraiya around, a change of scenery was best for us. It's time to end this now. Orochimaru said as Kabuto jumped away from one of Tsunade's punches. Ijutsu was never my forte, but I can handle her. It's clear that she hasn't been training for this entire time. Kabuto said, but then had one of Tsunade's fists buried in his gut, and he felt like every bone in his body was broken. What's that about not training? Tsunade asked. Seems you've had us fooled. Orochimaru said. It's not hard. Tsunade said and Kabuto healed himself before trying to attack her with his chakra scalpels, but Tsunade easily avoided him. Damn it. She's toying with me and it looks like she's not even trying right now. Were the reports wrong about her not training? No. They couldn't have been. We've had our best men on it and they never give information unless they're 100% sure. Time for plan B every shinobi has a weakness and I just happen to know hers. Kabuto thought. Let's see how you fare against this. Kabuto said and cut his hand, then threw his blood onto Tsunade. Nice try. Tsunade said and kicked him away. Something isn't right here. It's a well-known fact that she's afraid of blood. Orochimaru thought, as he watched Kabuto stand up and eat a plasma pill. Kabuto, I will assist you. It seems the reports on her were wrong. Orochimaru said, if you insist. Even without your arm she's no match for us. Kabuto said and then a puff of smoke happened. Well, it sure took you all long enough. Tsunade said, lame pervy sage. We had to go look for him and we found him drunk at a bar. He's barely able to fight properly. Naruto said, I'm fine, Naruto. Jiraiya said, Lady Tsunade, are you alright? There's blood on you. Shizune said, it's not my blood. You two can take on Kabuto. Me and Jiraiya can handle Orochimaru. Tsunade said, isn't this interesting? All three of the legends are together again. Who would have thought a day like this would happen? Orochimaru said, the nine tails will be a problem. I can't kill him because then they'll come after me and I'd rather not deal with that organization again. However, he interests me. I'll have to figure out a way to get that boy on my side. Orochimaru thought, well, I guess I can handle Kabuto. Naruto said, I wouldn't underestimate me if I were you, Naruto. I'm as strong as Kakashi. Kabuto said, yeah yeah. Congratulations. Are we gonna fight or not? Naruto asked, Naruto, follow my lead. I'm the strongest between the two of us and I have experience. Plus, I can tell he specializes in medical ninjutsu, so I should be able to counteract him. 
Shizun said. Didn't you tell me that medical ninjas are supposed to hang in the back during a fight? Maybe I should take the lead on this one. Naruto said. No. Shizun is right. She should lead because he can use chakra scalpels to fight, and so can't she. They'll cancel each other out. Tsunade said. Fine. Lead the way. Naruto said. Naruto and Shizun vs. Kabuto. Kabuto immediately summoned a snake to assist Orochimaru in his fight and then activated his chakra scalpels. Shizun activated her own chakra scalpels and attacked Kabuto. It was clear from the start that Shizun was better at close quarters combat, but Kabuto was no slouch. He managed to cut the tendons in her right leg, but she also cut the muscle tissue in his arms. Shizun ducked when Kabuto swiped at her head and kicked him in the gut with her good leg, and before Kabuto could cut another tendon in her leg, Naruto used a great breakthrough and sent Kabuto flying backwards into a boulder. Thanks for the save. I just need a few minutes to recover. Shizun said. I can handle him from here. I've seen how he fights. Naruto said. You shouldn't take him lightly. Shizun said. I won't. Naruto said. Naruto Yuzumaki. I hope you don't think you can beat me. Kabuto said arrogantly. Anyone can lose on any given day. Naruto said, if you can't defeat Sasuke then you're not even close to being able to defeat me. I'll admit that Shizun has a chance, but you on the other hand have no chance at all. Kabuto said, trying to use Sasuke as bait to make me angry won't work. I'm looking past Sasuke now. My new goal is to surpass my sensei and then the fourth. Let me know when Sasuke defeats a tailed beast and then we'll be getting somewhere. Until then, shut the hell up and fight me. Oh wait. Do you need Orochimaru's permission to fight me? Seems you can't do anything without him telling you to do it. Naruto said. You should watch what you say. Kabuto said. How does it feel working for somebody so weak? I guess we know who the weakest is. He lost to an old man while he had Hashirama and Tabarama send you on his side. If that's who you take your orders from then I guess you're just as weak as he is. Naruto said. Shut up. Kabuto said. Too easy. Naruto thought. Kabuto charged in at Naruto full of rage for disrespecting Orochimaru and never noticed the smirk on Naruto's face. Kabuto started swinging wildly with his chakra scalpels activated, and each time he swung, it would go right through Naruto. However, every time Naruto attacked it managed to connect, and that just enraged Kabuto even more. What he didn't know was that Naruto was using the shunshin at incredible speeds, creating after images of himself, but they were all able to attack him. I've had enough. Kabuto yelled. He was about to attack, but then Shizun used her poison mist on him, but Kabuto held his breath as the poison surrounded him so he wouldn't breath it in. Naruto tapped his arm as a signal to Shizun to use her poison needles. She shot her poison needles towards the poison mist, and Naruto used his gale palm to speed them up a bit. They heard Kabuto groan as the needles managed to hit him and smirked. What do your poison needles do? Naruto asked. They leave him near death, but since he's a medical ninja, he'll most likely slow the poison down to try and keep fighting. If he was smart he would leave and try to find a cure, but since you've managed to enrage him, I don't think he'll do that. Shizun said, and the smoke cleared revealing Kabuto with three needles in his arm, damn it. I fell for a simple trick, and now I'm poisoned. Kabuto thought, summoning, everyone looked over and saw Tsunade summon a giant slug. Orochimaru was about to ask for help, but Jiraiya came at him with some tojutsu, and Orochimaru was able to dodge some of them, but not all of the attacks. He jumped back onto his snake summons, and Jiraiya also went through hand signs, summoning, what's up? Gamakichi asked, what the? Why are you here? Where the hell is your father? Jiraiya asked. Long time no see, huh? Gamakichi asked. Of course. Leave it to the world's greatest pervert to have performance issues during a big moment. Naruto said and Shizun giggled. Well, Jiraiya. Still playing the fool I see. You always were ridiculous, but this time you've outdone yourself. Arachimaru said. Summoning, what is it now? Gamabunta asked as Naruto summoned him. Hervey Sage is having performance issues and summoned Gamakichi. Naruto said. Leave it to the pervert to have performance issues during a big moment. Gamabunta said and even Tsunade laughed at him, there's no respect. Jiraiya thought, I know it isn't the boss's summons, but can you take out that giant snake for us? Pervy Sage decided to get drunk last night, and now he can't properly use his chakra. Naruto said, it depends. Will there be more barrels of sake as payment for wasting my time on such weak summons? Gamabunta asked, you'll have to wait until we get back to the village, but yeah I can get you some. Naruto said, I knew I'd like you kid. Gamakichi, head back home. Gamabunta said, sure things pop. Gamakichi said and left, Kabuto. Summon Manda. Now. Arachimaru said, I'm on it. Kabuto said and Arachimaru noticed he could barely stand. What happened to him? Arachimaru thought, Rasengan. Everyone looked at Naruto who appeared in front of Kabuto and shoved him into his gut, making him yell out in pain as he grinded into his stomach. Before Kabuto was launched away, he activated his chakra scalpel and cut Naruto's heart muscles. Kabuto was out cold and nearly dead as was Naruto. 
Tsunade quickly rushed to his side and started to heal him before he could die. Orochimaru took this time to grab Kabuto and quickly left. Come on, Naruto. Stay with me. Tsunade said as she was healing him and then a hand grabbed her necklace. I win, Granny Tsunade. Naruto said with a weak smile and passed out. Naruto. Tsunade said. Don't worry, Lady Tsunade. He's fine. Shizune said. Let's get him back to the hotel. Tsunade said. What about Orochimaru and Kabuto? Shizune asked. They're gone already. Jiraiya said. Konoha three days later. So, Granny Tsunade. What are you going to do now? Naruto asked as they were walking through the village under a hen so she wouldn't be recognized. Well, I have to meet with the village elders before I'm officially announced as and then I'm headed over to the hospital. Tsunade said. Why are you going there? Naruto asked. That Rock Lee kid you told me about is still in the hospital and I want to see if I can properly heal him while saving his ninja career. Plus Kakashi and your teammate Sasuke are in the hospital as well. Tsunade said. Oh yeah. I forgot about them. Why am I escorting you around the village? I thought they would have an assistant or with them. Naruto said. I can't spend some time with my godson. I've missed a lot over the past 13 years and I want to catch up. Now, Jiraiya tells me you're good friends with the daughter of the fourth. Do you like her? Tsunade asked. No. Tamari and I are just friends. She needs a submissive boyfriend and I'm an Uzumaki, so being submissive isn't exactly in my blood. Naruto said. Did you forget that I'm part Uzumaki as well? I know all about how being submissive is the last thing we do. Tsunade said. I forgot about that. I guess the Senju last name throws me off. Naruto said. It's alright. Nowadays most people forget that I'm an Uzumaki. Tsunade said. So we're kind of related. Naruto said. I guess you could say that. Tsunade said as they reached the tower. Did the Uzumaki have any kind of abilities other than the Hishigen? Naruto asked. Yes. Members of the Uzumaki clan naturally possess incredibly strong life forces. My grandmother, Mito Uzumaki was born before Konoha was founded, and yet, she lived long into the third Hokage's reign. Usually women stop having the ability to reproduce once they reach a certain age, but Uzumaki women can give birth well after that of normal women. Another trait of the Uzumaki clan was the ability to use their chakra to heal themselves or others. However, using that ability is dangerous if it's used regularly. Tsunade said. Well, I can't use that ability since I have the Nine Tails chakra flowing inside of me. Naruto said and Tsunade nodded. That's right. Also, some Uzumaki have the ability to use what they call the adamantine chains. The chains were mostly common amongst the women of the clan for some reason. The Uzumaki clan also had a unique sensor ability as well as the ability to suppress their chakra signature, so they're undetectable. Tsunade said. Is that how I'm able to sneak around so much? Naruto asked. Most likely. You have so much chakra that you stand out amongst everyone, but from what you've told me so far, if you're able to sneak around undetected then you must have that ability as well. Another thing is that Uzumaki members are well known for, which you clearly are good at from what I've seen you do. The distinct trait among the Uzumaki clan was their red hair. Do you however get your hair from your father? Tsunade said. Why don't you have black or red hair? Hashirama had black hair, and since Mito was in Uzumaki she had to have red hair. Naruto said. That is something I still haven't figured out myself. I was raised by my grandmother and grandfather. My parents died when I was very young so I never met them. I do know my father was half Uzumaki and half Senju. I don't know about my mother. She must have had some strong dominant genes if I have blonde hair. Tsunade said. Maybe my father had strong genes as well since I'm blonde. Naruto said. He did. I'll tell you this, your father was one of the most powerful ninja to ever live. Some people would compare his strength to that of my grandfather, and my grandfather was known as the god of shinobi. Your father never reached his prime before he died, so he was on his way to becoming the strongest ninja ever. Tsunade said. Wow. Do you think I'll be able to surpass him? Naruto asked. Who? Tsunade asked. My dad and the first. Naruto said and Tsunade smiled. Of course. Tsunade said. What happened to the Uzumaki clan? Why aren't there more of us around? Naruto asked. They were simply destroyed. Iwai and Kiri joined forces to wipe them out. The Uzumaki clan's skill with Kenjutsu earned them both respect and fear throughout the ninja world. Our clan may have been wiped out, but they took out half of the opposing enemy's forces as well. There was a rumor that some of the survivors were scattered around the world, but I couldn't find them when I left the village. Unless the survivors did exist and had children, were the last two Uzumaki clan members alive? Naruto said. Wow. I'm guessing Kumo and Iwa will always have problems with Konoha then. Naruto said. Yeah. Iwa hates us due to the fourth Hokage's efforts during the third ninja war, and Kumo was involved in two incidents that involved us. One of them involved your mother and the other involved the Hayuga incident. Tsunade said. What happened to my mother? Naruto asked. I'll tell you that story at a different time. Tsunade said. I'll hold you to it. Um. 
This is kind of personal and I won't get mad if you don't answer, but did you ever have any kids? Naruto asked and Tsunade had a sad smile on her face. No, but I wish I did. Tsunade said. Why not? Naruto asked. My boyfriend Dan died during the Second Shinobi War and I never had another relationship. I've had the occasional hookup before I left with one person, but I could never date him. Tsunade said. So, you and Pervy Sage, huh? Naruto asked and Tsunade froze. W what? Tsunade asked. He talks in his sleep. He kept mumbling about some blonde lady who broke his heart and it made him leave for over 20 years. I just put two and two together. Naruto said. Keep that to yourself. Tsunade said. Okay. Why not have kids with Pervy Sage? I mean it's obvious he loves you and you must have had some type of feelings for him if you would hook up with him more than once. You said it yourself that you wish you had kids, so why not with him? Naruto asked and they came up to a room where the elders were waiting. Not gonna happen. Now, let's go. The elders are waiting for me. Tsunade said. Uh, why should I go there? I thought this was a private meeting. Naruto said. You already know what's going on and you're my escort. Shizun should already be there and I'm technically Hokage, so I can bring whoever I want. Tsunade said and opened the door then dropped their hinge. Lady Tsunade, I'm glad you can join us. However, young Naruto must leave. Elder Hamura said. He stays. He knows what is going on and was my escort for the day while well, I had Shizun working with patients at the hospital. Tsunade said. Very well. Elder Hamura said. Are you sure it is wise to have him here? No offense, but he's only a genius. Elder Kaharu said. I'm sure. Tsunade said. This is unacceptable. The boy must be removed. A man with a bandage over one of his eyes said and then looked at Naruto. He stays, Danzo. He'll be on his best behavior. Isn't that right, Naruto? Tsunade asked, and then Naruto activated his. Would you please deactivate your Hamura asked. No. Somebody is trying to control me and this keeps it from happening. I know who it is, but I'd rather not put the person on blast. So, stop before I kill you. Naruto said and the stopped. What kind of eyes are those? To be able to detect and block out is simply unheard of and impossible. Danzo thought. Very well. We shall allow it. Kaharu said, as she already had felt it being used. Before we start, how many people are supposed to be in this room? Naruto asked. Only the six of us? Hamura said and Naruto threw four kunai into each corner of the room, revealing four dead blank masked shinobi who quickly went up in fire. It seems somebody doesn't know what a private meeting is. Tsunade said and glanced at Danzo who was visibly angered. Damn it. This is stronger than I thought. I must leave before he makes it known that it's me. Danzo thought and stood up. Where are you going, Danzo? We still have a meeting to get started. Kaharu said. I must seek out my personal doctor. My missing eye is bothering me. Danzo said and left the room. Now, may we get started? Tsunade asked. Yes. Listen carefully, Tsunade. We must send word to the feudal lord that the fifth has officially arrived in the village. All the preparations must begin at once for the coronation ceremony. Kaharu said. Can't we just skip the ceremonies? They're such a bore. Tsunade said. Tsunade. Kaharu said. Okay. Okay. It comes with a job, I guess. One of the perks of being. Tsunade said. I'll send two to immediately send word that in a few days from now, we will officially welcome the fifth. Kaharu said. I understand. Tsunade said. Your grandfather would be proud of you. Hamaru said. You've met the first Naruto asked. Yes. We were students of the first and second along with Hiruzen and Danzo. Kaharu said. Then you must have known Mito Yuzumaki. Was she really as great as Granny Tsunade described her to be? Naruto asked. You told him of his heritage? Hamura asked. No. Jiraiya told him of his mother and her name. I only told him bits and pieces about his father, but nothing to give away who he is. I figured since he knows he's in Yuzumaki that I should give him a bit of a history lesson. Tsunade said. Why not just tell him of his father? You can overrule Hiruzen's law about his parents now that he's dead. Kaharu said. What law? Naruto asked. He placed a secret law backed by the civilian council that would prohibit anybody from adopting you and telling you of your lineage. Hamura said. Yes. Quite a bit of people wanted to adopt you and they had nothing but good intentions. I believe Makoto Ichiha, who was one of your mother's friends, wanted to adopt you. The Hyuga clan wanted to take you in as well, since Hiashi Hyuga was good friends with your father. A few civilian families wanted to take you in as well since they were also close to your parents. Kaharu said, yes. I believe a few Kanoichi wanted to adopt you as well. Anko, but due to her history with Orochimaru, she was rejected, and that was when you were about eight. Kurana Yuhi also wanted to adopt you along with Yugao, Tuchi Akraku and Tsu Minyazuka, who is the leader of the Inuzuka clan. However, the civilians minus the Ichirikas were mysteriously found dead in their homes a few years after they were rejected from adopting you. The same happened with some of the Kinoichi who wanted to adopt you. They were poisoned, but we couldn't trace it back to anything. Hamura said. Anko wanted to adopt me. 
she doesn't seem like the parent type. Naruto said, despite Anko being tough on the outside, she does have a big heart. She saw how you were being treated and she remembered how the village treated her once she was betrayed by Orochimaru and came back to the village. She didn't want you to grow up the same way she did, but Hiruzen rejected her and claimed that you were just fine. He even went as far as to place a squad of people to follow her and make sure she didn't come in contact with you. Hamura said, wait a minute. Why would he do that? Shizune asked, because Hiruzen wanted him as a weapon similar to Danzo. Hiruzen knew about the beatings and you living on the streets for two years, but he would sometimes order those mobs to attack you and then play the grandfatherly role to manipulate you to turn you into a weapon. Apparently you were smarter than he thought and you didn't fall for any of his tricks. Kaharu said, I always knew there was a reason I didn't trust him anymore. Naruto said, was he being controlled by it? Tsunade asked, no. This was held in a private meeting between us right after Naruto was made into A. We of course were against it, but he was the and his decision was final. I was well known for being able to detect during my time as a shinobi and Hiruzen was not under any kind of influence. Kaharu said, do not worry though. Anko took care of the mobs after they attacked you. She, along with Yugao, killed them once Anko was released from supervision. It was her way of helping you while you were out on the streets. Hamura said, then why does she act like she doesn't know me? Naruto asked, because Hiruzen had a memory blocking seal placed on her and we couldn't find Jiraiya to remove it for us. Kaharu said, I'll remove it then. I've come across that seal during my training with Pervy Sage. Naruto said, I'm sorry. With who? Hamura asked, it's Jiraiya. That's what he calls him. Tsunade said, it's funny. Your mother called him the same thing. Kaharu said, I guess great minds think alike. Naruto said, if you say so. Tsunade said, now, I believe you have some patients in the hospital that require your assistance. Is there anything you need before we leave, Lady Tsunade? Kaharu asked, no. Tsunade said, I do. When can I get my vest? Naruto asked, I'm glad you said something. The feudal lord personally promoted you. While you were away he asked for details surrounding the exams and was very impressed with your involvement. Hamura said, yes. Naruto said, now, it is with great honor that we promote Naruto Uzumaki to the rank of. Kaharu said and gave him a vest, congratulations, Naruto. Shizune said, it just means I'm one step closer to becoming. Naruto said, you're still a long way from that. Tsunade said, then you better keep that seat warm for me. Naruto said and took off his hoodie, then put on his vest, we will send word immediately to the feudal lord. Kaharu said and left with Hamura, well, looks like we're heading to the hospital. Naruto, you don't have to escort us. Tsunade said, all right. Naruto and banished, Ango shop, Enko. Seriously? Will you stop? Your date with Aruka will be just fine. Kurinai said, yeah. That's easy for you to say. You've been with Asuma for over a year now. Anko said, she's right. You'll be fine. Yugao said, hello, ladies. Naruto said as he appeared, hi Naruto. Yugao said, Naruto, I see you're now. Kurinai said, yup. Feudal Lord promoted me himself. I just got back from finding the fifth with Pervy Sage. Naruto said, who's this fifth? Kurinai asked, my godmother. Naruto said, hey. Iruka wouldn't have told you anything that he likes or dislikes, has he? Anko asked, no. That's not why I'm here. Naruto said, then why are you here? Yugao asked, I wanted to thank the three of you for trying to adopt me when I was younger. Naruto said, you're welcome. How'd you find out? Kurinai asked, Amaru and Kaharu told me. Naruto said, weren't they the ones who prohibited us from adopting you? Yugao asked, no. It was the third. He wanted me as a weapon and prevented you and a few clans from adopting me. He even put a seal on Anko to make her forget about her trying to adopt me. Naruto said, sorry, but I only met you during the exams, kid. Anko said, because you have a seal on you. If I'm right it should be a small seal behind one of your ears. Naruto said, tech behind my ear. If he's lying then I'll castrate him with a rusty kunai. Anko said, glaring at Naruto and Yugao checked behind her ears, yeah. You do have a seal. It's behind your left ear. Yugao said, then get rid of it. Anko said, I'm not good with seals. Yugao said, me either. Kurinai said, great. Only seal master we have is that pervert. Anko said, I can get rid of it. I know. Naruto said, be all right. Anko said, I'm a level 7 sealing expert. I was already a level 5 sealing expert before Pervy Sage trained me, and now I'm at level 7. Naruto said, why should I believe you? Anko asked, it's either I get rid of it or Pervy Sage does it and he'll most likely have you get naked for it. It's your choice. Naruto said, I do it if I were you, Anko. I've known Naruto since he was a kid and I can tell when he's lying. Yuga said, what? I do not lie. Naruto said and looked away, then why aren't you looking at me? Yuga asked, because I don't want to. Naruto said, how long will it take you to remove this seal? Anko asked, not even five seconds. 
Naruto said and went through three hand signs before tapping her behind the ear on the seal, it stings a bit. Anko said, it's because I had to override it with my chakra. It's gone now. Naruto said, yeah. I remember now. I saw you one day get cornered by a mob and they were about to start beating you until I showed up and took you away before they even got their weapons out. I argued with the third for hours on multiple occasions about adopting you and he came up with some bullshit excuse that it would make the family too powerful, since you're a bad and he thought my seal would activate if I was in constant communication with you. After that I don't have any memory of you until the exams. Anko said, I was told it was because I was too high up in the rankings to adopt you, but when I asked for another child, he magically had the paperwork ready. Mind you I was until I was recently promoted a few months before I took a genin team. Kurin I said, he forced me to stay in Anbu so I wouldn't be able to adopt you. Yuga said, you three aren't the only people who tried to adopt me. Naruto said, who else tried to adopt you? Kurin I asked, Uchi Ichiraku, Hiyashi Hayuga, Tsu Minyazuka, Makoto Uchiha, some Kanoichi and a few civilian families that my parents were friends with and knew about me. He had the civilians and other Kanoichi killed a few weeks after they were all rejected from adopting me. They were poisoned. Naruto said, then why not poison the rest of us? Kurin I asked, you're the mistress, so you probably have good sense or ability and would have trapped whoever was sent to poison you and Aanko is basically immune to poisons because her past with Orochimaru and Yuga was in the Su Minyazuka would have smelled the poison, Hiyashi Hayuga from what I know doesn't take any food or drink that wasn't prepared by the Hayuga servants, and Makoto Ichiha must have been high in the Ichiha clan in order for him to not get rid of her. Naruto said, Makoto was the clan head's wife and she's Sasuke's mother. Yuga said, then it's a good thing I wasn't adopted by her. Naruto said and they laughed, so, what are you going to do now? Kurinai asked, take a few days off. After that, I'll start to train and take on some missions. Naruto said, speaking of training, I want to test my on you. Master Jiraiya said you can't be placed under while you are active and I want to try it out. Kurinai said, it's true. Well my is active I can't be placed under A. You can help me though. I'm only able to break out of the C rank. Anything higher and I can't do it. Naruto said, sure. Just find me when I'm not with my team. Kurinai said, ever thought about learning Yugao asked, yeah, but every time I go look for a sword, none of them seem right for me. Even the custom-made swords don't feel right in my hands. I just decided to stick with kunai. Naruto said, do you know who your mom is? Yugao asked, yeah. Kishina Yuzumaki. Why? Naruto asked, because after the Nine Tails attack, I found her sword and kept it so I could give it to you one day. Maybe I can teach you some moves. Yugao said, I'm more of a torturing type of person, so if you need any tips just stop by the T&I building or find me in the forest of death. Anko said, okay. I'll see you all later. Naruto said and walked away. It's honestly surprising how much he looks like Lord Fourth, and he hasn't figured it out yet. Anko said, give him some time. He'll figure it out. Kurinai said, do you think he'd want us to adopt him now? Yugao asked, I doubt it. He said his godmother was more than likely she's the one taking care of him now. Anko said, that's just the thing. Who is his godmother? Kurinai asked, I guess we'll find out in a few days. Yugao said and the Anko saw a piece of paper on the table, what the hell? That sneaky little shit. Anko said as she read the paper, what? Kurinai asked, read this. Anko said and gave her the paper. Anko, as I removed the seal behind your ear, I looked at the other one on your neck. Give me a few months and I should be able to remove it. Naruto, when did he even look at the curse mark? Kurinai asked, I have no idea. I'll see him in a few months so if he's lying I'll just castrate him. Anko said, Naruto. Naruto was walking through the village towards the monument to look at the village like he normally does. It's been a hectic two months for him and he needed time to process everything. He found a sensei that will actually teach him something and he just happened to be his godfather. He discovered he had a rare disease, he won the exams, stopped a tailed beast, made a new friend in Tamari, found out the Akatsuki were after him, found his godmother, and most importantly, he found out who his mother was. Finding out about his clan was also something he'd be grateful for. If it wasn't for Tsunade then he'd probably never know any of this. He was thinking so much that he failed to see the crowd of ninja and civilians surrounding him until he had to dodge a kick. The hell. Naruto said. Demons come. A random said. I don't know why he's still alive. Another said. Let's do what we used to do when he was a kid. A civilian said. This time we'll make sure he dies. A said. You know, I think it's time for me to start fighting back. Years of torture and abuse, for what? Something I had no control over. People fear what they do not understand and it makes them act out. If you remove the nine tails from me and I survive, what does that make me? Am I still the nine tails or am I a human? What makes my life so invaluable compared to yours? Naruto asked, you're a demon. That's what? A civilian said, a demon, am I? 
the third is dead. Do you know what that means? Naruto asked. You tell us, demon scum. I said. It means that I can fight back without any repercussions. It means I will no longer take the abuse I've suffered at the hands of you assholes. How would you like to meet the Nine Tails personally? Naruto asked and lifted his shirt revealing his seal. This is the seal containing the Nine Tails. I wonder what would happen if I were to break the seal. Actually I do know what would happen. I'll release the Nine Tails, and I have a pretty high chance of surviving the extraction process. Naruto said and everyone grew scared. And no. You can't. The fourth didn't want the Nine Tails to destroy the village. I said. Then why would you all attack me growing up, knowing I contained the Nine Tails? Naruto asked. We wanted to finish what the fourth started. His wishes will be met. I said. Wrong. His wishes were for me to be seen as a hero for keeping this village safe from the wrath of the Nine Tails. You all spat on the wishes of the fourth, you all are tarnishing his name, and he's rolling over in his grave because of all of you. I'm giving you all a warning. Do not attack me again or I'll retaliate and send you to the hospital. Naruto said. You don't scare us. We kill you and we kill the nine tails. I said and the crowd cheered. Fine. If you want to fight, then bring it. Naruto said and before anyone could move, two people appeared in front of Naruto. Oh, Naruto. You weren't going to have all the fun without me, were you? Anko asked and pulled out some kunai. I swear some of you shouldn't be a ninja if you can't tell the difference between a container Mia tea contains. Kurinai said. So, who wants to attack first? Anko asked and the Tsunade appeared. Everybody stop. Tsunade yelled. I it's Lady Tsunade. I said. Now that she's here, we can kill the demon. I said and Tsunade just smiled before she punched him away. Anbu? Tsunade said and 20 appeared. Yes Lady Tsunade. A wolf mask asked. Take all of these civilians and ninja to the tea and I building. I want Anko and Ibiki to teach them a lesson. Oh and every ninja in this crowd are hereby stripped of their shinobi license. Get them out of my sight. Tsunade said and the took the crowd away. Well, looks like I'm going to have some fun. Anko said and vanished. Lady Tsunade, why are you here? Kurinai asked. Naruto didn't tell you? Tsunade asked. Tell me what? Kurinai asked. Never mind. If he didn't tell you then you'll have to wait. Naruto, come with me. Tsunade said. Okay. Bye again, Kurinai. Naruto said and they vanished. Naruto and Tsunade Hokage Tower. Were you really about to release the Nine Tails? Tsunade asked. No. I just wanted to scare them. Naruto said. Uh huh. Anyway, listen. Since you're now, once I'm I'm going to have to send you out on harder missions. Also, whenever I have to leave the village, you will be part of my escort. It will be me, you, Shizun and two of my choosing. Do you understand? Tsunade asked. Yes, but why me? Naruto asked. You want to be right? Tsunade asked. Yes. Naruto said. Then think of this as early training for the position. You're still years away from becoming, but a head start won't hurt anybody. Tsunade said. I can live with that. Naruto said. Good. Now, Jiraiya had to leave the village to get updates from his spy network, but he left you some ninjutsu to work on. He also said to work on your tojutsu and skills without your Hishigen activated. Tsunade said as tossed him a scroll. Do you know when he'll be back? Naruto asked. Maybe a few months. You can never know with him. Tsunade said. I guess you're right. Do you know if Asuma is in the village? Naruto asked. Yeah. He's either with his team now or just lounging around the village, why? Tsunade asked. I need some tips on my wind manipulation. Naruto said. He's the best wind user in the village, so it's good to know that you're seeking him out. Have you started working on your ice? Tsunade asked. No. I still can't combine my wind and water chakra natures yet. My wind control is still lacking, and that's why I need to find Asuma. Naruto said. When you're ready, come see me. I know about combining chakra natures for A, so I can help you out. Tsunade said. I'm getting hungry. Want to grab some ramen with me? Naruto asked. Sure. Along the way you can tell me about the genin in the village. Tsunade said. They left the tower and headed towards Ichirikus while just talking. Naruto asked her questions about her life, and in return he told her more about his. Needless to say, Tsunade was not happy with how the village treated her godson throughout his life and almost went on a rampage. She was disappointed when Naruto told her about the current genin. The most disappointing was Sakura and Ino since they were basically fangirls. Civilians and ninja in the street were shocked that Tsunade was back in the village, but that all changed when they saw her walking with Naruto. Some glared at him, and one was even bold enough to throw a brick at Naruto which was easily avoided. Tsunade saw who did it and punched him so hard that he flew through at least five buildings before he finally hit the ground. They all got the hint, she was not going to be anything like the third to let them do what they wanted to him, and that she was going to put her foot down. First things first, Tsunade wanted to do a thorough evaluation of the hospital and the ninja academy first. From what Naruto told her and Shizun reported back to her, both were horrible and needed a serious overhaul. Another thing is she was going to look over the civilian council files. 
If they were doing anything to hurt the village her grandfather built, then they are in for a rude awakening. All in all, Kanoha was about to change for the better, and it would be a Senju would restore the village to its former glory. Chapter 4. Sasuke Escapes. It's been a few weeks since Tsunade returned to the village. Needless to say, things were actually doing better since she was in charge. Members of the council who knew she would not be on their side tried to convince the fire daimyo that she was not fit for the position. They used her debt as a reason why, but they were quickly shot down when they found out that she paid off all of her debt and didn't owe anybody anything. They brought up her alcohol problem and complained about her drinking on the job, but they countered when Tsune told the feudal lord Hiruzen was always smoking on the job and she knew for a fact that it wasn't cigarettes or tobacco he was smoking. All in all, the fire daimyo approved of Tsune becoming and she was crowned that very next day. She went through files thanks to Naruto telling her about the corruption and nearly destroyed the village when she found out how much the civilian council owed in taxes. Every civilian council member except for Mibuki Hirano were all forced to pay the money they owed and were kicked off of the council, along with two years in jail. Tsunade also had Naruto show her the weak points in the village and needless to say she was surprised that the village hasn't been invaded yet. She gave Naruto an air rank mission that he could do whenever, and all he had to do was prank places with holes in the security until it's basically impossible for him to get through. Tsunade also discovered how terrible the ninja academy was and fired every teacher except for Aruka who was the best teacher they had. She replaced all of the teachers with retired shinobi who wanted the job, and the spots were quickly filled. The new ninja academy was now a more practical academy that focused on test simulations and a more hands-on approach rather than the majority of the years being theoretical. The hospital was another big thing on her list. It was horrible to be blunt. Every doctor had to demonstrate what they had to do with Shizun being the one to make sure they were doing it right. She also got new medical supplies since the ones they had were outdated. The medicine was also being taken from the hospital, so Tsunade had to watch the medicine room and report back to her at the end of each shift about who went in there and what they needed. Before the person could enter, they had to sign on a sheet of paper what they needed, how much they needed and what the patient needed it for. Tsunade promised Naruto that she would fix the red light district since that was the only place he was really treated normally, but she told him that it would take time since she has other things to deal with. When asked what she had in mind, Tsunade told him that she would have to hire people to build new orphanages, a ninja school and a hospital in the red light district. Needless to say that Naruto was ecstatic. The landlord of his apartment building that hated him changed the locks on his apartment while he was out on a mission and missed rent, but it was illegal if a ninja was out on a mission to kick them out for late rent. Naruto decided to be petty and get back at the landlord for years of abuse he suffered. Naruto went straight to Tsunade and asked to buy his apartment complex since only he and the landlord lived there. The building was surprisingly cheap and well within Naruto's budget. Once the purchase was complete, Naruto went to the landlord and kicked him out of the apartment. The reasons listed were years of abuse, letting people steal his stuff, constantly changing his locks, failure to keep the building up to code, and smoking in a non-smoking building. Once the landlord refused, Naruto politely signaled for Anbu to remove him from the property. Naruto spent the last few weeks having shadow clones fix the apartment and he even expanded his apartment, adding an extra room, a bigger bathroom and better appliances. After the building was finished, he gave rooms to homeless people in the red light district and even the women at the brothel houses. He didn't have them pair and since they looked out for him as much as possible when he was living on the streets and he wouldn't budge. All they had to worry about was their food and everything else. Naruto bought the homeless people their food, but they told him they'd pay him back as soon as they got back on their feet, but Naruto waved them off. Missions were a big problem for Tsunade, mainly the D-rank missions. She changed the rules up and the civilians were not happy. Only the elderly and disabled were allowed to ask for a mission such as dog walking, fence painting, building a fence, grocery shopping, help with their gardening and mail delivery. If you were not elderly or disabled, you had to pay triple the amounts for the D-rank mission. Speaking of missions, Naruto was given a lot of back pay once Shizune discovered he was getting paid significantly less than Sasuke and Sakura when he did D-rank missions during his time on Team 7. The fire daimyo was impressed that Tsunade managed to get all of that done in a few weeks and even asked if she would like his position which she declined with zero hesitation. The Leaf Village was on the rise and other villages sent spies to find out what was going on, but they were easily captured and sent back in a stasis scroll with a note saying not to do it again. Tsunade was also wary of Danzo since he hadn't been seen since the meeting she had with the elders, but she was prepared for anything. Naruto over the past few weeks trained a lot and even went on missions with others and sometimes. Of course none of them liked him due to his status, but after he had to constantly save them on a mission, some of them changed their views about him. The only missions he was sent on were bandit camp eliminations and a parcel delivery to another village. 
He finally caught up with Asuma one time when they were assigned the same mission, and Asuma gave him some tips on strengthening his wind chakra nature. Naruto was able to split a leaf easily, but Asuma told him to use his wind chakra to cut a rock in half and then try to cut a waterfall. The result of this was Naruto being able to cut a rock in half, but he was making slow progress on the waterfall part. He met with Yugao and Kurenai a few times when they were free, and he honestly had fun. Kurenai did help him with his and even tested her skills against him, with his Hishigen activated, and was honestly surprised none of her worked on him. She really thought it was a joke since the Sharingan is able to fall under, but it could easily counter it. She mistakenly told him that she tried to put Itachi Ichiha under it, and he just gave a blank look. He wanted to laugh at her, but then realized she could put him in an S-ranked, so he chose to laugh at her once he got home. Yugao also trained him a bit when she could and even gave him his mother's sword. It was a 24-inch katana with an all-red blade and a black and red hilt with a Yuzumaki symbol on it. He struggled a bit with the sword, but Yugao told him that he just needed to get used to it first. She didn't teach him any since she wanted him to get used to the sword first. The results of the exams were also given out and Shikamaru was the only person to get promoted to. Right now he was walking through the hospital to see Sasuke. He didn't want to, but he kind of felt bad about him being in the hospital. Hey Sakura. Naruto said as he saw her about to enter Sasuke's room. Naruto. Where have you been? Sakura asked. I've been out on missions. Naruto said. How's that possible? You weren't with us on our last mission. We honestly would have used the extra help. If you were there, Sasuke wouldn't be in the hospital. Sakura said. I thought he was in here from when he ran into his brother. Naruto said. No. He was released from that incident. He was hurt after we ran into a rogue ninja on our last mission. Sasuke won the fight after he kicked the guy off of the cliff, but he was badly injured. Sakura said, I see. Naruto said and they entered the room. Hey Sasuke. Look, I brought you some apples. You do like them, right? I wonder where I put that knife I had before. Sakura said and started to look around for the knife. Naruto helped her find the knife, and this caused them to start bickering between one another. As all of this was going on, Sasuke was too busy thinking about all the strength Naruto had acquired in a short amount of time. The seven heavenly breaths, multiple chakra natures and to go along with them, the in summoning. He also remembered how Naruto easily defeated Gara twice in the same day, but he was barely able to scratch him. He even thought back to when Itachi told him he's not interested in him when they fought and how he was after Naruto instead. He was brought out of his thoughts when Sakura offered him an apple slice that she peeled for him and he slapped it out of her hand. Naruto noticed Sasuke glaring at him and knew what it was about, but he decided to play dumb. What are you glaring at me for? She's the one who offered you the apple. Naruto said. I want you to fight me. Fight me right now. Sasuke said. We're in a hospital and you just got patched up. A fight with me should be the last thing you want. Naruto said. Shut up and fight me. Sasuke said and activated his Sharingan. Oh? The Sharingan. Trying to intimidate me, are you? Sorry, but I'd rather not beat up a cripple. Maybe when you're healed up we can fight and I'll humble you. Naruto sighed and Sasuke got in his face. You said you wanted to fight me, right? Well, now you've got your chance. Sasuke said. That was before. I'm looking past you now. I want to fight your brother. He's much stronger than me and you combined. You don't even pique my interest. Naruto said. And that pissed Sasuke off. I will be the one to fight Itachi, do you understand me fight me? Sasuke said. No. Naruto said and turned to leave, but Sasuke threw the knife at Naruto's head and it was easily caught. If you're in such a rush to get your ass kicked, then fine. Where are we gonna do this? Naruto asked. Follow me. Sasuke said. Rooftop. Last chance, Sasuke. You can still go back inside to avoid suffering humiliation. Naruto said. An idiot like you has no business acting all high and mighty. Sasuke said. High and mighty? I think you've got me confused with yourself. You're the one who was handed everything you wanted ever since your family was killed. I'm as humble as you can get. I went from sleeping on the streets and in the forest for two years to becoming a. You are the most high and mighty person in this village and you act like that just because you're from the Ichiha clan. Naruto said. This village wouldn't be around if it weren't for the Ichiha clan. We're the most powerful clan ever. A clanless loser like you wouldn't know anything about that. Sasuke said. The most powerful clan ever and yet they were wiped out in a single night by one person. Clanless. I'll tell you something about my clan. They were wiped out before I was born, and it took Kumo, Iwai and Kiri to wipe us out, and yet their forces were reduced to less than half. Naruto said. Let's just do this. Sasuke said. Put on your headband and we will. I'll wait. Naruto said. Not to worry. I don't need that thing. There's no reason to put it on because you won't even be able to scratch my forehead. Sasuke said. Yet you have your Sharingan activated. If you were so sure that this would be as easy as you say, then you wouldn't have your Sharingan activated. Naruto said. You honestly think we're equals? Sasuke asked. No. 
you're beneath me and it's eating you up inside knowing that the loser and dead last has surpassed you quite easily. Naruto said, enough talk. Sasuke said. Sasuke ran at Naruto and threw a punch at Naruto, but it was easily blocked. Naruto threw a faint right hook at Sasuke which he knew his Sharingan would follow, and once Sasuke went to block the punch, Naruto kicked his legs from underneath him and kicked Sasuke into the fence that was on the roof. Sasuke quickly recovered and went for a spinning back kick, but Naruto caught it and swung him around. Sasuke planted his hands on the ground and twisted his body, then kicked Naruto into the air. Once Naruto landed, Sasuke came running at him with a barrage of punches and kicks that were all avoided. Naruto decided to use an old trick he hasn't used since he started training with Ureya and created a sea of shadow clones. Sasuke managed to take out a few of the shadow clones until he was overwhelmed and they started to punch and kick him all over the roof. Sasuke jumped in the air and after a few hand signs, he used a fireball and burned everything on the roof to get rid of the sea of shadow clones. He saw Naruto standing there unharmed and he created the Chidori in his hand as he was falling out of the air. Naruto just stood there and waited for him to get closer before he created them in his hand. Sakura came running at them begging them to stop and once they nearly collided, Kakashi came in and threw both of them away with ease. The sound of metal being pierced was heard and the sound of metal exploding followed by water was heard as well. What are you two doing up here? That was a bit too far for a simple sparring match. Kakashi said, Naruto mastering the already? How can he use the Kakashi thought? Sasuke tore his hand out of the water container and water came pouring out at a rapid pace while Naruto only had a small little stream like a water fountain which made him smirk. What were you thinking? Were you going to kill Naruto, Sasuke? What are you doing, giving yourself over to a sense of superiority? The size of the Chidori there wasn't one to be aimed at a comrade of the same village as you. Why such infantile behavior? Kakashi asked and it was Naruto who decided to respond, it's because I was once the dead last and now he's beneath me. That and his brother kicked his ass after he foolishly left the village without permission. Naruto Sai and Sasuke yelled trying to attack Naruto, but Naruto just kicked him off of the roof. That was uncalled for, Naruto. Kakashi said, he's yours. You should have focused on fixing his attitude instead of personally training him every day. Naruto said, we'll talk about this later. We have a team meeting tomorrow anyway about your attendance. Kakashi said, that's because I'm not on team 7 anymore. I was promoted after I came back from my mission with Pervy Sage. Naruto said and walked away. I'm assuming it was you who taught him the... Don't you think he's a little too young to be handling that after all, he could have killed Sasuke had something gone wrong. I know you want to protect him from the Akatsuki, but to think you would teach him that. Kakashi said, you want to talk. Teaching an unstable gen in the Chidori knowing he's a flight risk and is shrouded in darkness. A bit hypocritical don't you think? There's obviously bad blood between them, but where did it come from? Jiraiya asked, their relationship is like the one between you and Orochimaru in the past. Kakashi said, no. This is different. With me and Orochimaru it was always a one-sided rivalry. This one seems to be more about Sasuke being jealous that Naruto is able to close the gap between them with the slightest training and then surpass him when he's trained seriously. Naruto was seeking validation of his strength from everyone including Sasuke, but now that he's surpassed him, Sasuke can't stand the fact that the roles are reversed. Naruto is looking past him now and he's aiming to surpass you and eventually me. They both have something driving them on. Naruto wants to become and Sasuke's drive is his hatred for Itachi. Jiraiya said, right. I leave Naruto to you and I'll deal with Sasuke myself. Kakashi said, Naruto. Naruto was walking through the village streets thinking about the fight. He really didn't want to fight Sasuke and it was proven since he didn't even put half the power into that. The old him would have bragged about knowing an awesome thing that Sasuke didn't know, but he's different now. As he was walking, he noticed Jiraiya leaning up against a wooden fence waiting for him and he just sighed. Did Kakashi send you to yell at me? Naruto asked. No, but we need to talk. This isn't a move you use against a comrade in the village. Jiraiya said, I know. Honestly I didn't want to use it against him. I don't know if you were there or not, but I didn't make it until the very last second and it wasn't even at half its strength. Naruto said, then why did you agree to fight him in the first place? Jiraiya asked, I wasn't going to fight him. I told him to heal up first and then walked away, but he threw a knife at the back of my head and that's what made me fight him. He got what he wanted and got his ass kicked in the process. Naruto said, now that you've beaten him, what's next? Jiraiya asked, honestly, it's like I told him. I'm aiming for bigger people to defeat. I mean the Akatsuki is after me and Orochimaru is still around. They're the ones I need to beat and not worry about some schoolyard rivalry. Naruto said, then that means you'll have to start training extra hard. Since you've got control over your wind and water chakra nature now, you should start working on your eyes. Jiraiya said, I still haven't cut the waterfall yet and I can't get to the waterfall without Granny Tsunade being around since the only waterfall in the village is on the training grounds. 
Naruto said. Then you should have her take you there. Now that I think about it, since she can use the you know what, maybe you should ask her to help you with your. Jiraiya said. She already said she'd help me with it, but I've been out on missions a lot so I haven't had time to try it out. Naruto said. I see. Well, I'll be out of the village for a few days, so use this time to train and rest up. I might bring you along on a mission with me when I get back, so you need to be prepared. Jiraiya said. You got it, pervy sage. Naruto said and banished. Stop calling me that. Jiraiya yelled. Early morning Hokage office. Now that Shikamaru is here, what did you need to see us for? Naruto asked. Sasuke Chiha apparently slipped out of the village last night. I'm quite certain he's headed for the village in the sound. Tsunade said. He left. How is that possible? Shikamaru asked. It's not really shocking. I mean look at him. He craves power by any means, and if he likes the power from the curse Mark Orochimaru gave him, why not go to him? He's been a flight risk since his clan died. Naruto said. Well, I have a mission for the two of you. This will be Shikamaru's first mission as A, but I'll put him in charge. Naruto I know you've been on quite a few missions as A, but you already have more experience leading a team, and I want to test him out. Your mission is to find Sasuke Chiha and bring him back to the village before he crosses the border. Assemble the best team you can and head out immediately. This is an A-rank mission. I would usually send a squad of, but we still lack village security, and most are out on a mission. Dismissed. Tsunade said. Outside, who will our teammates be? Shikamaru asked. You're the captain. You decide. Naruto said. We need a tracker so Kiba and Akamaru are in. We'll need power, so I can grab Choji. You pretty much have all the other areas covered, but I have a feeling you'll be the one fighting Sasuke, and we don't know how many or how powerful his traveling companions are. Shikamaru said. So you figured it out as well. Naruto said. Yeah. From what I can remember from the exams, the sound village was new, and that means nobody knows where it's located. The only way he could get there is if he has somebody helping him get there. Shikamaru said. Good. I'm gonna go get two more people to help on this mission, and I'll meet you at the gate in five minutes. Naruto said and banished. Hayuga compound. Again. Hiyashi Hayuga said as he was watching Hinata and Niji spar. Lord Hiyashi, Naruto Yuzumaki is here to see you. He says it is an emergency. A Hayuga servant said. Niji, Hinata. That is enough for today. Hiyashi said. Yes, sir. They said and bowed as Naruto entered the dojo. What brings you here, Naruto? I was unaware of any meetings today. Hiyashi said. Sorry for showing up interrupted, but I need Niji and Hinata for an important mission. Naruto said. What rank is the mission? Niji asked. A ranked. Naruto said. What happened? Hiyashi asked. Sasuke escapes the village and is heading towards Orochimaru. We're a few hours behind, but with two Byakugan users on our team, we should be able to handle this mission and whatever it throws at us. The team is me, Shikamaru, Choji, Kiba and Akamaru, Hinata and Niji. Naruto said. Very well. Hiyashi said and nodded to them. When do we leave? Niji asked. Now. Naruto said and vanished. Main gates. Everybody understands the mission, right? Shikamaru asked. Find Sasu can take out anyone who tries to stop us. Kiba said. That's right. Now, let's move out. Naruto said. Uh, Naruto I'm supposed to be the leader, remember? Shikamaru asked. What's up with you acting like the boss, Naruto? Taking orders from somebody as lazy and unmotivated as Shikamaru doesn't sit well with me either, but still. Kiba said. None of you get to decide who's the leader. Shikamaru is the only one of us who is A. That means the elders of the village clearly believe he's got what it takes to be the leader. Choji said. I was promoted by the feudal lord himself, and I've already been on missions as a leader. Now, we need to hurry up and move. Naruto said. We need a plan just in case they try to ambush us. Niji said. That's why I brought you and Hinata along. Your Byakugan along with hers and Kiba and Akamaru's nose tracking ability should give us time to prepare for an ambush. Naruto said. This is the formation. Kiba will be in the front since he's tracking Sasuke scent. Choji and I will be on the left and right sides. Naruto, you'll bring up the rear while Niji and Hinata are in the middle with their Byakugan active keeping an eye out for any kind of ambush. Move out. Shikamaru said and they were about to leave when Sakura came running up to them. Wait. Naruto, please bring Sasuke back home. I tried to stop him last night, but it wasn't enough. Sakura said. That is the mission so I already have to do that. Naruto said. Let's go. Shikamaru said as they left. Few hours later, as the retrieval team were on their way to grab Sasuke, they were unaware that the group Sasuke was with had to stop to prepare him for something, so they were surprised when they caught up to them quicker than they thought. Eventually they had to split off and fight the enemy as there were four of them. Choji broke off to fight a guy named Jirobu, who seemed to be the powerhouse of the group. Hiba and Akamaru stopped to fight Seiken. Niji and Hinata broke off to fight somebody named Kitamaru, who was basically a human spider fighting at long range, giving him the advantage. 
Now, Naruto and Shikamaru were standing face to face with the final member holding the barrel containing Sasuke. So, your friends introduced themselves. What's your name? Naruto asked. Why the fuck should I tell you? The girl asked. It's common courtesy. I'd like to know the name of the opponent I'm going to defeat. Naruto said. Please. You don't stand a fucking chance against me, but I'll fucking humor your ass. The name is Teaya. Teaya said. Teaya is a fair-skinned girl with a slender build. She has brown eyes that are accentuated by her eyelashes extending into the corners of her eyes. Teaya's most distinctive feature in Naruto's opinion was her long, untamed red hair that fell past her shoulders with long parted bangs, framing either side of her face and one between her eyes. Nice to meet you, I guess. Now, I'd hate to hit such a pretty girl like yourself, so would you kindly hand over that giant barrel and let us leave? Naruto asked. Eh fuck you. I'm not handing over shit. You Kanoha tree fuckers aren't getting a damn thing from me. Teaya said. I hope you have plan B Shikamaru said. I do. We fight her, but you'll have to handle her on your own. Naruto said. What? Why? Shikamaru asked. Because there's another person coming and he's a lot stronger than her. Naruto said and sure enough somebody else landed. What are you doing here, Kimimuro? Teaya asked. Kimimuro has pale skin, vivid green eyes, angular facial features, two scarlet dots on his forehead and shoulder-length white hair, which he wore divided down the middle on his head, with two separate partings on either side of his face. You were taking too long, Teaya. What happened to the other three? Kamimro asked. Would you come here? Your body shouldn't be able to function right now. Teaya said. I'm not moving with the flesh anymore. It's mental power. Kamimro said. Now you're cheating death. Teaya said. I understand a little now that feeling of being information that has escaped from the prison of the flesh. The feeling of experiencing a taste of Lord Orochimaru's dream. This vessel is an important piece of his dream. It has the flesh that Lord Orochimaru truly desires, but you guys were a bit too late. Kamimro said. Great. Another freak to deal with. I can tell he's not an ordinary opponent. Shikamaru thought. I really don't have time for this. Naruto said. He leapt at Kamimro aiming a punch at his face, but Teaya appeared in front of him and tried to punch him in the face. Naruto caught her fist quite easily which shocked her, and then he kneed her in the stomach, cracking a few ribs before throwing her into a nearby tree, making a loud noise when she fell through a couple of branches. Kamimro grabbed the barrel and landed next to Teaya as she stood up. The only reason I won't kill you right now is because you have a mission to complete, and my mission is to deliver that to Lord Orochimaru. Kamimro said. Didn't you say it was too late for that? Teaya asked. I told you that's the body Lord Orochimaru truly desires. Kamimro said. The next vessel, huh? Teaya asked. Exactly and this is the only thing I can do at the present time. I leave those two pieces of garbage to you. Kamimro said and left with the barrel. Damn it. People just love to make my missions harder than they need to be. Naruto said. Come on already, fuckers. Teaya said. Go ahead. I can handle her. Shikamaru said and Naruto nodded then vanished. He's fast. Teaya thought and looked around for him. Don't worry. It's just the two of us now. Shikamaru said. You seem pretty fucking confident that you can beat me. Don't need your boyfriend to fight your battles for you. After I'm done with you, I'll be going after him next. Teaya said. You won't stand a chance against him. He didn't even try when he blocked your punch and kicked you away. I could tell you put quite the amount of power in that punch. Shikamaru said. What's his name? Teaya asked. Naruto. Shikamaru said. He's right. Orochimaru told us about him and to be careful. He was able to knock Kabuto out once and then nearly killed him. Teaya thought. I'll be sure to leave his body next to yours. Teaya said and pulled out a flute. Naruto. I'm getting really tired of chasing after somebody I don't even like. Just leave the barrel and you can keep the rest of whatever health you have left. Naruto said as he landed in front of Kamimro, you foolishly came alone. How do you want me to kill you? Kamimro asked. I don't know. How about you fight me and see for yourself? Naruto asked. It's bad to underestimate your opponent. Kamimro said. I'm not underestimating you. I can already tell you're powerful. What does Orochimaru want Sasuke for anyway? Naruto asked. Lord Orochimaru has already obtained his immortality. However, a long period of time is necessary to get everything and obtain everything in the world. Just because he is immortal doesn't mean his flesh is being maintained forever. Before his body decays, a strong new flesh will be made into a vessel for his soul. Kamimro said. So, he basically wants Sasuke for his body, is what you're telling me. Naruto said. Yes. That's right. Kamimro said. The fact that I'm the only one who thinks something is wrong with this is weird. Naruto thought. I suppose it's time to get serious. Kamimro said and created a weapon made from bone. Bones? I see. You possess the dead bone pulse. Naruto said. Very observant. Kamimro said. I must be careful. Kabuto warned me about him and how he was able to beat him on two separate occasions. That and he was able to defeat a tailed beast at its full power. 
I can easily tell he has a lot more power and skill than his partner fighting Tai right now. In order to defeat him, I may have to use my curse mark. Kamimuro thought. Kamimuro rushed at Naruto with his bone weapon, and Naruto just dodged every swipe and stab move Kamimuro threw at him. Naruto pulled out some kunai and channeled fire chakra into one of them, while the other was coated in wind chakra. Naruto and Kamimuro started to trade blows at a rapid pace that would be too fast for anybody not used to high speeds. When they did, Naruto had a few cuts and bruises, while Kamimuro was covered in what appeared to be scorch marks. Kamimuro was surprised that Naruto was able to do damage to him. He was told Naruto was good, but he didn't think Naruto would do this much damage to him and not this early into the fight. Your body twitched. Naruto said. What was that? Kamimuro asked. You twitched. That means you're nervous. You have a good poker face, but growing up on the streets like I did causes you to learn how to read people's body movements. You're nervous because you weren't expecting me to be as good as I am. You aren't properly prepared for this fight. Given your clan's history, you fight until you can't fight anymore. I know how you fight now just from this first little scuffle. Naruto said. How exactly do I fight? Kamimuro asked. Why should I tell you? Naruto asked. If you don't then I'll kill you slowly and painfully. Kamimuro said. No, you won't. You don't have much time to live based on your breathing patterns. You're already winded and we haven't even begun fighting seriously. You're trying to finish this mission as quickly as possible to do one last good deed in the eyes of Orochimaru. Now that you've revealed yourself to have A, I can handle you however I please. Naruto said. The Mimuro rushed at Naruto with new speeds, but Naruto ducked and gave him a quick uppercut, followed by a few quick punches around his body. Kamimuro tried to move his left arm, but it wouldn't budge, so Naruto took advantage of this and hit him with a point-blank fireball. Kamimuro grunted in pain as he wasn't quick enough to fully block the attack with our bones. When the smoke cleared, Kamimuro was standing there with his curse mark activated. Kamimuro had marks spread across his entire body in contorting and parallel lines. So, that's your curse mark. Naruto said. Prepare to die. Kamimuro said. Before anybody could move, the barrel containing Sasuke started to smoke before it eventually exploded and caused a cloud of smoke to surround the area. Once the smoke cleared, Sasuke was standing there with longer hair and his skin was gray. Soon after Naruto saw him, Sasuke's hair shrank back down to normal and his skin started to clear up. Naruto figured it was something to do with the curse mark and Kamimuro retracted his own curse mark. Are you going to make this more difficult by running away? Naruto asked, and then Sasuke started to laugh like a maniac before he jumped away. Of course you are. Naruto said. It seems my mission will be over faster than I thought. Kamimuro said, as he appeared next to Naruto and then he was kicked away. Who are you? Kamimuro asked. Ano has rejuvenated handsome devil Rock Lee. Lee said. What about your body, bushy brow? Naruto asked. Do not worry about me, Naruto. Go get Sasuke. Lee said. You sure? Naruto asked. Please leave this to me. I can take care of things here. Rock Lee said, this one's strong as well. Good. Kamimuro thought, alright. This guy uses his bones to attack. When you're done, go back to the village and get checked out. Naruto said and banished. Naruto, as he was running through the forest and hopping through the trees, Naruto felt Sasuke get closer to a specific area in the land of fire and found it ironic that he'd have to fight him there. He wasn't far behind Sasuke, but he decided to take his time and recover a bit from his fight with Kamimuro. They didn't fight much, but they both got some good hits in on each other. He finally caught up to Sasuke after another 10 minutes of running through the forest, and they stopped at the valley of end. Yo. Naruto said. Well, look who decided to show up. The hopeless little loser. Sasuke said. The same hopeless little loser that kicked your ass when you challenged him. Drop the attitude and get your ass back to the leaf. Today was supposed to be the start of my two-week vacation. Naruto said. I'm done playing ninja with you children in the leaf village. Sasuke said. Children. Do you realize we're all the same age? Naruto asked. Compared to me and my power you're all children. I'm going to Orochimaru now and I'm not coming back to that joke of a village. Sasuke said. It's like you're intentionally forgetting the rooftop fight. Naruto said. That was a fluke. I'm glad you came here actually. Now we can settle things once and for all between us. It's time to put you in your place. Sasuke said. Sasuke created Ishidori right from the start and ran at Naruto with his full speed. Naruto stood there patiently waiting for him, and then at the moment he created a then slammed it into Sasuke's Shidori. Both of them were sent flying backwards, but Naruto landed quite easily and stood on the water, while Sasuke barely managed to correct himself in the air. Sasuke let a smirk cross his face, and then his curse mark activated and mark spread across his body. You know what they say, Naruto. Top class shinobi should be able to read each other's heart simply by an exchange of fists. Even without saying anything. You've always been naive. Don't let this newfound strength stir you from reality that I'll always be better than you. Sasuke said and went through hand signs. Higher style. 
Phoenix Flower. Sasuke spit multiple small fireballs at Naruto who didn't even look worried since he could easily counter them. He decided to humor Sasuke and jumped into the air since he knew that's what Sasuke wanted. Naruto smirked when Sasuke appeared in front of him and threw a punch, but it was caught by Naruto. Sasuke didn't have time to recover because he was kicked in the back of the head by a shadow clone of Naruto that he didn't even notice was made. Naruto used a water dragon on Sasuke and he was sent crashing into the wall of the valley. Naruto threw kunai at Sasuke coated in wind chakra and they each stuck through his clothes, pinning him to the wall. Naruto appeared in front of Sasuke and just started raining down punches on him with no remorse. The punches were so fast that it forced Sasuke Sharingan to mature and gain three tomo in each eye. Naruto activated his Hishigen just in case Sasuke tried to use it on him. The punches kept coming and Sasuke was nearly out of it until his curse mark activated again. The amount of chakra released from the curse mark was enough to send Naruto flying back and help get Sasuke out of the wall. The smoke cleared and Sasuke was completely different from a few seconds ago. When Sasuke activated the second level of the curse seal, his skin turned dark gray and his hair grew then turned dark blue. His eyes also turned dark gray, but his Sharingan remained active. Additionally, he grew web claw-shaped wings from his back which he could use to fly and glide, and a dark star-shaped mark appeared across the bridge of his nose. That's new. Naruto said. Sasuke appeared in front of Naruto who managed to catch his punch with ease, and that confused Sasuke since he was more powerful than Naruto at this moment or so he thought. Naruto and Sasuke started to trade punches and kicks around the valley, and thanks to Sasuke's newly matured Sharingan, he was able to counter some of Naruto's moves and got some good attacks in. When Naruto and Sasuke separated, Naruto got into a stance that Sasuke was familiar with and braced himself for the onslaught that was about to come. Seven Heavenly Breaths. First activation. Second activation. Third activation. After Naruto activated his first three steps of the seven heavenly breaths, he vanished from Sasuke's eyesight, and he was barely able to duck out of the way from the kick aimed at his head. Naruto didn't give him time to recover as he hit him with a powerful great breakthrough that sent Sasuke crashing into the wall and made him cough up blood. It was enhanced because Naruto released his third activation, so the air he had in his lungs was used to boost the power of the Sasuke pulled himself from the wall and moved out of the way as Naruto came crashing down at him. Sasuke tried to use it on Naruto, but Naruto wasn't making eye contact with him, and it failed. Sasuke used the fireball on Naruto who countered it with a ripping torrent and created a giant steam cloud. Sasuke was at a disadvantage since he couldn't see and wasn't a sensor. His Sharingan couldn't track Naruto's chakra signature because the steam cloud was filled with chakra. Sasuke tried to fly out of the steam cloud, but his foot was grabbed and he was slammed down to the ground. He felt a fist hit him in the gut and then a heel to the gut which broke a couple of ribs. He tried his hardest to locate Naruto, but he was well hidden. Sasuke went to fly again, but when he landed on the ground, the wings in his back were severely damaged. Rising Moon Barrage. Naruto kicked Sasuke up into the air, but not high enough for him to leave the steam cloud. Naruto then used powerful kicks and punches on Sasuke to keep him dazed. The fury of strikes ended with a bone-crushing axe kick that knocked Sasuke back onto the ground. As Sasuke was laying on the ground dazed and in pain, Naruto jumped high into the air and prepared to finish off his attack. Naruto gathered wind chakra around his fist as he was falling toward Sasuke and hit him with a powerful whirlwind fist. The blow was powerful enough to create a giant crater and knock Sasuke out of his second stage of the curse mark as well as blow away the steam cloud. Naruto looked at Sasuke who was unconscious but still breathing and released the two remaining activations he had. He fell down on both knees and was breathing heavily. He still needed to work on his rising moon barrage since he only used it once and it wasn't while he was using the seven heavenly breaths technique. He finally stood up and when he went to grab Sasuke, somebody kicked him away into the wall. Sorry Naruto. Orochimaru needs Sasuke for something important. Kabuto said and grabbed Sasuke then vanished. Son of a bitch. Naruto said and pulled himself out of the wall. Naruto. A voice said and when he looked up it was Kakashi. Yeah? Naruto asked. What happened? Where is Sasuke at? Kakashi asked. He beat him and when I went to grab him, Kabuto showed up and kicked me into the wall before he grabbed Sasuke then left. Naruto said. We can track him. He couldn't have gotten that far. Kakashi said. Kabuto was able to avoid a squad sent to grab him during the exam finals and I heard he even escaped you at the hospital. He's long gone by now and we'd be heading into unknown territory. Let's just head back so I can give my report. Naruto said. Tsunade's office. So you failed, huh? Tsunade asked. Yeah. Naruto said. What happened? Tsunade asked. I fought Sasuke at the Valley of End, and when I was about to grab him to bring him back, Kabuto showed up. He kicked me into the wall, grabbed Sasuke and quickly left. Naruto said. Kakashi tells me you refuse to go after them, why? Tsunade asked. Kabuto is slippery. That and I would have been heading into unknown territory blind. 
It was best that I came back to the village and report it to you. Naruto said, all right. I'll give you your two weeks vacation you put in for. I haven't heard from Jiraiya yet, so you can just rest or train until your vacation is over. Tsunade said, thanks. How's everyone else doing? Naruto asked. Doji had a heart attack from the food pills he took during the fight he had, but he's stable now. Kiba had a stab wound, and Akamaru is being treated by the Inuzuka clan. Niji suffered a severe wound close to the heart and severe chakra exhaustion, but he's in recovery. Hinata suffered a dislocated shoulder, some torn ligaments and the same wound as Niji, but hers was through the stomach. She'll be fine though. Shikamaru has a broken finger, but he's more down about his teammates being injured on the mission. I gave him some time off to clear his head. Tsunade said, all right. Well, I'll be around the forest. Naruto said and left. Forest. Naruto was walking around the forest as he said he was going to do and came across the area Shikamaru was fighting at. The trees were destroyed and he knew Shikamaru didn't do this. He looked at the way the trees were cut and noticed it was wind chakra. The only person that could do something on this scale is Tamari, and he figured she must have come to help him. He walked around some more until he came across a familiar Riti trapped underneath some trees. He walked over to her and checked for a pulse. She was still alive so he decided to help her out. He created some shadow clones, and they channeled wind chakra into the trees to cut them. Halfway through the process, Teaya woke up and screamed. What the fuck are you doing? Teaya yelled. I'm saving your life. Naruto said and kept moving the trees. Why? Teaya asked. Well, you're alive and I couldn't just leave you here. Naruto said. Fucking idiot. How do you know I won't kill you once I'm free? Teaya asked. The moment you try to move you won't get very far. Naruto said. What the fuck does that mean? Teaya asked. Your legs are trapped underneath these trees. You can't feel it because the nerves are probably damaged. I'll take you to my village to get you healed. Naruto said. Fuck that shit. I'd rather fucking die. You'll just turn me in and have me tortured before killing me. Teaya said. No, I won't. I'm taking you to the... She's the best healer in the world. I'm pretty close to her so I can get you healed and possibly a new home in the village. Naruto said. I don't fucking believe you needle dick. Teaya said. First off my dick is way bigger than a needle thank you very much. Secondly, he is my godmother. I have some pull in the village although it's not much. Naruto said as he removed the final tree. Fucking hell. My legs look like fucking shit. Teaya said and Naruto picked her up. Come on. I'll get you some food as well. Naruto said. What's the catch? Teaya asked. No catch. All you have to do is tell us what you know about Orochimaru, the sound village, and in return, I can try to get you a new life in Konoha. Naruto said. What do you mean, new life? Teaya asked. Simple. You can either become a regular civilian or after a probationary period, you can become a ninja. Naruto said. This sounds too good to be true. You're hiding something. Teaya said. Only problem is the curse mark you have. Naruto said. The fucking course. This fucking thing is stuck with me forever. Teaya said. Not really. I should be able to get rid of it. Somebody in my village has one as well, and I've been working on removing it. Naruto said. Does this new life come with more than one meal a day, a hot shower and my own room? Teaya asked. Yeah. Do we have a deal? Naruto asked. Hell fucking yeah we do. Teaya said. Good. Naruto said. Why are you being so fucking nice to me? Teaya asked. Let's just say I have a thing for cute girls with red hair. Naruto said and Teaya had to hide her blush. Watch your hands, you fucking pervert. Teaya said. I'm not even touching you inappropriately. Naruto said. Bull fucking shit. I can feel your hands trying to touch my ass and grab my side boob. Teaya said and Naruto just sighed. We could have been back in the village by now, but you won't shut the fuck up with your complaining. Naruto said and put her down. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Teaya asked. I'm talking to an ungrateful fucking cripple. I'm trying to help your sorry ass and all you want to do is complain. Just shut the fuck up until we get there and then you can talk. I swear if you say one more word I will leave you here to be eaten by forest animals. I may be nice, but do not piss me off. Naruto said. His eyes turned red from the nine tails chakra flowing through his body. Teaya was honestly scared and shocked at the moment, since nobody has ever spoken to her like that, and she didn't know what that red chakra was. She nodded and Naruto put her on his back as he started hopping through the trees. Along the way he could hear Teaya whimpering in pain, and he decided to quickly go back to Tsunade's office by using a quick number of shunshin. Tsunade's office. Granny Tsunade, I need your help. Naruto said as he just walked into the office. I'm in the middle of a meeting. Tsunade said. This is important. Naruto said as he placed Ai on the couch. Who's the girl? Kaharu asked. Yes. I don't think I've seen her around the village before. Hamura said. This is Teaya, and she was part of the group that was sent to retrieve Sasuke for Orochimaru. Naruto said. So you brought us a prisoner? Kaharu asked. Not exactly. Naruto said and Tsunade felt a headache coming. Naruto, what did you do? 
Tsunade asked, I kind of told her that if she gives us information, you'd heal her legs and I'll remove the curse mark. Also I might have said you let her start a new life as a ninja or civilian for Konoha. Naruto said and Tsunade just punched him through the roof, holy shit. Look at how big your fucking tits are. How'd you fucking get them like that? Taya asked, quite the mouth she has on her. Homura said, yes. Shall we continue this meeting another time, Lady Tsunade? Kaharu asked, actually, the meeting was about Orochimaru. I think Naruto gave us something good. Tsunade said, when will fuckface come down from that? Taya asked, huh? He should have been down by now. Tsunade said, and then Naruto walked through the door with bags filled with ramen, where the fuck did you go? Taya asked, to find you some manners. Naruto said, fuck you. I fucking have manners. Taya said, whatever. So, did she talk yet? Naruto asked, we were about to start actually. Tsunade said and Naruto nodded as he gave Taya a bowl of ramen, so, Taya. What can you tell us about Orochimaru? Hamura asked, but he's a pedophile. Taya said and Naruto snickered, what makes you say that? Kaharu asked, he's always going after little boys for their bodies. I mean that's a giant red flag right fucking there. Taya said, what does he want their bodies for? Tsunade asked, his immortality. Taya said and slurped up some noodles, his immortality Tsunade asked, yeah. It's some kind of fucking where he switches bodies once every three years. It's not really an immortality since if he doesn't have a body after three years, then he'll fucking die. The shit is weird. Taya said, what can you tell us about the sound village? Tsunade asked, the sound village is not really a village, but a network of laboratories compassed of various hideouts and bases, scattered throughout the land of sound and various other countries. The fucker was so damn paranoid about being found that it's almost impossible to track him. We never stayed at the same base for long, so it made us constantly go on the move. Taya said, where are some bases? Tsunade asked, Gusa, the southern hideout which is somewhere off the coast of the land of waves, the northern and eastern hideouts which I've never been to, so I can't tell you where they are. Kabuto has his own little island to jerk off some other people he wants to experiment on, and then there's a hideout on the demon island of the land of sea. There could be more, but I don't fucking know where they are. What is this shit that I'm eating? It's fucking delicious. Taya said, do you know anything else about his experiments? Kaharu asked, you know I'm doing an awful lot of fucking talking, but my legs aren't getting fucking healed. I'm not saying shit else until my legs get fucking fixed. Taya said, what do you two think? Should I heal her legs now or just give her to Anko and Ibiki? Tsunade asked, she's given us quite the information and it's much more than we expected. Hamura said, yes. I believe she has earned the right to have her legs healed. Kaharu said and Tsunade nodded, now, tell us more. Tsunade said and started to mend the bones in Taya's legs, while removing the wood chunks, he has a ton of shit that he did. Stealing kids from the orphanage, kidnapping shinobi, killing them and he was talking one time about giving somebody an arm made completely from Hashirama Senju's DNA. I don't know who would want a dead person's DNA, but whoever it is must be one sick fucker. Taya said, does he have any bases in the land of fire? Tsunade asked, I thought he did, but Kabuto said it was destroyed by the third. Actually, that old fucker should have told you about a base of his. Taya said and Tsunade finished her legs. Well, he didn't. Now, your legs are healed, but you need to stay off of them for two weeks and soak in hot water for about 45 minutes every day to help with the pain you'll feel from the blood vessels opening back up. Tsunade said, so can I stay? Taya asked, yes. I'm guessing you want to become a shinobi, so I'll have to place you on a three-month probation, and when your caretaker is not here I'll have to watch over you. Tsunade said, caretaker? You've got to be fucking kidding me. Taya said, I'm not. Naruto will be the one taking care of you. Tsunade said, what? I'm not spending my two weeks vacation taking care of her. Naruto said, think of it as a paid vacation then. I'll stop by twice a week to check on you and make sure everything is done with. Tsunade said, what about this fucking curse mark? Taya asked, give me a few more days and I'll have the removal process ready. Naruto said, you better not be fucking lying to me or I'll cut your dick off and shove it up your ass. Taya said, you know, if you stop cursing so much I'm sure your mouth could be used for something better. Naruto said and walked out leaving a stunned Taya with a huge blush on her face, what the fuck did you just say to me? Get back here so I can fucking kill you. You limp needle dick blonde haired fucker. Taya yelled, it's like Ashina and Minato all over again. Kaharu said as she was listening to Taya rant, indeed. The only difference is I don't think Minato would have the guts to say something like that to Kashina. Hamura said, I give it a few weeks before they realize they like each other. Tsunade said, I don't know. Is it wise for them to fall in love? Their tempers can clash, and I know Naruto has mellowed out, but his temper is still there. Hamura said, they'll be fine. Taya. Tsunade said, what? Taya yelled, I'm taking you to Naruto's apartment. I have a key to get in and you can wait for him to get back. 
Sunade said. Where'd he go? Taya asked, either to train or find his sensei that's most likely hiding somewhere in the village. Tsunade said and Taya nodded. So, how'd you get your tits to look like that? Taya asked as Tsunade placed her in a wheelchair. Why? Are you trying to impress somebody? Tsunade asked and smirked when Taya blushed. No. Who the fuck would I have to impress? I just want my tits to look like that. Taya said. Uh-huh. I'll tell you the secret along the way to Naruto's apartment. Tsunade said. Naruto. Naruto was walking through the village looking for Jiraiya since he knew he was in the village somewhere. He felt Jiraiya's chakra in the village, but he couldn't pinpoint exactly where he was. He suddenly remembered who he's looking for and vanished. He arrived at the hot springs, and sure enough Jiraiya was up in a tree with a telescope and blood coming from his nose. Herbie Sage, don't you ever get tired of peeping on women, knowing they'll find you and beat you? Naruto asked. Nope. So, what brings you here? Jiraiya asked. I don't know if you've heard, but Sasuke left the village. Naruto said. Did you stop him? Jiraiya asked. Yeah, but then Kabuto showed and took Sasuke as soon as I was about to grab him. Naruto said. What are your thoughts on it? Jiraiya asked. Sasuke made his own decision. He's a rogue ninja, and depending on what he's listed as in the bingo book is how I'll treat him if we ever cross paths again. I'm not going to chase after him like some lost puppy. I've got bigger things to worry about like the Akatsuki. Naruto said. That's right. Now, in a few months I'm going to be taking you away from the village. Jiraiya said. For what? Naruto asked. The training trip. We'll be gone for two and a half years where I'll teach you everything I know. I'll train you to the point where you'd come back nearly as strong as me. Before we leave though, I'm going to train you in using the Nine Tails Chakra now. I won't make it your go-to, just something you have in your back pocket as a last resort. Jiraiya said. When do we start training? Naruto asked. I understand you're on vacation now and I don't have anything to do, so I'll train you over the next two weeks on the Nine Tails Chakra. What that means is I'll have you channel as much chakra you possibly can, and then we'll spar while you're using the Nine Tails Chakra. Jiraiya said. Alright. I'm heading home then. Naruto said. See ya. I've got to get back to my research. Jiraiya said and Naruto sighed. Of course. There's a pervert in the tree peeping on the women's bathhouse. Naruto yelled and vanished. Damn it kid. Jiraiya said. Naruto's apartment. Why are you in my apartment? Naruto asked. The big tit cage told me I'll be staying here. This place isn't half bad from the looks of the outside. I've got my own room, fresh food and hot water. Now, make me something to eat. Taya said. No. I need to take a shower first, and you also need to wash up. You smell like you haven't bathed in a while. Naruto said. I haven't. The baths in the sound village barely worked and everyone had to share. I'd rather sink than share a shower with a bunch of creeps trying to cop a feel on me. Taya said. If it was that bad, then would you stay? Naruto asked. I had nowhere to fucking go. He gave me shelter after he found me living on the streets. In a way I felt like I owed him my life. I did try to leave before, but he branded me with the curse mark, so I was stuck there. This is like a luxury to me, and I know I come off as a tough bitch, but that's all I know. It's how I had to grow up and protect myself in sound. I really do appreciate what you did for me, but I'm not sure how I'm supposed to fucking express it. Taya said and didn't know she was crying, so she froze when Naruto gave her a hug. You can stay here as long as you want. Sorry about insulting you earlier. I also grew up on the streets for two years, so I know how you feel. Naruto said and Taya nodded as she hugged him tighter. You tell anybody that I was emotional and I'll chop your dick off. Taya said and they broke the hug. It's our little secret. Naruto said and wiped her tears away. I should kick your fucking ass. You got me all emotional and shit. Taya said and then chuckled. Like I said. It's our little secret. Now, I let you use the bathroom first so I can get dinner started. I'll have Shizune come over tomorrow so she can get your measurements for clothes. Naruto said. He walked away and left Taya alone on the couch. She was grateful for Naruto saving her life and she owed him, but she didn't know how to repay him. She's a tough chick, but he's already managed to make her cry, and it wasn't on purpose. Then there's the food. She didn't eat much in the sound village, so far the food she's had was great. Maybe her living here would be better than she thought, and maybe meeting Naruto was the best thing for her. She had to admit, he wasn't bad looking, and she'd go as far as to say that he's the cutest boy she's ever seen. The way his eyes look and the way he smiles at her just makes her feel special. Oh, fuck. Taya said. She's starting to fall for Naruto Uzumaki, and she's falling for him hard. Chapter 5. Snow Country. It's been three months since Asuka escaped the village, and Taya was brought back by Naruto, and it's been challenging to say the least. Taya was a handful for everybody and even Naruto at times, but he eventually learned to ignore her. The first two weeks were the worst since she couldn't walk, and Naruto had to become her personal assistant. Of course there were people who didn't approve of her being in the village, but Naruto simply told them that they'd have to go through him and they backed off. 
Tsunade came around whenever she could to help Naruto with Teaya, and even teased Teaya a bit whenever she caught her looking at Naruto longer than she should have. Jiraiya found out about Teaya staying at Naruto's house and being the pervert that he was, he tried to get Naruto peek on her, and he declined the offer. Coincidentally, Teaya walked in on Naruto taking a shower two days later and passed out due to severe blood loss. Tsunade of course found out and teased Teaya even more. The highlight of Teaya staying in Kanoha so far was the day she got her curse mark removed. Of course Anko had hers removed first, but Teaya was the highlight of the day. They managed to remove it and were shocked that during the unsealing process, another Orochimaru started to form. Naruto quickly used his ability to disable the Orochimaru clone, and Jiraiya cut his head off. Once the curse mark was removed, Teaya went into shock and Tsunade had to stabilize her before she had a heart attack and died. When Teaya woke up two days later, she felt light and felt like a new person. When she asked what happened, Naruto explained to her everything that happened and how her body went into shock after the curse seal was removed. She felt exhausted still, and Naruto told her that the removal of the curse mark drained her of her chakra reserves, and they haven't fully recovered yet. The next thing Teaya did was look at her shoulder in a mirror and started to cry since the curse mark was gone. She gave Naruto a hug and kissed him on the cheek as she thanked him over and over again, but she stopped when she realized what she was doing and had a huge blush on her face. Once the others found out about Teaya living with Naruto their reactions were all different. Shikamaru was wary of her because she was an enemy. Kiba was automatically against her living there. Rock Lee, Ten Ten and Niji kept to themselves especially Niji since he decided to give her a second chance since he's turned over a new leaf since his defeat during the exams. Shino was his usual self. Inada was worried that she'd never get to be with Naruto and silently fumed over Teaya since she was very pretty and saw how Naruto smiled at Teaya when they would talk to each other. Sakura and Ino however were a completely different story. Sakura was openly against it and tried to break into Naruto's apartment while he was on a mission. Teaya was still weak from the curse seal removal so she couldn't do much, but Naruto thought ahead and placed security seals around the apartment to protect her. She didn't tell him, but she was really thankful for that. Sakura tried on multiple occasions to get into his apartment, but each time was met with failure. Ino tried to use her clans to manipulate Teaya and have her thrown out of Kanoha, but Teaya was a strong-willed person and Ino always failed. Teaya decided to report them to Tsunade since she was still on probation at the time and they were both suspended for six months. The only problem Teaya had was her feelings for Naruto that would grow every day. He cooked for her, cleaned for her and until he was able to get a bed for her, he let her have his room while he slept on the couch. He brought out the nice side of her that she had buried deep inside of her long ago and she would blush whenever he was too close to her. He even started to teach her how to cook since she didn't know how and she was grateful since he was back on mission two weeks after she arrived. Over the past three months Naruto trained with Jiraiya and Tsunade for different reasons. Jiraiya trained him for two weeks using the Nine Tails Chakra and Tsunade helped him with. Tsunade also assisted them in training with the Nine Tails Chakra since she was able to subdue him when he lost control. The training was brutal on Naruto who had to constantly draw on the Nine Tails Chakra. At first things were going good until Naruto drew on too much of the Nine Tails Chakra and grew three tails. He went on a rampage, but Tsunade and Jiraiya were able to easily handle him in order to subdue him. Jiraiya started to call that the Nine Tails cloak since Naruto would be covered in a cloak of Nine Tails chakra that would take the shape of a fox. After those two weeks were up, Tsunade began teaching him how to properly combine his water and wind chakra to control his ice. He knew some for him, but it wasn't much. He managed to learn the ice style. Crystal wall, ice style. Certain kill ice spears, ice style. Glacial dome and ice breaking fist. When Teaya was cleared to become a shinobi and cleared to start training again, Teaya was given the rank of special genin, since Tsunade couldn't just give her the rank right off the bat. That meant Teaya had to do the D rank missions, but that quickly stopped when people tried to attack her for being around Naruto, and she put them in a coma. After five incidents like that, Tsunade paired Teaya up with Naruto and started to send her out on C rank missions. Right now Naruto and Teaya were in the middle of one of their C rank missions. It was another bandit camp elimination that went around terrorizing small towns in the land of fire. These weren't regular bandits as Naruto could tell they had some kind of ninja training. Naruto easily defeated all of his opponents and now he was watching Teaya struggle with the last one. He knew her weakness was close combat but he didn't think it was this bad. He tried to get her to learn some tojutsu but she simply refused. She was open to learning some of course but Kurenai was always out on missions with her team and she was the best user in Kanoha. She finally defeated the last bandit and Naruto started clapping. Nice job. It only took you 15 minutes to defeat him. Naruto said, shut the fuck up. Let's deal with the others. Teaya said, you weren't paying attention. They're already defeated. Naruto said and pointed at the bodies. Are they dead? 
Taya asked. No. Most of them have bounties and I want to collect them. Naruto said. Then where can we collect the money? Taya said. We? Naruto asked. Don't pull that shit with me. I helped. Taya said. You took out one person and I handled the rest. I highly doubt that counts as helping. Naruto said. I'm still a genin. I need all the money I can get. Taya said. Here's the deal. I'll split the money with you, but you have to cook me some ramen when we get back home. Naruto said. You're going to get fat from eating too much of that shit. Taya said. Still doesn't stop you from eating it or watching me train. Naruto said. I do not. Taya said. I'm a censor, remember? Naruto asked and Taya blushed. Shut up. Let's just go. Taya said. Stupid blonde pretty boy. Taya thought. Yo, Naruto. Gamakichi said, as he appeared. Gamakichi. What are you doing here? Naruto asked. Hiraya said to come back to the village quickly. He says he has a mission. Gamakichi said. Alright. Naruto said and Gamakichi left. Back to the leaf village I guess. Taya said and sighed. What's with the sigh? I thought you'd be happy to go back home. Naruto said. Don't worry about it. Let's just go. Taya said. Hey, what's wrong? Naruto asked. Nothing. I'm just tired. Taya said. Alright. Naruto said. After Naruto finished sealing all of the bodies away into a stasis scroll, they immediately left back to the leaf village, with Taya moving faster than Naruto. Naruto didn't understand why she was acting weird all of a sudden, but he decided to leave her alone for now, since he didn't want to get yelled at. Taya was fuming inside. She was out of the village and spending time with Naruto with no one interrupting them, but as soon as Jiraiya mentions a mission, Naruto completely forgets what they had to do and decides to head back to Konoha. They traveled all the way back to Konoha in silence, and Naruto decided he would talk to Tsunade about Taya. Hokage office, mission complete, Granny Tsunade. Naruto said. Did everything go smoothly? Tsunade asked. Yup. Me and Taya easily handled them. Naruto said. That's good. Oh, and Jiraiya was looking for you. Tsunade said. I know. Gamakichi came and told me. Naruto said. Good. Taya, is everything alright? Tsunade asked. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm just tired. Taya said. Alright. You're both dismissed. Tsunade said and Taya left, but Naruto stayed behind. Granny Tsunade, can I ask you something? Naruto asked. Let me guess. It's about Taya. Tsunade said. How do you know? Naruto asked. I just know. Now, what is it? Tsunade asked. She's been distant and didn't talk to me on our way back. I don't know if I did something wrong or not. Naruto said. He still doesn't understand what's going on. Tsunade thought. Well what happened on the mission? Tsunade asked. The usual. We got there of course joking around, but still serious. Then we took out the bandits and since some of them had bounties on their heads, we were gonna cash in for the bounty, but Pervy Sage sent Gamakichi to tell me about our mission. I decided to come back here to get started on the mission. Naruto said. I'll be blunt. Taya was looking forward to spending more time with you. You're the person she's closest with in this village. Tsunade said. But we were just on a mission for two days. We already spent time together. Naruto said and Tsunade sighed. Naruto, Taya likes you. Tsunade said. I like her too. She's a good friend. Naruto said. No. She likes you like a boyfriend. Tsunade said. Well, how was I supposed to know? She didn't tell me. Naruto said. Of course she didn't. Taya doesn't seem like the type to just spill her feelings towards you. Do you like her as well? Tsunade asked. I just said yeah. Naruto said. No. I mean in a romantic type of way. Tsunade said. I don't know. Maybe. It's not like she's given me any clues or anything that pointed to her liking me. Naruto said. How about this? Take her out when you return from the mission with Jureya. If I'm not mistaken, there's going to be a festival about a day after you return. Take Taya out on a date and see how it goes. Tsunade said. I guess you're right, but there's a problem with that festival. Naruto said. What's that? Tsunade asked. A festival coming up is the Nine Tails Festival, and I never go to those. Naruto said. Damn it that is right. Tsunade said. I guess I'll go this year to Taya to see how I feel, but I can't make any promises that I won't fight anybody that attacks me. Naruto said. Just try to have a good time. Tsunade said. I'll try. Naruto said. You're gonna be 14 and I feel like I barely spent any time with you outside of training. Tsunade said. Don't worry. When I get back from my trip with Pervy Sage we can spend time together. Have a mother and son kind of day. Naruto said. Mother? Tsunade asked. I mean, you do treat me like a son and you are my godmother. Since we've officially met you've shown me the love and care an actual mother would. I know I call you Granny Tsunade, but I think of you as my mom. Naruto said and Tsunade smiled before giving him a hug. I'll make sure to clear a day for when you get back. Tsunade said and they broke the hug. There's just one thing bothering me. Naruto said. What is it? Tsunade asked. I'll be leaving in a month or two with Pervy Sage for my training trip. 
Does it make sense to start a relationship when I'm about to leave in two months? Naruto asked, you have a point. Just spend time with her to see how it goes. After that before you leave, see where you two stand. Does she know you're leaving? Tsunade asked, no. Me and Pervy Sage figured it was best that only you and the elders know. Well, not Danzo, but the other two. Naruto said and sat down on the couch in her office. You know if she sees you leaving she'll ask to come with you or try to kill you, right? Tsunade asked. I know. Was it this bad when you fell for Pervy Sage? Naruto asked. No. Actually the roles were reversed on our end. Jirai always loved me, but I was never sure or I would deny it. I didn't accept my feelings for him until I was gone from the village and didn't see him. You have a chance at love and if I were you, I'd take it before it's too late. Tsunade said. We'll see what happens. I'll see you later. It's time for me to meet Pervy Sage. Do you know what rank this mission is? Naruto asked. You have to ask him. Tsunade said. All right. Naruto said and vanished. Hot springs. Pervy Sage, you should really find a better hobby. Naruto said, as he arrived at the hot springs. Why? This is the greatest hobby ever. Jiraiya said and started to giggle. Whatever. Gamakichi told me you had a mission for us. Naruto said. It's not really a mission for me, but it is for you. You remember Koyuki Kazuhana, right? Jiraiya asked. Yeah. I had a mission two months ago to protect her and wound up killing her uncle after he tried to take over the land of snow. She even took a picture with me and gave me a kiss on the cheek. Naruto said. Good. I've been trying to get her to be the lead actress in my book that was picked up for a movie and she agreed to sign the contract, but on one condition. Jiraiya said. I'm sure it involves me. Naruto said. It does. Well we're filming she wants you to be her bodyguard. There's been another assassination attempt on her life and she thinks it's somebody who worked for her uncle. They use that same chakra armor and her guards don't stand a chance against it. If you find the person who's doing it, then take them out. This is an S-rank mission. Jiraiya said. So, when do we leave? Naruto asked. She's sending an aircraft to meet us near the valley of the end. We should leave now and we get there by the time the aircraft arrives. Jiraiya said. How long will we be gone? Naruto asked. About a month and a half. Since our trip was delayed due to Tsunade wanting to give you some field experience, we'll be leaving the day after your birthday. Jiraiya said. It's still two and a half years, right? Naruto asked. Yeah. Maybe with us delaying our departure, the Akatsuki will delay their plans as well. Now, let's get going. The airship will be here soon. Jiraiya said and they vanished. Land of snow. After going to the valley of end and getting on the airship, Naruto and Jiraiya finally made it to the land of snow. Koyuki wasn't with them since she was stuck in a meeting, but she personally invited them to her home. Naruto looked around a bit and noticed everyone was happier now since Dato was dead and Koyuki took over. They were being personally escorted to Koyuki even though they didn't need it. Another thing that Naruto and Jiraiya learned was that Naruto had a huge following over in the Land of Snow. In other words, Naruto has fangirls and they nearly got to him a few times. Now, he had to walk around with a henge on so nobody would see him. He saw Jiraiya was for once being serious, but he knew it was only a matter of time before he did something perverted and he hoped it didn't involve Koyuki. We're here. Lady Koyuki is just beyond these doors. A guard said and they entered the room. Naruto. It's so good to see you again. Koyuki said, and she gave him a huge hug squishing his head between her breasts. Lucky brat. Jiraiya thought. It's good to see you as well Koyuki. Oh and this is Jiraiya, but I like to call him pervy sage. Naruto said and Jiraiya punched him on the head. Stop calling me that. Jiraiya said and Koyuki giggled. Nice to officially meet you, Lord Jiraiya. Koyuki said and bowed. Pleasure is all mine. Jiraiya said and had a certain look on his face. Hey, pervy sage. Stop looking at her like she's a girl at the brothel house. Naruto said. Shut up. Jiraiya said. Stop being a perv and I will. Naruto said. And this caused a glaring contest between the two. Still haven't changed, Naruto. Although, Lord Jiraiya. I must warn you that your antics are strictly forbidden in my country. I have no problem placing you under arrest and nullifying the treaty between our villages. Koyuki said and Jiraiya was nearly heartbroken, almost two months with no peeking. How will I ever survive? Jiraiya thought, I can tell you right now that you were the first person he'd try to spy on. Naruto said, I know. That is why I will be staying in a secret location guarded by you, Naruto. Koyuki said, what about food? Naruto asked and Koyuki sighed, I have the best chefs. We cook your ramen as we speak. Now, shall we get on to business? Koyuki asked and Jiraiya spoke up, I'm excited and happy that you've accepted the contract. I honestly didn't think that you would. Jiraiya said, well, this was the first role I was offered since I took over. Now, I have one thing I would like to change up. Koyuki said, what would that be? Jiraiya asked, I wish to use a stunt double for the sex scenes. Your movie has actual sex and I'm not comfortable being naked on camera or in front of people. 
Naruto's the exception since he's already seen me like that. Koyuki said and Jiraiya was jealous of Naruto right now. We don't have enough time to find a stunt double. That and your looks are unique. Jiraiya said. That is all I want. I will do the movie, but not the porno scenes. Isn't there some kind of way to find somebody in a week? Koyuki asked. I'm afraid not. Jiraiya said. You two can't be serious. The solution is so simple. Just grab a female that is legal and see if she's willing to do the scene. All you need her to do is use the transformation and boom everybody wins. Naruto said. There's just one problem. We don't have anybody with that kind of training. Jiraiya said. I can get somebody. Naruto said. How? We're all the way in the land of snow. Jiraiya said. Emikichi can do it for me. He knows how to grab somebody and bring them with him. Of course he'd be tired after it, but he can do it. Naruto said. How old is she? Jiraiya asked. 24. She always wanted to be an actor in these kinds of movies. She works at the brothel house, so she'd be perfect for this. Naruto said. How does she have ninja training? Jiraiya asked. She said her grandfather taught her when she was younger, but she never wanted to be a ninja. She always wanted to be in a movie. Actually, all of the brothel house women know how to defend themselves. I wonder if she taught them. Naruto said. Will she be able to look just like me? Koyuki asked. Absolutely. Only thing that she needs is what your body looks like. Naruto said. I'm sure she can just imagine that. Koyuki said. I guess. Naruto said and summoned Gamakichi. Yo. What's up? Gamakichi asked. Hichi, I need you to go back to Konoha and grab Sakusu from my apartment building. She lives in 202. Naruto said. Oh. Doing that makes me tired. Gamakichi said. You can have this entire bag of sweets if you do it. Naruto said and unsealed a medium-sized bag. And again, you are my favorite summoner. I'll be back. Gamakichi said and left. That's how you get him to do stuff for you? Jiraiya asked. Yup. It's even worse with Gamatatsu. Naruto said and then a puff of smoke appeared. I'm back. Give me the treats. Gamakichi said. Well that was faster than I expected. Must be because of the treats. Naruto thought and gave him the bag. See ya. Gamakichi said and left. Naruto, what am I doing here? Sakusu asked. Sakusu is a beautiful woman to everyone that has ever laid eyes on her. She has tan skin, long flowing black hair that stops at her waist and green eyes. Jiraiya however, was drawn to her chest. Her breasts were nearly the size of Tsunade's, and she had a nice figure to add to her beauty. They're 92 centimeters, pervy sage. Stop staring at her. Naruto said. You remembered. Sakusu said and gave Naruto a big hug. I had no choice. When you were sick I went to do your shopping. 92, 60 and 87 were your measurements. After I had the talk with Anko, I put two and two together. Naruto said. He knows all of this, and yet he constantly gets on me for being a pervert. Jiraiya thought. Naruto, why am I here? Sakusu asked. You're here to be a stunt double for the movie Pervy Sage is doing. Naruto said. Who am I the stunt double for? Sakusu asked. That would be me. Koyuki said and Sakusu gasped. No fucking way. I get to be your stunt double Sakusu asked. That is correct. I don't want to get naked in front of the camera. I don't feel comfortable being naked on camera or in front of people. Koyuki said. Naruto saw you naked. Jiraiya said. Shut it, pervy sage. Naruto said. Don't call me that. Jiraiya yelled and everyone ignored him. Your breasts are too big to be mine. You're what, H cup? I'm only a double D, Koyuki said. It's fine. People know there are stunt doubles who do this kind of thing and mess up the body size, but in this case I don't think they would mind. All she really has to do is have your face correct and skin color. Jiraiya said. I can do that. Sakusu said and transformed into Koyuki except with her body type. Perfect. Jiraiya said. Can you mimic my voice? Koyuki asked. Of course I can. Sakusu said and sounded just like Koyuki. Great. Sakusu, come with me and we'll talk about your pay with the director. Jiraiya said. You try anything and I'll cut your dick off. Sakusu said and Jiraiya paled, but nodded. You got it. Naruto, you know what to do. Jiraiya said and left with Sakusu. You know the other reason I want you here, right? Koyuki asked. Yes, but why now when you're about to shoot a movie? Why not ask before? Naruto asked. Because I can use this as cover. Whoever is attacking me won't know you're here. I gave all of my closest guards the next month and a half off. I know you walked around with a hinge on, so they don't know you're here. Koyuki said. Do you have any suspicions on who it might be? Naruto asked. Yeah. I think it's my personal guard. Koyuki said. Why would said I want you dead? Naruto asked. Because he wants that chakra armor mass produced, but I reject his proposals every time. He thinks we should conquer the surrounding territory, but I want a peaceful country. Koyuki said. Does he have any skills? Naruto asked. He can fire. That's all I know. He thinks the chakra armor can make an ninjutsu specialist invincible. Koyuki said. Do you know if he has some? Naruto asked. I don't know. It's possible. 
I was in a meeting earlier and we were talking about ships coming and overnight delivering something, but nobody knew anything. I'm suspicious of Sadai since he's been more distant towards me lately. Koyuki said, I see. After this, you should really consider getting a better assistant. Naruto said, I don't think I'll find another assistant like Sandeu. Sad I was good when he first started, but now it's like I'm handling everything on my own. Koyuki said, I know somebody that can help. Naruto said, is this another brothel house girl? Koyuki asked, yes and no. Naruto said, explain please. Koyuki said, she works there, but is the receptionist. She organizes everything like appointments, personal visits, and even handles the money. It's the only job she could find to help provide for her, but I'm sure if a certain movie star and leader of a certain country needed an assistant, I'm sure she'd move here. Naruto said. How old is she? Koyuki asked. 21. Naruto said. The airship that will take you back, I want her on it. Send her a letter. Koyuki said. I will. Now, where are we headed? Naruto asked. Well, I want your help with something. Koyuki said. What would that be? Naruto asked. Teach me some of your fancy ninja moves. Koyuki said. I tried last time. What made you change your mind? Naruto asked. Last time you asked me was right after you killed my uncle, and then we had Sandeu's funeral. Koyuki said, true. Now, what would you like to learn? Naruto asked, everything. Koyuki said, fine. Do you have access to your chakra yet? Naruto asked, yeah. Koyuki said, channel some chakra then. Use the tiger seal and gather as much chakra as you can. Naruto said and showed her the tiger hand sign, okay. Koyuki said, and after a few tries she finally released some chakra. She must have been using chakra throughout her life without even realizing it. She has level reserves. Now comes the fun part, chakra control training. Naruto thought, alright. You can stop now. Naruto said, how was that? Koyuki asked, that's good. You have as much chakra as you would. Now, comes the part of you learning to control your chakra. Naruto said, what's first? Koyuki asked, tree walking, but I'll have you do it on the walls. This involves channeling a fixed amount of chakra to the bottom of your feet and using that to climb the wall without your hands. Too little chakra and you'll. Too much chakra and you'll be pushed off the wall and fall. What I want you to do is try and get to the ceiling since this is a pretty big room. Naruto said. Sounds easy enough. Koyuki said. If you say so. Naruto said. How long should it take me to get this down? Koyuki asked. It really depends on your ability to control your chakra. It took me a few days to learn this, but my chakra is difficult to control because I have so much of it. If you have a natural talent at controlling your chakra, I'd give you a few hours a day. Naruto said. Then let's get started. Koyuki said, two weeks later, Naruto and Koyuki were currently in a spar which was something they've been doing during her free time. In the past two weeks, Koyuki has mastered tree walking and water walking. Naruto also taught her the shadow clone, and since Koyuki was able to make five shadow clones, while they would spar, Naruto would have her make four shadow clones and teach them some water ninjutsu, since that was one of her chakra natures, with the other being lightning. Alright. That's enough for today. Naruto said and Koyuki collapsed to the ground, why are you training me so hard? Koyuki asked, trust me. This isn't hard. Anyway, I only have a month left to help you train, and I want to get as much done as possible. Naruto said, at least my schedule for the movie isn't that bad. Koyuki said, that's true. Now, release your shadow clones and see if they finished those yet. Naruto said and Koyuki nodded, then released her shadow clones. Finally. Koyuki said, show me. Naruto said, water style ripping torrent, Koyuki created a spiral of water in her hand and then fired it towards Naruto, who countered with his own ripping torrent. Water style. Water shuriken. Koyuki created some shuriken from water and threw them at Naruto who was wondering why she's using him for target practice. Water style. Severing wave. Koyuki spit out a high-pressure stream of water at Naruto who barely got out of the way and saw that she cut clean through the wall where they were training at. Water style. Water tornado. Koyuki created a vortex of water that was acting like a barrier, and when she was about to send it to Naruto, one look from him made her change her mind. Okay. You learned all four and used me as target practice. Next step is and we'll keep working on your tojutsu. Naruto said. I'm gonna hate this tojutsu training. Koyuki said. You'll be fine. I do have a question though. Naruto said. What's that? Koyuki asked. Why did you want me to train you? You could have just privately hired somebody. Why me? Naruto asked, because you're the only person I trust with this kind of thing. I know Jiraiya is here, but I think he'd be a bit too hands-on with me. That and I know you're strong. Koyuki said, I guess I can live with that. Naruto said, so, have you had any luck with Sad Eye? Koyuki asked, yeah. It's definitely him. Two days ago I saw him signing for another arrival from a ship. I tracked him down to where he's building the chakra armor, and it seems he only has one for himself. 
I couldn't destroy it because the core he has is a lot more powerful than the one your uncle used. I'd have to get him when he makes his move. Naruto said. When would that be? Koyuki asked. I'd say within the next few days. He has everything he needs to finish it, but I think he's carefully waiting to make sure you're alone. Naruto said. I don't think I'll be able to handle him. Koyuki said. You won't be. I'll be there to take him on. Naruto said. After he's taken care of, what's next? Koyuki asked. Then you finish the movie and your training. Naruto said. Don't I get to have any kind of fun? Koyuki asked and pouted. I'll be giving you more time off to heal. I'm only training you so much because I don't know if Sadai has anyone working with him. Naruto said. I just thought about this. Can that girl you recommended protect herself as well as Sakusu? Koyuki asked. Yeah. She was trained to be a ninja, but didn't enjoy the killing part, and the third mainly sent her on seduction missions. She never had to go that far in the missions, but she felt like the third was trying to get her killed or raped. Naruto said. Well, she won't have to worry about that here. That kind of stuff is severely frowned upon here and has a castration penalty. Koyuki said. If only Konoha was like that before Granny Tsunade took over. Anyway, your training is over for today. Naruto said. Good. How strong am I? Koyuki asked. Well, if I had to guess I'd say mid-genin, but that's only because you just started training with me. By the time I leave you should be about a mid chunin level opponent. The shadow clones are helping speed up your progress. Naruto said. So I'd be able to take you on? Koyuki asked. No. I'm basically mid jonin level, but I lack experience. Naruto said. Well, how will I train after you leave? We mainly have samurai here. Koyuki said. I'm sure Granny Tsunade wouldn't mind sending you some stuff to learn. We are allies after all. Naruto said. Nice. So, how do I do Jinjutsu? Koyuki asked. We'll work on that another time. I said you're done for today and you have some movie scenes to film tomorrow. Naruto said. What will you be doing? Koyuki asked. I have something to do. A personal mission of sorts. Naruto said. Does it have anything to do with a girl? Koyuki asked. Is it that obvious? How did you know? Naruto asked. I can tell by the look on your face. Now, who is the lucky lady? Koyuki asked and Naruto sighed. Her name's Teaya. When we get back to Konoha I'm taking her out on a date of sorts to this annual festival we have in our village. I was thinking about getting her a nice dress or something to wear for the festival. Naruto said. Is she your girlfriend? Koyuki asked. No. I'm taking her to see how I feel. I mean, I know she likes me, but I'm not sure if I like her. Naruto said. You like her? Koyuki said. What makes you say that? Naruto asked. If you didn't like her then you wouldn't be trying to buy her a nice dress. Koyuki said. I feel something, but I don't know what it is. Naruto said. Then act on that feeling. If she likes you, then I don't think she'd mind. Koyuki said. You don't know Tei like I do. If I do act on those feelings, there's a good chance that she'll kick me in the nuts or try to stab me. Naruto said. Just trust me. If she really likes you, then she won't mind. I am a girl after all. Koyuki said. Yeah. A girl who's never been on a date before. Naruto said. I choice. If you were older I'd allow you to take me out. Koyuki said. Maybe in another world. Naruto said and Koyuki laughed, joking aside. If you really want to get her a good dress, go to the dress store and ask for Chiyun. She makes all of my elegant dresses, and if you tell her I sent you, I'm sure she'd help you out. Koyuki said. Thanks. I owe you one for this. Naruto said. You'll be saving my life for a second time while you're here. You don't owe me anything. Koyuki said. I guess you're right. Are you ready to leave now? Naruto asked. Yes. Can you take me back to where I am staying? I need to soak in the hot springs there. Koyuki said. Sure. Any progress on completing the generator? Naruto asked. It's nearly done. I have my best scientists working on it. We should officially become the land of spring within the next year. Koyuki said. That's good. Maybe I'll come back to visit once it's done. Naruto said and vanished with Koyuki. Naruto, as he was walking through the land of snow under his hinge, Naruto was looking around for that dress shop that Koyuki told him about. Everything was so lively around here and if it weren't for his fangirls, he'd gladly walk around without his hinge. He looked like a small eight-year-old with brown hair and black eyes. As he was walking, he noticed his search led him into a more fancy part of the land of snow, and he felt a bit out of place. He found the store he was looking for and finally entered. Hello. How may I help you, young man? The lady at the desk asked with a smile. Um. I'm looking for Chiyun. I was told to come here to get a custom dress made. Naruto said. Aren't you a bit too young to ask for a custom dress? The cashier asked and Naruto looked around before dropping his hinge. It's me, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto said. Oh gosh. It's really you. The cashier said and Naruto placed his hand over her mouth. Please, keep it down. Nobody is supposed to know I'm here, but I had to do this. Naruto said and she nodded. Sorry. It's just that you're famous in the land of snow. 
Anyway, Chiam is around back. Just go through that door and she should be in her office. The lady said and pointed to a door, thanks. Naruto said and went through the doors, well, this is a surprise. The famous Naruto Uzumaki is in my shop and he is personally looking for me. To what do I owe the pleasure? Chiam asked, Koyuki sent me here to get a custom dress made. Naruto said, who's the lucky lady? Chiam asked and pulled out a notepad, seriously? Do I have a note or something on my face? Naruto asked, honey, I've been in this business for 20 years. I know when a dress is for a girl or not. Now, what are her measurements? Chiam asked, I hope she doesn't kill me for this. If she does, I blame Shizun for forcing me to go shopping with her. 30, 32, 35. Naruto said and Chiam wrote it down, that's odd for a measurement, but I'm sure she'll have a massive growth spurt soon. What's her personality? Chiam asked, well, she's usually quiet unless she's around somebody she knows. She's an overbearing, abrasive, blunt, foul-mouthed girl, which has somewhat rubbed off on me. She is caring and sweet, but that's only when we're around each other with no one else around. She does swear at me when we're alone, but she's just joking. Naruto said and Chiam wrote that down, uh-huh. What's she look like? Chiam asked, fair skin, nice brown eyes, and she has long beautiful red hair. Naruto said, I see. I should have something prepared for you in two weeks. Chiam said, thank you. Naruto said, you should tell her how you feel. Chiam said, it's really complicated on my end and not for any bad reasons. Naruto said, whatever it is, I'm sure you'll make the right decision. Chiam said and Naruto left, Konoha, nobody was safe in Konoha at the moment, and Teaya was the reason for it. It's been two weeks since Naruto left, and she hasn't gotten a word or anything from him. Add in the fact that she had to go on a lot of basic C-rank missions with teammate, and she's basically a ticking time bomb right now. Kurinai was fine and she helped her with her skills. It was Kiba and Hinata who were the problem. Kiba would purposely try to sabotage her on their missions, while Kurinai was busy, and that resulted in Teaya throwing kunai at him. Kiba told her that she's lucky Naruto is a nice guy and gave her a second chance, but he also said that he would kill her if she ever crossed the line and hurt him. Aya quickly shut him down when she told him that Naruto doesn't even consider any of them his friends. She also told Kiba that he could try to kill her, but she'd have him dead before he could even move which was true since Kiba was horrible at breaking and all of her so far were sound based, which was his weakness due to his hearing. Hinata on the other hand just kept staring at Teaya and she swore she saw her glare at her once. The tension between the two of them was obvious and Hinata would purposely poke her chest out while walking past Teaya to show off her figure. At first Aya was confused when she talked to Kurinai about it, she learned about Hinata's crush on Naruto and even found out she stalked him around the village. Teaya told Hinata when they were alone that it was only a matter of time before Naruto was hers and that was the truth. The only thing is, Naruto didn't pick up on any signal she gave him indicating she liked him. She was currently in Tsunade's office since they just returned from another mission. Mission complete, Lady Tsunade. Kurinai said, good. Any problems? Tsunade asked and looked at Teaya who was irritated, why the fuck do you keep looking at me? I didn't do shit. It was these two fuckers as usual. Teaya said, what did I tell you about swearing in my office? Tsunade asked and Teaya sighed, fine. I'm sorry, big tits. Teaya said and Tsunade pinched her nose, her and I and teammate were dismissed. Tsunade said, thank you. Teammate, meet me at training ground 8 in 2 days for training. Teaya, feel free to join if you like. Kurinai said and then left with teammate, not gonna happen. Teaya said, you should really try to get along with them. Tsunade said, I tried and it's not working. I'd rather die than be friends with them anyway. Teaya said, you still can't cause problems on the missions. Tsunade said, I don't. I just want to get them done quickly with no problems, but the nut licking mud and shy stalker keep bothering me. Teaya said, it's amazing how she can come up with so many insults and find a way for them to be funny, but true as well. Shizun thought, how about I send you on missions with Team 9? Tsunade asked, do you want me to kill the two green beans? Teaya asked, fair point. What about team 10? Tsunade asked, with the lazy crybaby, the chainsmaker, tubs and the prissy blonde slut. I'd rather pass. Can't I just go on some missions by myself? I can handle it. Teaya said, you sound like Naruto right now. Tsunade said and Teaya blushed a bit, it's the truth. Teaya said, I know, but I can't send a genin on a C-rank mission by themselves. Tsunade said, then promote me too. Teaya said, I can't. You know you have to take the exams for your promotion. That was part of the deal with the Shinobi Council. Tsunade said, yeah yeah. Teaya said and waved her hand at Tsunade, those are your only options. Tsunade said, why can't I just do a C-rank mission with a member watching me then? I don't need the entire team to come with me. Teaya said, who do you have in mind? Tsunade asked, please don't say Anko. Shizun thought, her and I, Anko were cats. I get along with them. I don't really know Hana that much, and the others can choke on a kunai. 
Taiya said. I'll talk to them about it. Tsunade said and Taiya nodded, just out of curiosity. When does Naruto get back? Taiya asked. Why? Do you miss him? Tsunade asked and smirked when Taiya blushed. No. He's the only person my age in this village that I can tolerate. Taiya said. I know when he gets back, but I can't tell you since it's an S-rank mission from what I understand. Tsunade said. Come on. Can't you give me a hint? Taiya asked. Nope. Tsunade said and Taiya yelled before storming out of the office. Why didn't you let her know when Naruto was coming back? Shizune asked. Because it's fun messing with her. I need to have some kind of fun on the job. Tsunade said. I guess you're right. Shizune said and Kat appeared in the office. What is it, Kat? Tsunade asked. Taiya has gone on a rampage again. Do I have permission to apprehend her? Kat asked. Let her blow off some steam. It's kind of my fault. Is there anything else? Tsunade asked. Yes. The council is waiting for you. There was an emergency meeting called about Naruto not being in the village. Kat said. Who called the meeting? Tsunade asked. Elder Danzo. Kat said. Of course he did. I'll be there shortly. Tsunade said and Kat vanished. That's odd. Shizune said. I know. Why would Danzo call a meeting because Naruto isn't here? Tsunade asked. Because Danzo doesn't know that Naruto is out on a mission with Jiraiya. He doesn't know much that goes on anymore since you seal the office now and it keeps his little spies out. One thing we know about Danzo is that he doesn't like when he doesn't know what's going on in the village. Shizun said. No. Danzo wants something else. Tsunade said. What could he be after? Shizun asked and after Tsunade thought about it, her eyes went wide. He wants Taiya. Cat. Tsunade yelled. Yes lady Tsunade. Cat asked. I want you to grab Anko and Kurinai. Go protect Taiya at any cost. Tsunade said. Of course. Cat said and vanished. Why would Danzo want Taiya? Shizun asked. He doesn't want Taiya. He wants Naruto and he knows if he can get Taiya, then he can blackmail Naruto into joining him. Tsunade said. That isn't very smart. Danzo is putting the entire village at risk. Naruto would lose control of the Nine Tails if something happened to Taiya. Shizune said. I know. That's why I have three of my top and I'm going to help her. Tsunade said. What will we do about the meeting? Shizune asked. We'll go, but act normal. Tsunade said. Anoha Forest. Who the fuck are you and what the fuck do you want? Taiya asked as she was surrounded by 15 blank masks. Our master would like a word with you. The obvious captain said. Tell your boss I said to kiss my fucking ass. Taiya said and pulled out her flute. Better. Use force, but do not kill her. The captain said, but that's when Anko, Kurinai and Kat landed in front of Taiya. Oh, well. You guys weren't going to start without us, were you? Anko said. Be the lever, Tai. Kat said. Kill them all. Leave the girl alive. The captain said. It's like you're a magnet for trouble, Taiya. Kurinai said. Shit happens. Taiya said. Let's do this. Anko said. Anko pulled out two kunai and ran towards the first two members she saw. The members pulled out their tanto swords and swung at Anko, but she did a split to avoid the swipes and threw a kunai into each of their groins. Anko removed the kunai and then quickly slit their throats. She was nearly kicked from behind, but her years of experience kicked in and she used her hidden shadow snake hands to grab the and threw a kunai straight through his skull. These guys aren't that strong. Anko said and pouted. We have our orders, Anko. Kurinai said. Kurinai ducked out of the way from a head kick by and then quickly trapped him in the hellfire. Before they could break them, Kurinai threw multiple shuriken into his body. She saw two more coming at her, and she trapped them in the tree binding death, then watched as they fell to the ground dead since the tree exploded. Six down, nine more to go. Kurinai said. Aya hid in the trees using the double full surroundings to keep herself hidden. She used the summoning to summon her doki into the fight. Once the doki were summoned, Taiya used her flute to control her doki and had them attack the four Anbu members that were still trapped in her still. Since she no longer had the curse mark, it was hard for her to have complete control over the doki since she didn't have that evil presence on her anymore, but she had just enough control to have them smash the four members and kill them. She's right. These guys are fucking weak. How the fuck didn't they know they were under a damn Taiya asked and Kurinai sighed. We really need to work on that mouth of yours. Kurinai said. My mouth is pretty fucking fine. Taiya said. I don't see a problem with how she talks. Anko said. Of course you don't. Kurinai said and then the five remaining members fell to the ground. What the fuck was that? Taiya asked. Did you forget that I was here? Kat asked. Well, yeah. I'm not a fucking censor and I thought you got your pretty ass out of here. Taiya said. How do you know I'm pretty? You don't know what I look like. Kat said. There's only two people in the damn village with purple fucking hair. I know who you are. Taiya said. She's got a point. Anko said. Let's just seal the bodies and report to Lady Tsunade. Kurinai said. Uh, that's not going to happen. Anko said. Why? Taiya asked. Look. Anko said and they saw all the bodies go up in flames. What the hell? 
was that the aftermath of your tea? I asked, no. I had nothing to do with that. Kurin I said, wait. How do you know I was in trouble? Taya asked, Lady Tsunade had a feeling you were in danger since an emergency meeting was called about Naruto being gone, but it's never happened like that before. Cat said, then big tits must have known that they would come after me. I thought they only responded to her, the captain and commander. Taya said, they do, but I don't think these are normal members. Anko said, what the hell does that mean? Taya asked, we need to go to Lady Tsunade. Cat said, then vanished with Anko and Kurinai, what the fuck? Aren't you fucking forgetting something? Taya yelled and Kurinai came back, sorry. Kurinai said and grabbed Taya before vanishing, Tsunade's office, so, I was right. Tsunade said, yes Lady Tsunade. When we arrived she was surrounded by 15 blank masked members. Kat said, why were they after me? I didn't do anything wrong. Well, I don't think I did. Taya said and crossed her arms while thinking, sheesh. She even has Naruto's thinking face. Tsunade said, they weren't after you exactly, Taya. Shizun said, then you were big tits better start explaining. Taya said, the person who sent them isn't after you. He's after Naruto. You were more than likely going to be used as blackmail to force Naruto to join his side. Tsunade said, so, why not go after Naruto himself then? Taya asked, because Naruto is the Nine Tails and the guy doesn't want Naruto to release the Nine Tails, but he made one miscalculation. Tsunade said, what's that? Anko asked, Taya, what do you think Naruto would do if he found out somebody in this village was holding you hostage? Tsunade asked, come look for me. Taya said, that's right, but when he finds you, there's a chance that he can release more Nine Tails chakra than he can currently handle and fully release the Nine Tails. Either way this village would be destroyed. Tsunade said, damn. So, who's the guy that sent them after me? Taya asked, his name is Danzo Shimura and he's an elder on our council. Tsunade said, bandage over his eye and missing an arm? Has an axe on his chin. Taya asked, yeah. How do you know him? Shizune asked, a few years ago I saw him talking with Orochimaru about something, but I didn't know what it was about since they were talking quietly. Taya said, it's something, but it's not much. Tsunade said, so, do you mind telling me why you're attacking me when they're supposed to answer only to you, the captain and commander? Taya asked, these aren't mine. Those belong to Root. It's an illegally run division of Black Ops, and Danzo is the leader. Tsunade said, then if it's illegal, why not arrest him? Taya asked, because he doesn't leave any trail. I've dealt with a few Roots when I took over as and after they are defeated, they go up in flames. He's very careful and nobody knows the location of the base. Naruto is the best sensor in the village, and he couldn't even find them. He thinks wherever they're hidden is protected by seals. Tsunade said, Lady Tsunade, what do we do now? Kurinai asked, yeah. I was looking forward to torturing them, but now I can't. Can I go after Danzo and bring him in for questioning? Anko asked and pulled out a kunai, no. For now we do nothing. His priorities right now are Naruto and taking the title from me, but that won't happen. Naruto is being trained by Jiraiya, so he's under careful watch basically all the time, even when Jiraiya isn't in the village. As for me. Well, let's just say that I'm even better than I was when I was younger. Tsunade said, well, how old are you? Taya asked, don't worry about it. Tsunade said, I bet Naruto knows. Taya said, he does, but he swore he won't tell anybody. Tsunade said, I can get it out of him. Taya said with confidence, I told him if he tells anybody my age, then I'll personally have the Ichirakus ban him from eating there ever again. Tsunade said, damn it. Taya said, will Danzo come after us now? Kurinai asked, no. He knows both of you are needed to keep Kanoha safe, since you're some of the top, and Kat is the captain. Tsunade said, what about me? I mean if that's all he's sending after me then I can handle them easily. Taya said, no. If he makes another move on you, then next time he sends will be stronger. Shizun said, then what do I do? Taya asked, you train obviously. He'll go in the shadows for now since he knows he failed and that gives us time to prepare. I don't know what you want to train in, but I'll give you two weeks to three weeks to make up your mind before I choose a training regime for you. Tsunade said, fine. I'll look into some stuff. Taya said, good. You're all dismissed. Tsunade said and they left the office. Lady Tsunade, perhaps it is best that you implement your medical program now with everything going on. The Akatsuki were one thing, but now Danzo has joined our list of oncoming problems. Shizun said, yes, I know. I want a list of everyone you think would benefit the most from this course. Both of us will be leading this, but it will mainly be you since I have my duties to deal with as well. Tsunade said, yes, Mladi. Shizun said and left the office. As soon as Shizun left the office, Tsunade pulled out a bottle of sake and took a huge gulp. Things would be so much better once the current threats are dealt with and she can actually relax. She was looking out the window when a messenger toad came and delivered a letter to her from Naruto.
he told her that he was training Koyuki and he needed her to send over some scrolls for her to learn from once he leaves. That pretty much told her where he was at and he also told her he was having a dress made for Teaya to wear for the festival. This was all unexpected but she was dealing with Naruto here and she smiled. She quickly wrote a response to him and placed some ninjutsu scrolls, scrolls, to jutsu scrolls and even a copy of some of her medical ninjutsu scrolls and sealed them into a piece of paper she gave back to the messenger toad. She was glad she knew how to seal stuff away or that would have been more difficult. As the toad went away, Tsunade looked out the window and saw Teaya walking around. She knew Teaya would have a hard time figuring out what to do especially with Naruto leaving for over two years with Yureya and that's when she came up with the perfect solution to her problem. The only problem was she didn't know if Teaya would accept this proposal or not. Chapter 6. Naruto's Departure Naruto was currently on set in the shadows watching Koyuki do her scenes for the day and he could tell she was frustrated. The person she was doing the scene with couldn't remember his lines and they were in the 20th take for this one part. It's been a few days since they last trained and Naruto was sure that Sadai would be attacking today. He had a run in with him once while he was walking around the village under a different disguise since he had to drop his hinge to the cashier lady. He was disguised as a blue-haired little girl with green eyes. Flashback, Naruto was on his way to grab some food for Koyuki from her favorite restaurant and that's when he saw Sadai walking around with a suspicious look on his face. He used his speed to get in front of him and when Sadai was walking, Naruto came from around the corner and accidentally bumped into him knocking him down. Hey, watch it. Sadai said. Sadai had neck-length black hair that he wore in an asymmetrical bowl-cut style and he had green eyes. He wore the typical outfit for the land of snow which was a heavy coat, gloves and boots. Sorry, sir. Naruto said. Just watch where you're going next time, little girl. Sadai said. Time for me to act like Tai and see where this goes. Naruto thought. Hey, fuck you. You bumped into me, you son of a bitch. Naruto said and Sadai was stunned that a little girl no older than nine cursed at him. W what did you say? Sadai asked. You fucking heard me. You limp dick ugly fuck. How about you watch where you're fucking going next time. I bet your nose touches the wall before your dick. Naruto said and Sadai's jaw dropped. You should watch your mouth. You obviously don't know who I am. Hey. Give that back. Sadai said reaching for a piece of paper Naruto snatched. What are you making? Ooh is this some kind of awesome device? Naruto asked and Sadai snatched the paper. Yes. It's a project that I'm working on and it will make the land of snow a much better place. Sadai said and walked away. So, his chakra armor has the same weakness at the core like the old version. However, his core is much more powerful and if fight him near the town, it would wipe out a huge part of the town. I'll have to fight him a few miles from here where it's nothing except wide open space. Naruto thought. Flashback end. Naruto told Koyuki and Jiraiya about his run in with Sadai and agreed that he should fight him away from everything. While Naruto would be fighting Sadai, Jiraiya would guard Koyuki along with Sakusu. Naruto dropped his disguise while he was on set since he was in the shadows. He kept multiple shadow clones around the set to cover every single entrance to the set. As he was watching, Naruto heard the director yell cut once again and told everyone to take a five minute break while they went over lines for the actor she was with. Koyuki walked over to the table for some water and to talk to Naruto since she knows where he is hidden. Tough scene? Naruto asked from the shadows. No. The actor I'm with can't seem to remember his lines for some reason. He only needed two takes so far but today it's like he doesn't even know he's in the movie. Koyuki said, that's odd. Naruto said and activated his Hishigen. Maybe I should ask to cancel shooting for today. Koyuki said, you don't have to. He's under right now. Most likely Sadai trying to make his move. Naruto said, does that mean he's already in the building? Koyuki asked and Naruto eyes went wide. Yeah. One of my shadow clones just popped. Go near Jiraiya and don't leave his side. Naruto said, okay. Koyuki said and ran towards Jiraiya. Koyuki, what's wrong? Jiraiya asked, he's here. Koyuki said and Jiraiya grew serious. Where? Jiraiya asked. Well, hello there, Princess Koyuki. Sadai said as he came from the ceiling. Sadai, why are you doing this? Koyuki asked. You aren't fit to run the land of snow. You're too weak-minded and kind-hearted. In this world strength and power is the only thing that matters. Instead of being allies with the surrounding smaller countries, we should rule them. This chakra armor is the perfect way to do that, but you. Sad I was cut off when he was kicked out of the building by Naruto. I really didn't feel like hearing another evil speech. I hear enough from this movie. Naruto said and banished. Naruto vs. Sad I. Sad I landed on the ground and when he looked up he was in the middle of nowhere basically. He jumped back when Naruto landed in front of him and destroyed the ground with A once the smoke cleared and Sad I saw Naruto, he grew angry and scared at the same time. You what are you doing here? Sad I asked. Working. Naruto simply replied. This is none of your concern. 
go back to the leaf village. Sad I said, that's where you're wrong. You see, other than the fact that Snow and the Leaf Village are allies, Koyuki happens to be a very good friend of mine, and she secretly hired me to protect her from you. Naruto said, she knew. Sad I asked, of course she knew, but she couldn't confirm it. I've been watching you the entire time I was here. The little girl at the market was me and I must say, you've certainly improved the chakra armor. Naruto said, better materials and an even better core. I must thank Koyuki and her team of scientists, since they provided me with the materials I needed. Sad I said, you were stealing supplies she's using for the generator. All that because she rejected your proposal to use chakra armor to conquer the surrounding territories. Naruto said, we have technology to rule this world, but she's too soft. Somebody new needs to take over and that somebody is me. Sad I said, since you're going to die here I'll tell you a little something about the world you should know. There's a group that's around that even frightens the main five great villages. Something as simple as your technology wouldn't even come close to being enough to stop them if they succeed in their plans. Naruto said, with me in charge and mass producing chakra armor, we will be invincible. Sad I said, higher style. Fireball. Sad I launched a huge fireball towards Naruto, and he countered with a ripping torrent. Naruto tried to get close to Sad I, but he would launch after Naruto, forcing him to keep his distance. Naruto decided to play along with this distance game and wait for the perfect opportunity to strike Sad I. Naruto used the Shuriken Shadow Clone and Kunai Shadow Clone on Sadai, but he was protected by the Chakra Armor since it created a shield around him. Water Style. Try Water Dragon. Naruto launched three Water Dragons at Sadai who just stood there with a smirk on his face and looked on as the Chakra Armor absorbed the Chakra from Naruto, causing water to fall to the ground. Before Naruto could make his next move, he had to jump out of the way from a huge beam that came shooting out of the Chakra Armor. Higher Style. Dragon Flame. Sad I fired off a Dragon Flame projectile at Naruto which came at fast speeds, and Naruto barely had time to use the water wall to protect himself. Before the smoke cleared, Naruto was hit by a fireball that had less chakra than before, so it did little damage to him. He realized Sad I didn't have much chakra, so he must have stored the chakra into his armor and used it to supply his, and that energy beam must have used almost all of that chakra he had stored away. The smoke cleared and Naruto had a few burn marks on him that were healing, thanks to the Nine Tails healing ability. Naruto removed his vest leaving him in his red shirt, but he put a confident smirk on his face and cracked his neck. Sad I didn't like the smirk Naruto had, so he shot a rather weak energy beam at Naruto and watched as it exploded on impact. The smoke cleared and Naruto was standing there with his hand up surrounded by his glacial dome. What? There's no way you should have been able to block that. Sad I said, you lost. I found the weakness in your chakra armor and your skills. You store chakra in the armor, then use it to increase the power of your ninjutsu attacks. That large beam you shot at me used up nearly all the chakra you had stored away. Your actual reserves are small, and your last two barely had any chakra in them. That last beam you shot was so slow that an academy student would have seen it coming. Naruto said, I can still win. Sad I said, no, you can't. Naruto said from behind him, Lunar Barrage. As soon as Sad I turned around, Naruto punched him in the gut and released a pulse of chakra from his fist to increase the power of the punch. Upon inflicting the punch Naruto took advantage by following up with a fury of rapid untraceable punches. Each punch was so fast that Sad I was unable to block which left him open for another type of punch. This constant barrage of attacks weakened the chakra armor on Sad I, and Naruto saw the core was also taking damage. Naruto ended the combo with a very powerful punch to Sad Eye's stomach, inflicting a lot of damage and making him cough up a large amount of blood. Sad Eye was sent crashing into a large ice-covered boulder and fell to the ground. And no. It's not over. If I'm going down then I'm taking you with me. Sad Eye said and ripped the cover off of the power core to his chakra armor. Eye style. Certain kill eye spears. Before Sad Eye could make his move, Naruto used his and eye spears rose from the ground, then stabbed Sad Eye through his body. Sad Eye was dead instantly, and his body just hung on the eye spears as his blood was rushing from his body. Naruto walked over to him and removed the core from the chakra armor, since he figured Koyuki could use this for the generator. Naruto then sealed the body away before using his water manipulation to wash away the blood, just in case somebody came through the area. The land of snow had a good reputation ever since Koyuki took over, and Naruto didn't want anything to ruin it. Well, now that that's over with, I can go back to the studio and report to Pervy Sage and Koyuki. Naruto said and banished, studio. Naruto returned to the studio and saw 20 people unconscious on the ground. Naruto looked around and saw Jiraiya kick somebody towards him, and he knocked the person out with a Naruto saw Jiraiya looking at him with a raised eyebrow, and he walked over to him. How'd it go? Jiraiya asked, he's done. I see you were busy. Naruto said, not really actually. Koyuki took out a few of them. I wonder where she learned to fight. 
Jiraiya said and looked at Naruto who sheepishly smiled. Come on. You know I did the right thing. Naruto said. I'm just saying a little heads up would have been nice. So, tell me. What did her breast look like covered in sweat? Jiraiya asked as a pin and notepad appeared in his hand. She was completely covered, curvy sage. Anyway, where is she? Naruto asked. I'm here. Koyuki said and came out from her hiding spot. Why are you hiding? Naruto asked. The ones Jiraiya took out were too strong for me and he told me to hide. Where's Sadai? Koyuki asked. In here. Naruto said and pulled out a scroll. Can you unseal the body so I can confirm his death? Koyuki asked and Naruto was nervous. Well, here's the thing. I don't know if you want to see this. Naruto said scratching his head. What did you do? Jiraiya asked. Well, I used my ice keke Genkai. Naruto said. I'm ordering you to unseal the body. Koyuki said. Fine. Naruto said and unsealed Sadai's body. Oh my. Koyuki said and threw up in the nearest garbage can. Sheesh. What did you do? He's covered in holes. Jiraiya said. I use my certain kill eye spears. I kind of use too much chakra. Naruto said. I'll say. He's pierced everywhere except the middle of his chest. Jiraiya said. That's because the power core to his armor was there and I didn't want to risk it. Naruto said. Power core? What did it do? Koyuki asked. It powered the chakra armor, but this one was different. After the core absorbed enough chakra, it could fire off a beam at the opponent. I kept the core because I thought it could help with the generator. Oh and he's been stealing supplies from the generator project as well. Naruto said. Can I have the core? I want my best scientists to look at it and see if it works. Koyuki said. Sure. I think he has more materials at his hideout where he built the chakra armor. I can go there and see what I can find for you. Naruto said. Thank you. Koyuki said and gave him a kiss on the cheek. You're welcome. Naruto said. I guess we can call it a wrap for today. The director was knocked out cold by these goons. Jiraiya said. What are you going to do with them, Koyuki? Naruto asked. They'll be sent to jail of course and will face their punishment for their actions. Koyuki said. Isn't attacking you a death penalty? Naruto asked. Yeah, but I want them to sweat it out. Koyuki said. That's how it is in the five great villages. Attacking the daimyo or anybody in power is the death penalty. Jiraiya said. Good. Now, Naruto, will you please escort me to my sleeping chambers? Koyuki said. Even with sad eye dead I still have to guard you? Naruto asked. Yes. My assistant hasn't arrived yet, so you are my guard until she arrives. Koyuki said. Fine. Naruto said. Lord Jiraiya can you help the guards escort these men to jail? Koyuki asked. Of course. Maybe for helping you I can peep just a little bit. Jiraiya asked. Sure, that is if you're okay with the punishment. Koyuki said. What's the punishment? Jiraiya asked. When you're caught peeping, you stand in front of the women you were spying on and they take turns kicking you in the groin while you're tied at your hands and ankles for five hours. Koyuki said and Jiraiya paled. Never mind. Jiraiya said. Thought so. Koyuki said. Ready to go? Naruto said. Yup. Koyuki said and Naruto grabbed her then vanished, sleeping chambers. After the events of the day, Naruto and Koyuki decided to use the hot springs in her private sleeping chambers. Koyuki didn't mind Naruto joining her since she knew he wouldn't try anything on her, and he sat on the opposite side facing her. You know, had you not told me about the Teia girl I would be all over you right now. Koyuki said and laughed when Naruto rolled his eyes. At least with you I wouldn't mind. The fangirls on the other hand. Naruto said and shivered. Why wouldn't you mind if it were me? Koyuki said. Because I know you wouldn't want me just because I'm famous. I know you're attracted to me sexually, but when I used my sensing ability on you, it wasn't lust that I felt from you, it was love. Naruto said. Why didn't you ever say anything? Koyuki asked and slid next to Naruto. Because I knew it would never work between us. You being the leader of Snow and me being a ninja all the way in Konoha, you'd be in more danger since my enemies would come after you. That and let's face it, we barely knew each other. Oh and I kind of had this thing where my girlfriend must have red hair for some reason. Naruto said. So, if you weren't a ninja in Konoha, lived here and I had red hair, would you date me? Koyuki asked. Of course I would. You're nice, smart, beautiful and you'd probably be the exception to the red hair thing. Naruto said. You do realize I'm older than you, right? Koyuki asked. You're only like three or four years older than me depending on how you look at it. Naruto said. W what? I'm 24. Koyuki said. No, you're not. You told me after I saved you and you were drunk from the party how old you really were. I know you lied to get in the movies and you were lucky they didn't have sex scenes in them. Naruto said. I don't remember telling you that. Koyuki said. You were drunker than Granny Tsunade after she had two days off from the office. Naruto said. That's our little secret. Koyuki said. Of course. Naruto said and his eyes went wide. What? Why do you look like that? Koyuki asked. I'm a fucking idiot. Naruto said. Huh? Why would you say that? Koyuki asked. Hey, I. 
I can sense feelings as well, and I never used it on her to see how she felt. Oh I'm such an idiot. Naruto said. Well, that does make you an idiot. So, I'm guessing you know you like her. Koyuki asked. Yeah. I think I do. I didn't actually realize it until I left the dress shop. Naruto said. So, are you going to make her your girlfriend when you return to Konoha? Koyuki asked. I don't know. It's complicated. Naruto said. How so? Koyuki asked. When I get back to the village, I'll only be there for a day, and then I'm leaving again with Pervy Sage. Naruto said. Where are you going? Koyuki asked. I can't tell you. Naruto said. Then you better tell Teiya this. Koyuki said. I want to, but I can't. It's only supposed to be known by me, Granny Tsunade, Pervy Sage and two of the village elders where I'm going. I thought about telling her, but I decided against it. Naruto said. Maybe she'll wait for you to return. Koyuki said. Maybe. Naruto said. Who knows? Maybe she'll even let me join you as a second girlfriend. Koyuki said. Nah. I'm a one girlfriend kind of guy. That and she doesn't seem like the sharing type. Naruto said. I thought the five main villages had the CRA Koyuki said. I don't know about the other villages, but Konoha has it, and I rejected it. That's something the third came up with for some stupid reason. Naruto said. Would you reject it? Koyuki asked. Because it's dumb. That and there's a chance only one of them actually loves you and the others just want a piece of your fortune. Naruto said and then the messenger toad showed up. Who's this? Koyuki asked. A messenger toad. I sent a letter to Granny Tsunade about your training. Naruto said and took the scroll from the toad before it left. What does it say? Koyuki asked. It says she sent over some scrolls for you to learn from. Ninjutsu, Tojutsu, and medical ninjutsu with instructions. Naruto said. I thought you already taught me Tojutsu. Koyuki said. I did, but it's the basic academy Tojutsu. I told her to pick out a style that she thinks would fit you. Naruto said. What style did she send over? Koyuki asked. It's called Aikido. It focuses on redirecting your opponent's force and using it against them. It's good for you since you don't have to be stronger than your attacker, since you're using their momentum. It's a variety of joint locking and throwing techniques. Naruto said. Nice. Did she send me more water ninjutsu? Koyuki asked. No. She sent you some lighting ninjutsu. It's your secondary chakra nature, but it's weaker than your water chakra nature. Luckily she sent over instructions on how to control your lightning chakra nature. I'll have your shadow clones work on the lightning chakra for safety purposes. Naruto said. So, I have an offensive and defensive chakra nature. Koyuki asked. Exactly. You can even combine them for a powerful attack. Now, we'll be working on your next few lessons. We'll start with detecting and breaking before I have you cast. Medical ninjutsu I can't really help you with, since my chakra is too dense for it, so I never bothered to learn it, but I'm guessing that's why she included the instructions. Naruto said. When do we train? Koyuki asked. Well, today you can rest. We'll start again tomorrow. Naruto said. Okay. Are you ready to get out of here? We've been here for a while. Koyuki said. Sure. Naruto said and got out of the hot springs. Oh my. Koyuki said and a splash followed making Naruto turn around. Koyuki? Naruto asked and she was passed out with blood coming from her nose. Naruto's so big. Koyuki mumbled. I probably should have grabbed the towel first. Naruto said, and after he was covered he grabbed Koyuki, then vanished. Three weeks later, it was time for Naruto and Jiraiya to return to Konoha, and Koyuki wasn't happy. She was going to miss Naruto since he was basically her only friend at the moment. She was thankful for the training he gave her, and she was able to defend herself from a mid chunin opponent, but her overall skill would make her about high chunin since she didn't have much experience. She told Naruto she'd gain experience by fighting any would-be mercenaries that like to attack Snow Country. Her medical ninjutsu skills were pretty damn good since she had excellent chakra control. Her tojutsu came along great and her water and lightning chakra natures were nearly mastered. She needed to work on her lightning chakra nature a bit more. Naruto was able to pick up the dress from Chiyam, but she told him not to look at it until Teiya puts it on. Jiraiya was mainly at his movie since this was the only time he'd be able to see the production, since the movie would be done by the time Naruto's training trip was over. Naruto and Koyuki spent a lot of free time together, tricking some people into thinking they were dating, but they told them they weren't. Naruto also raided Sad Eye's hideout and took all of the supplies he had, then gave them to the scientists for development of the generator. Right now they were waiting for the airship to be ready. Well, it was fun spending time with you, Naruto and you as well, Lord Jiraiya. Koyuki said. Same here. Remember to keep up with your training. Naruto said and gave Koyuki a hug. I will. Sakusu said she'd help me out. Koyuki said. The director said the movie should be done in a year, so you'll be pretty busy. Jiraiya said. It's okay. Naruto helped me with my stamina during our training sessions. Koyuki said. Oh did he now? Tell me, what exactly happened? Jiraiya asked and Koyuki smirked. We had sex multiple times. 
Koyuki said and Jiraiya passed out, too easy. Koyuki said, why would you tell him that? Naruto asked, is it not the truth? Koyuki asked, no. Naruto said, so we never slept together? Koyuki asked, that was a one-time thing and you know it. Naruto said, I told you that you were the exception and I'm glad it happened. Plus, if you want to be technical, we did it about four times that one night. Koyuki said, I guess you're right. The time you're thinking of though, was that that made you see your deepest desire. Naruto said, oh. Well, it felt real. Koyuki said and shrugged, I'll tell him it was a Naruto said, think he'll believe you? Koyuki asked, yeah. He knows about my situation with Teiya. Naruto said, if it doesn't work out between the two of you, my legs and country are always open for you. Koyuki said and Naruto sighed making her giggle, why must you do that? Naruto asked, your reactions are funny. Seriously, if you ever want a change of scenery, you're welcome to move here. Teiya can come as well. Koyuki said and gave him a hug, we'll see what happens. If you're ever in the land of fire, come to Konoha and we'll hang out. Naruto said, of course. Koyuki said and kissed him on the cheek, come on, pervy sage. Naruto said and dragged him into the airship, don't forget to have Akira get on the airship. Koyuki yelled, I won't. Naruto yelled back and the airship took off, Konoha, where is everyone? Naruto asked, it's like a ghost town here. Jiraiya said, Naruto. Is that you? Kitetsu asked, yeah. Naruto said, oh thank the heavens. Izumo said, you've got to save us. Kitetsu said, why? Naruto asked, it's Teiya. She's been on a rampage for the past month and a half. Izumo said, why didn't you just tell Tsunade? Jiraiya asked and they heard a crash in the distance, we did. She said if a village full of ninja can't stop a 13-year-old girl, then we suck. Kitetsu said, did they try? Jiraiya asked, yes, but she got her hands on Naruto's pranking kit. Kitetsu said and Jiraiya paled since he knew how dangerous that stuff was, you've got to stop her. The merchants for the festival aren't able to set up yet. Izumo said, hmm. I don't know what's in it for me. Naruto asked, we'll buy you a year's supply of ramen. Kitetsu said, okay. Naruto said and walked away, our savior has returned. Izumo and Kitetsu said in unison, unbelievable. They're acting like Tsunade is on a rampage. This is nothing compared to what I've seen. Jiraiya thought, Tsunade's office, hey granny Tsunade. Naruto said as he entered the room, he's never going to stop calling her that. Shizune thought, Naruto, how was your mission? Tsunade asked and gave him a hug, it was nice. Everything went smoothly and her attacker didn't even capture her this time. Naruto said, that's good. So, how strong were you able to get her? Tsunade asked, mid -chunin. Her lack of fighting experience makes her only able to handle a low chunin opponent though. Naruto said, that's good. Now, care to tell me why Sakusu and Akira have moved out of the village? Tsunade asked, how do you know them? Naruto asked, they come to me and Lady Tsunade for a monthly checkup. Shizune said, right. Anyway, Sakusu is Koyuki's stunt double for the sex scenes in Pervy Sage's movie, since it's actual sex, and she only wants her husband to have sex with her and see her naked. Akira is going to become Koyuki's new assistant. Naruto said, I see. Tsunade said, and a loud crash was heard in the hallway followed by yelling, they finally caught her. Shizune said, how long has it been? Tsunade asked, two weeks. Shizune said, did I win the bet? Tsunade asked, I'm afraid not. You said she'd last three weeks before they caught her. Shizune said, damn it. Tsunade said and there was a knock on the door, enter. Tsunade said and the door opened, so Naruto jumped up to the ceiling, get your fucking hands off of me. I'll cut your fucking nuts off and shove them up your asses. Do you hear me? I'll fucking gut you like a fish. Teiya yelled kicking and screaming at the holding her, we've got her, Lady Tsunade. Or said and he looked like he went through war, good. You and your squad are dismissed. Tsunade said and they vanished, Aya, calm down. Shizune said, no. The nut-licking mutt and shy stalker keep pissing me off. Add in that these stupid ninja keep mumbling shit and I'm mad. Teiya said, what do you think Naruto would do if he saw you like this? Do you think he'd be happy you're pranking the village? Shizune asked, no. He'd be mad that I'm pranking the village without him. Teiya said and smirked at Shizune, she got you there, Shizune. Anyway, Teiya. I can't have you destroying the village because people pissed you off. Tsunade said, I wouldn't have to do this if Naruto was in the village. When he's around, nobody messes with me. Teiya said, and her entire demeanor changed from angry to sad, what's the matter? Tsunade asked, this stays between us. Teiya said, okay. Tsunade said, I'll head over to the hospital for my patients today. Give you two some alone time. Shizune said and left, but not before looking at Naruto who signaled for her to be quiet, so, what's going on? Tsunade asked, I miss him. Teiya said, Naruto. Tsunade asked and Teiya sighed, yes. I don't know what it is, but it's like I hate being away from him. I know he has missions to go on, but being away from him for this long is killing me inside. 
He's the only thing that keeps me calm and makes me feel wanted. I mean he's the whole reason I'm alive right now. I really didn't want to catch feelings for him because I'm tough and I've always been alone, but he just broke down my barriers. I don't have to be this tough chick all the time when I'm around him. He brought back the side of me that I thought was buried away forever. Taya said, she's going to be a wreck when he leaves in two days. Tsune thought and glanced at Naruto, maybe I should run away. That might help me. Taya said, running away doesn't help. I ran away as well and felt even worse when I was away from the one I loved. Tsune said, I thought your lover died. Taya said, no. My boyfriend died. The one I've always loved was Jiraiya and running away from everything just made me love him even more since I missed him so much. Tsunade said, the pervert. Why him? Taya asked, the heart wants what the heart wants. Despite his particular hobby, Jiraiya is a good man with a big heart and was always there for me. He confessed his feelings for me multiple times and each time I would reject him harshly, but he always came back. Even when we would argue and I'd tell him that I hate him, he'd still come save me if I was in danger on a mission. No matter what happened between us, he's always had my back. Tsunade said, she had a small smile on her face, not knowing Jiraiya was outside the window or that Naruto was next to him now. They were both listening to their conversation intently and kept their presence undetectable. Would you run away from him then? Taya asked, I just felt like I was being forced to be with him. My little brother died and he was comforting me. That's the first time we slept together and then it happened again when my boyfriend Dan died. Jiraiya was once again there for me and then we had a couple of flings here and there until he asked me to be his girlfriend and I rejected him pretty badly. Tsunade said, would you do that? If you kept sleeping with him it was obvious you like him. Taya said, I was young, stupid and blinded by the loss of my brother as well as the man I thought I loved. Tsunade said, what did you say to him? Taya asked, a lot. I told him that he can never get laid if it wasn't from me because he catches feelings too quickly. I told him that he's nothing but a miserable man who would have to pay for sex his entire life. I said that he'd never be good for any woman no matter what he does and that he should give up on trying to find love since it would never happen. I told him he was dead to me since he only came around when he wanted to have sex and it was like he knew the days I'd said yes or no. I'll never forget the look on his face that day. It looked as if somebody ripped his heart out and destroyed it in front of his face. After that I haven't seen or heard from him in two decades. Tsunade said, did he ever come back around? Taya asked, yeah. Him and Naruto found me in Tanzaku town while Orochimaru was trying to get me on his side. I didn't know how to react when I saw him. I wanted to tell him how sorry I was right then and there, but he didn't give me the chance and we had to talk about what happened with Orochimaru. Tsunade said, does he still love you after being away from you for so long? Taya asked, I don't know. We never really talked about it. I've only seen him twice since I became one and that was my coronation day and the day your curse mark was removed. Other than that, he's been off the grid with his spy network and I only found out about this mission he had with Naruto through a messenger toad. Tsunade said, my situation seems identical to yours. Taya said, in a way that's true, but it's not. I hid my feelings from Jiraiya on purpose while he was open about his towards me. You know your feelings towards Naruto, but you aren't purposely trying to hide them from him. Tsunade said, I'm not hiding them. My actions speak for me. I mean always cuddling up to him on the couch, constantly watching him train and staring into his beautiful blue eyes. It's like he doesn't get the hints I'm giving him. Maybe I should just tell him and get it over with. Taya said, he knows how you feel. Tsunade said, if he knows then why hasn't he said anything? Taya asked, because I told him before he left. You need to remember that feelings of actual love toward somebody like a girlfriend are new to him. He was confused before he left and I don't know if he thought much about his feelings towards you while he was gone. Tsunade said, then what do I do? I don't want to lose him to the Hayuga chick. Isn't there something I can do? Taya asked, just give him some time. I know for a fact that he likes you, but he needs to do things in his own way. Tsunade said and Taya sighed, was Jiraiya with somebody before you? Taya asked, yeah, but I couldn't get mad at him. We weren't together. Why? You think Naruto did something with somebody else? Tsunade asked, sort of. I mean it's like every time we go on a mission, if it's a girl involved they always pull him away for a few hours before he comes back. Then it's the picture of Princess Koyuki kissing him on the cheek. Taya said, trust me. Naruto hasn't done anything with anybody. I would know since I'm his doctor now. Tsunade said, what about the Hayuga chick? Taya asked, personally, I don't think you need to worry about her. Tsunade said, why? Taya asked, well, Naruto barely knows she exists. I guarantee if you ask him about her that he would have to think about who she is. Tsunade said, I guess. What about the sand bit? Girl. Taya asked, trust me. Tamari and Naruto are just friends. 
Even when she was in the village a few months ago they only hung out as friends. Besides, I think she has a thing for Shikamaru anyway. Tsunade said, is it true that she's his only friend? Taya asked, not just her. He's friends with her brothers Gara and Kankuro. Mainly Tamari and Gara though. Tsunade said, what about me? Taya asked, Naruto holds you to a status more than a friend. A few months ago he nearly fought Danzo when he said you should be used as a breeding stock for stronger shinobi. It took two squads to hold him back. Tsunade said, he did that for me? Taya asked, yeah. It was quite the scene. That's how I knew that he liked you more than a friend deep down. Tsunade said, I guess I'll wait for him to come back. Do you think he's gonna be happy to see me? Taya asked shyly, I know he'll be happy. The two of you were practically inseparable when he was here. Tsunade said, I guess you're right. I thought you were gonna be one of those leaders who have a stick shoved up your ass, but I was wrong. You're pretty cool. Taya said, that's good. Now, I still have to punish you for your little stunt. Tsunade said, yeah. I know. How many D-rank missions do I have to do? Taya asked, just one. Tsunade said, okay. Am I capturing Tora or walking the Inuzuka dogs? Taya asked, neither. This mission is for tomorrow night. Tsunade said, but that's the festival. Nobody will need my help with anything. Taya said, I know. Tsunade said, fine. What will my punishment be? Taya asked, your punishment is to have a good time tomorrow at the festival and not get in trouble. Tsunade said, that's it. Taya asked, yup. I want to report on how your night went once the festival ends. Tsunade said, okay. Thanks a lot. Lady Tsunade. Taya said and left, okay. It's up to you now, Naruto. Tsunade said and looked up, but he wasn't there, huh? I wonder where he went. Tsunade thought, Naruto. Naruto was walking around the leaf village and was thinking about the conversation he and Jiraiya overheard. He knew he had feelings for Taya after going back to the land of snow and talking to both Koyuki and Chiyum. He sighed and figured he should get Taya a gift other than the dress. He walked to the jewelry store and walked in signaling the bell. Hello there, young man. How may I help you? The lady at the desk said, I'm looking for a gift for myself. Friend. Naruto said, of course. Is this a girl you'd like to be your girlfriend? The lady asked, yes, but it needs to be a gift for tomorrow and her birthday in February. I won't be here and I know she'll be mad if I don't at least get her a gift. Naruto said, I see. Well, I have a necklace here that you can get for her. It's a heart-shaped amethyst set with three diamond accents beautifully framed by round tanzanites. It's crafted with 10k white gold, and the pendant is further enhanced by a trio of tanzanites. The rope chain it comes with is 18 inches and fastens with a spring ring clasp. The lady said, I'll take it, but can I replace the 18-inch rope chain with a 20-inch rope chain? Naruto asked, certainly. Would you like anything else? She asked, no. I think this is everything. Naruto said, of course. The lady said, how much? Naruto asked, 3,000 yen. The lady said and Naruto paid without hesitation, I hope she likes it. Naruto said, she will. Oh and Naruto. The lady said, yeah. Naruto asked, happy birthday. She said and smiled at him, thank you. Naruto said and left the store. October 10th 9 Tales Festival. Aya was sitting in the apartment looking at all the people outside having fun, and she just sighed. If Tsunade wouldn't have ordered her to go to this festival then she never would have gone. She knew today was Naruto's birthday and what happened to him every year. Speaking of Naruto, she couldn't find him at all yesterday and he didn't come home. She asked Tsunade where he was and she didn't even know where he was. She was brought out of her thoughts by the front door opening and closing. She slowly got up and pulled out a kunai before leaving her room. As soon as she was in the living room she froze when she saw the person she missed the most smiling at her. Hey there, Taya. Naruto said and she ran at him, then gave him a hug. Where you fuck face? I was looking for you. Why didn't you bring your ass home yesterday? Taya asked. I had to make a stop and then I was with Pervy Sage the rest of the night. Naruto said. What were you two doing? Taya asked. Just talking. Nothing unusual. What are you up to? Naruto asked. I've been ordered to enjoy myself at the festival. Taya said. I see. Here, take this and put this on. Naruto said and tossed her a scroll. Why? Taya asked. Well, you're going to be my date to the festival. Naruto said. What? Taya asked and blushed. We're going to the festival together. Come on, we don't have much time before it ends. Naruto said. Okay. Taya said and quickly ran off. Finally. He's taking some initiative. Maybe I can get him to completely fall for me. Taya thought and a huge blush spread across her face. 30 minutes later, Taya was finally ready to head out and she had to admit that the dress she got from Naruto was nice. It a black A-line style kimono dress that stopped mid-thigh. It had a V-neckline that came with a wide panel trimming that crossed over to one side and was complemented with a wide obi belt. It also had oversized sleeves and the short skirt was a tailored hemline.
She had on some black suede single band, ankle strap block heel sandals for her footwear that Shizun bought for her. She had her hair tied up in a high ponytail with strands at the sides of her face. Alright. You can do this. It's just one date. Taya thought. She took a deep breath and then exited her room slowly since she started to get nervous. Naruto heard her heels on the floor, and when he looked up his jaw touched the ground at how beautiful she looked. Taya saw him and he didn't get all dressed up, but she wasn't expecting him to. She noticed him staring at her, and she couldn't help the blush that came across her face. W what the fuck are you staring at? She asked. You look absolutely beautiful. Naruto said and walked up to her. D thank you. Taya said. Are you ready? Naruto asked. She nodded. Yeah. Taya said. Festival. Wow. It's so beautiful. Taya said and her eyes sparkled. It certainly is bright. Naruto said. Come on. Taya said and dragged him to a goldfish scooping game. Hello there. How can I help you? The booth runner said. Me and my date would like to play this game. Taya said. That'll be 500 yen. The booth runner said. Pay the man. Taya said. And when Naruto went to pay, the man glared at him. Sorry. I meant 5,000 yen. The man said and Naruto smirked. 5,000 yen? Here's 500, and the other 4,500 will be the amount of times my date shoves a rusty kunai up your ass if you keep it up. Naruto said. He did, I say 5,000 yen. I meant that's how many goldfish are in the tank. The man said. Now that's more like it. Taya said. Taya grabbed her apoi and began playing the game with Naruto following shortly after. As the game progressed, it became a friendly competition between the two, and the loser had to do anything the winner said. If there's one thing Taya should have learned during her time in Konoha it should have been to never bet against Naruto Uzumaki. It was an unwritten rule in Konoha that even the people that hated him never went against. Taya wanted to see who could scoop up the most fish, and she lost horribly. She managed to scoop up 78 fish until the paper on her poi broke, and Naruto managed to scoop up 192 fish. Even though she lost, Taya was smiling the entire time. Naruto couldn't take his eyes off of her smile, and his heart would skip a beat whenever she looked at him. Once they were done they returned the fish since they knew the fish would just die. So, where to next? Naruto asked and Taya looked around. At one. Taya said and dragged Naruto to the ring toss booth. How many tries do you each want? The lady asked. Ten tries each. Naruto said. Okay. That'll be 1000 yen. She said and Taya pulled out some money, but Naruto stopped her. I asked you out, remember? I'm paying for everything. Naruto said and Taya smiled and kissed him on the cheek. Such a lovely young couple. The lady said as Naruto paid her, we're not a couple. Taya said, sweetie, I've been around for a while. You two are a couple even if you don't know it. The lady said and handed them 20 rings. These aren't weighed properly. Taya said, exactly. This is a ninja village and if I used standard rings then I'd go out of business. This way nobody has an advantage. The lady said, makes sense. Naruto said. They began the game with Naruto trying to get the all-you-can-eat-for-a-day ticket for Michiraku Raymond and Taya, trying to win the shiny flute. The lady was right when she said nobody would have an advantage. Every time they threw a ring at the prize they wanted, it was so unbalanced that it would go off course or simply fall before hitting the target. Naruto would go on to spend 10,000 yen on this game, and only Taya won her flute. They walked away from the game, and Taya said she needed to use the bathroom, but she went back to the game and won Naruto the Raymond ticket. She would give it to him later. What's next? Naruto asked. We've been walking around for a while now. Can we grab some food and sit on the monument? Taya asked, sure. Naruto said and grabbed her hand. As they were walking through the crowd, Naruto sensed three people following them and knew who two of them were. It was Ino and Sakura, but the third one was farther back and he didn't recognize the chakra. They went to multiple food stands and grabbed as much food as they possibly could. One thing they both had in common was that they could eat a lot of food. They grabbed Ikeaki, grilled squid, yakitori, seasoned chicken on a wooden skewer, courage, Japanese-style fried chicken, corn on a cob, tayaki, fish-shaped pastry, chocolate-covered bananas, and of course, they went to the Ichiraku Ramen stand for their usual order of 10 bowls of ramen each. As they were walking Taya started to complain about her feet hurting, so Naruto sealed away their food and carried her bridal style. She wrapped her arms around his neck and laid her head on his chest. As they were walking, Naruto felt his followers' chakra signature get closer and closer to them, which meant that they were running towards him. Aya wasn't really paying attention since she was busy listening to Naruto's heartbeat. Naruto. Sakura and Ino yelled. Great. It's the annoying pink banshee and the prissy blonde slut. Aya mumbled and Naruto snickered. What? Naruto asked. What are you doing? Ino asked. Trying to enjoy my night. Naruto said. Why are you with her? She's the reason Sasuke left the village. Sakura said. I'm with her because she's my date and for the millionth time, Sasuke left the village on his own. Naruto said. She's your date. What about me? Sakura asked. What about you? I don't like you and I never really did. Naruto said. Wait. 
I've never seen a dress like that before. Where is it from? Hino asked. None of your business. Can you two sluts leave us alone? We're on a date. Teia said and blushed. No. Sakura yelled. Will you just leave us alone? Naruto asked. No. This outsider doesn't belong here. Sakura said and Teia just placed them under a there. Now, let's go. Teia said and Naruto vanished. Okage Monument. I can't believe I've never been up here before. The village looks so beautiful. Teia said and put her head on Naruto's shoulder. I know. It's a good spot to hang out at if you ever need to clear your mind. Naruto said. I'm guessing this is where you spent most of your days before becoming a ninja. Teia said. Yeah. Sitting on top of the fourth Hokage's head Alway brought me peace for some reason. Naruto said and Teia decided to switch topics. Tsunade told me you know about my feelings towards you. Teia said. I do, but I didn't find out until right before I left for that mission with Pervy Sage. Naruto said. How do you feel about me? Teia asked. I feel the same. I was thinking about it a lot during my mission, and whenever I would describe you to somebody, I would feel my heart beat faster, and a smile would come onto my face. Naruto said. Tsunade told me about what you did for me against Danzo. Teia said. I know. Me and Pervy Sage were listening to the conversation outside the window. Naruto said. Would you go so far for me against someone like him? Teia asked. Because you meant a lot to me. You were my only friend in the village and I didn't want to lose you. Naruto said and she smiled. So, what are we gonna do now? Teia asked. I don't know. It's complicated on my end. Naruto said. You like someone else, don't you? Teia asked. No. I'm leaving tomorrow with Pervy Sage. Naruto said. Oh. So, you have another S rank mission. That's not bad. That's about a month or two. I can live with it I guess. Teia said. It's not really a mission. I'll be gone for a while. Naruto said. How long is a while? Teia asked and Naruto sighed. I'll be gone for nearly three years. Naruto said. What? Why? Teia yelled. I'm going on a training trip to prepare for the Akatsuki. Pervy Sage found out that they'll start their actual plans in two and a half years, but hopefully with my trip being delayed until now they can delay their plans as well. Naruto said. I want to come with you. Teia said. No. I can't have any distractions on this trip. No offense, but you'll distract me from training as hard as I need to. You're a good distraction, but I just need this to be me and Pervy Sage. Naruto said and Teia sighed. What about us? Teia asked. I don't know where we go from here. I don't want to start a relationship and then leave for nearly three years. I'll feel like I'm abandoning you. Naruto said and Teia pulled him in for a kiss that lasted for about 30 seconds. You won't be abandoning me. I'll be the first person you see when you return. I just want to be with you. You saved my life and made me a better person. I love you and I don't want anyone else to be able to call me their girlfriend. You changed me and brought back the sweet loving side of me I locked away. When I'm around you I don't have to be the tough bitch who broke all of my barriers without even trying, and people have been trying to break me for years. That's why Orochimaru made me one of his most trusted shinobi. He couldn't even break my barriers down. You managed to do what they couldn't in mere weeks, but never picked up on the fact that I fell in love with you. Aya said and started to cry. I don't see how I could reject you after that. I'm not really good at this since it's all kind of new to me, but I love you too. At first it was the red hair that attracted me to you, and then it became much more. It was your laugh, your joking around, the playful fighting and even the cooking lessons I gave you. Even when I would look into your brown eyes I'd find myself getting lost in them. If anybody would have told me that I'd fall in love with somebody who used to be our enemy, I'd tell them that there's no way that would happen. Then I met you. Naruto said and wiped away her tears. So, this means what exactly? Teia asked. Will you be my girlfriend, Teia? Naruto asked and she nodded. Yes. Now, come and kiss me you adorable blonde fucker. Teia said, and when Naruto pulled her in for a kiss, the festival's fireworks started to go off. There's one more thing. Naruto said as they broke the kiss. What's that? Teia asked and Naruto pulled out the necklace he bought. I bought this for you yesterday. I know your birthday is coming up in February and I won't be there, but I got this for an early birthday gift for you. Naruto said. It's fucking beautiful. Teia said and Naruto put in on her. Not as beautiful as you. Naruto said and gave her a kiss. I also have a gift for you. Teia said and pulled out the Raymond ticket. No way. Naruto yelled and Teia laughed at him. Happy birthday, Naruto. Teia said and gave him a kiss. Best birthday ever. Naruto said. You know, I thought I'd have to compete for you. I thought you had something going on with Hinata and Tamari. Teia said. Nah. Tamari and I are really good friends. I'd say she's more like a sister actually. As for Hinata, I barely know her and I forget that she even exists. Naruto said. What about Koyuki? She kissed you. Teia said. I know. She likes me, but she understood that you had my heart even if I didn't realize it. Naruto said. Do you like her? Teia asked. I won't lie to you. 
I did tell her that if I never met you, then she'd be the one I'd most likely be with. She's a nice girl and even though she doesn't have the red hair that I always imagined my girlfriend having, she'd be an exception. Naruto said, did you sleep with her? Taya asked and Naruto sighed, yeah. Naruto said, why? Taya asked, well, it was after the first mission I had with her. I protected her from her uncle and that was on the mission with me. He put her under and was going to have her have sex with him. After that, me and Koyuki went to have a few drinks and we slept together after that. Naruto said, you mean to tell me that Princess Koyuki is the first person you had sex with and you never even bragged about it? Taya asked, I guess. I don't see the point in doing that. You're not mad at me now, are you? Naruto asked, no. I can't be mad at you for something you did before we even got together. At that time you didn't even know I liked you, so it would be stupid of me to be angry with you. Just promise me that I'll be the only person you'll be with from now on. Taya said, I promise. Naruto said and gave her a kiss, there's just one more thing. Big Tit said you didn't sleep with anybody and that she would know since she's your doctor. Taya said, listen, she's like my mother, so it's clear that I wouldn't tell her something like that despite her being my doctor. That would just open up a book of awkward questions from her. Naruto said and Taya nodded, I guess you're right. Taya said, what about you? Naruto asked, no. I've only had eyes for you since I came to this village. Yeah a few have tried to get me in bed for a quick fuck, but I rejected them and when they didn't take too kindly to that, I'd kick them in the nuts. Taya said and Naruto laughed, did you add chakra to the kick? Naruto asked, damn it. I should have done that. Anyway, let's go home. Since you're leaving tomorrow, I think it's only fair that I cuddle with you tonight. Taya said, sure. Naruto said, make sure you activate the barrier in our apartment. I don't want any sound interrupting my quiet time. Taya said and Naruto picked her up the banished. Next day, do you have everything? Tsunade asked, yes. For the thousandth time. Naruto said, maybe you should double check. Tsunade said and Naruto sighed, I have everything I need. Naruto said, okay. Okay. Tsunade said and looked at Jiraiya who was looking at the sky. Hey, fuckface. Taya said, as Naruto walked up to her and he could tell she was sad. Don't be sad. Time will fly by and I'll be back before you even realize I was gone. Naruto said and gave her a hug. Don't you fucking forget about me. Taya said, I won't. I'll try to send you messages, but I make no promises. Naruto said, it's okay. I know you'll be getting strong to protect yourself. Taya said, not just myself. I have to protect you as well. You're my girlfriend after all. Naruto said and she smiled. But I am, but don't think you'll be the only one getting stronger. Taya said, I know you'll train hard. Listen, can you at least try to add some tojutsu and ninjutsu to your repertoire? Naruto asked, I'll see what I can do. Taya said, I better get going. I don't want pervy sage to blow a gasket. Naruto said and Taya hugged him tighter. I'm going to miss you. Taya said, I'll miss you too. Naruto said and gave her a kiss. When you're gone, read some of those books. They'll come in handy when you come back. Taya said and Naruto smirked. What makes you think I need to read them? Naruto asked, did you? Taya asked, nope. I had a talk with Anko and she taught me plenty of stuff. Plus, I did sleep with Koyuki. Naruto said and smacked her on her butt. That is true. You win this round. I'm going to make you put that one-time experience to use when you get back. Taya said. I never took you for the submissive type, Taya. Naruto said and she blushed. Fuck you. Taya said and gave him a big kiss. Alright lovebirds. That's enough. Naruto, we need to get a move on. Jiraiya said. Here I come. Naruto said. I love you. Taya said. I love you too. Naruto replied and gave her one last kiss. Take care of him while you're gone. Tsunade said and gave Jiraiya a hug. Don't worry. He's in good hands. Jiraiya said. I know. Maybe when you get back we can go out for some drinks. Tsunade said. I'll hold you to it. Jiraiya said and they broke the hug. Come on pervy sage. Naruto said and vanished. Stop calling me that. Jiraiya yelled and chazzed after him. Those two will never change. Tsunade said and then narrowed her eyes as her shirt felt different. What's wrong? Taya asked. My bra is missing. Jiraiya I'm going to kick your ass. Tsunade yelled and she knew he hurt her. 106 centimeters. Jiraiya yelled back and Tsunade blushed while Taya started to laugh. Listen, Taya. Over these next two and a half years, you'll be going through hard training. I'm offering to personally teach you. Do you accept it? Tsunade asked. Actually, I was going to ask if I can join that little medical ninjutsu program you have. It seems interesting. Taya said. Of course. Now, I'll teach you as much as I can, but I already know you're not going to be a medical ninja. I'll still train you, but you won't be my actual apprentice, since the slugs will only accept those who will become healers, since that is what they are mainly used for. Tsunade said, that's okay. When do we start? Taya asked, tomorrow. Meet me in my office at 5am. 
Tsunade said and walked away. Aya stood at the gate for a few more minutes before walking away and pulling out the necklace Naruto gave her. She would get stronger just like him and work harder than she ever has before. She saw Hinata standing behind a pole and then smirked when Hinata tried to glare at her. She kept walking and when she got home, she grabbed one of his jackets and put it on since it was warm and had his scent on it. She let out a sigh and then looked at the picture of them Tsunade made them take. It was going to be a long two years for her. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.